Our broadcast will begin in 15 minutes from my mark. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. That was your 15-minute time check, stations.
Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in 10 minutes from my mark. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. That was your 10-minute time check, stations.
attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community by University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Now live, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, it's game one of the doubleheader between the Western Michigan Broncos and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Well, we might have jinxed the smooth weekend that we had planned. Mother Nature had other plans for us this weekend. A snowy and rainy Sunday forecast has forced our hand, and so we'll play two today with Western Michigan. Iowa got off on the right foot yesterday with a 9-3 win in the series opener, a complete performance, and the 17th win of the season through just 20 games for the Hawkeyes. Today, Jared Simpson gets the start in Game 1. It'll be his first of the season. Ty Langenberg scheduled to start tomorrow. He'll start Game 2 this afternoon. A doubleheader today, the Broncos and the Hawkeyes, Western Michigan and Iowa for two, live from Dwayne Banks with first pitch coming up in just a few minutes. The Hawkeyes took care of business yesterday, winning the series opener 9-3. to A few highlights from that one. Here the 2-2. This is lined into left, into the corner, and down for a base hit. It'll get to the wall. Honar rounding third. He'll score. Cade Moss gets the Hawkeyes on the board with an RBI double. 2-2, line drive, base hit into right. This could get into the corner. Seegers being waved home. Huxdorf to third. DeRiggy will stop at first. An RBI single for Big Rig. Yes. A one drives this one deep to left center. Get going. It is to the wall. It's down. Wilmus, he'll score. Huxdorf rounding second. He'll stop there. It's an RBI double. Kyle Huxdorf, another RBI for Huck. 3-2, DeRiggy on the ground to first. It's gloved by the first baseman. He throws it home. It's a poor throw. Knocked down by the catcher. Seegers gets by him, leaps over him. He touches home, and he's safe. Ha-ho! What a an, play. An acrobatic play by Michael Seegers to jump over the tag attempt, and he touches home. Count it. Pitch from Geschel. Ooh. Peterson drives this to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Ho ho. Peterson. Boom. 1-1 one, one on the ground to short. Seegers flips it to second for one. On to first for two. Ho ho. That'll do it. Game over. That's Hawks win. There we go. 6-4-3 to do it. And so the Hawkeyes have now won seven games in a row. They're 7-0 and oh at home. Here at Dwayne Banks. We'll try to make it 9-0 and at home with two games with Western Michigan today. All right, up next we'll talk with volunteer assistant in his first year, Mitchell Bowe. That's following this break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. 
that knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this afternoon. We'll play two today against Western Michigan. Joining us now on our pregame show, first-year volunteer assistant Mitchell Bowe. Mitch, good to have you back on. Uh, we're about a third of the way through the season. Just over it now. How are you, Justin? How are you liking things? Uh, it's awesome. It's great to be back. Um, I think I said that before on, on this thing. But, uh, um, no, it's it's been great. Uh, Iowa City is, is what I call home. So um, just being back out here and all the Hawk fans showing up, it's bringing back some great memories. Yeah. You're in charge of the defensive alignments and the hitting. We'll start with the defensive alignments. We've kind of touched on this before, uh, but defense has been one of the strengths of this team. A few bumps in the road here or there, but I think the message has gotten across that, that this is one of the strengths of the team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the guys have really bought into it. Um, you know, constant adjustments, um, just talking in between innings, in between pitches too. Um, they've really bought into, you know, Reading, reading the swings and, and making the adjustments and having the confidence to do that. That's, that's the biggest thing is, um, you know, can I, can I make my adjustment? Can I back that up? And if something goes wrong, do I have a reason for it? Um, and that's the biggest thing that I wanted to get across to them is don't be afraid to make those adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we think you're out of, out of, out of line somewhere, we're going to move you mid-pitch. Mid so, um, yeah. Uh, you got to work pretty closely with pitching coach Sean McGrath, then, don't you? <laughs> uh, kinda, yeah, yeah. Sean and I, um, Sean and I definitely, definitely work um, together hand in hand with that stuff, especially with the pitch calling. Yeah. Um, you know, the, our, our infields have the wristbands on. Um, I have a wristband on. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a lot of it's making those those adjustments um, with with the pitch call. Um, especially with Brody Brecht on the mound, <laughs> yeah. um, you know he's a special one. You know, if we can make a, a defensive card just for him, it would be completely different. You know, sure. than than what we got just because he does throw a hundred. You know, um, you don't you don't see that too often here. So let's talk about a couple of the infielders on the left side. Michael Seegers, Raider Tello, they've been really sharp to start the season defensively. Yeah, yeah. Seegs has been awesome. Seegs has been great. Um, he kind of had that confidence coming in already. Um, he's played. He's played a lot in the Hawkeye uniform and played a lot for Rick. Um, and, and Coach Heller has has got him really locked in on the defensive side. Um, Raider Tello, um, you know, just kind of kind of struggled in the beginning with just. And I'll I'll take take that one. Um, just the alignment stuff. We, you know, he had some arm issues coming in um, to Iowa, and uh, you know his arm is is, is really good now. Um, so just deepening him up and and making those. Uh, Cutting, you know, different angles. Third base is all about angles with the, with the ground balls. He's done a great job with that, making the adjustment, um, and I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, right side of the infield with Dorigi at first, and looks like Honar's really solidified himself at second. Yeah, yeah. Hodge, Hodge has been great. Um, he's he's you know always looking in the dugout, checking with me. Um, you know where he's at. He's really bought into it. Rig. Um, Riggs great too, man. He's 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 very mature for his age. Um, you know, not playing much first base at, at Wofford the past four years. He's really, really come to um, for the Hawkeyes at, at 1B for us. So now in the outfield, there's been a, a bit of a revolving door. You had the injury to Chase Mosley, so you know you got to play Ben Wilmus and and uh, Braden Frazier out there in, in right for the most part. But outfield, they haven't missed a beat despite that injury. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, uh, those guys have a great next next guy up mentality. Um, we have a close knit group in the outfield, and and when one of us goes down, it's it's it sucks, it hurts. Um, they take it personal, but um, you know, next guy up, he's going to get the job done, and, and that's what we've seen. Um, you know, Wil Wilmer, Wilmes, sorry, um, <laughs> we call him Wilmer too. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I, I always Nickname. call him Wilmer. Um, he he's been he's been great stepping into that position. His at bats have been really good. Um, 
and even Frage, Frage has been here for for five five years, um, so he knows the ins and out of this program better than I do. Um, he's the old guy. <laughs> he is. He's the grandpa here, so um, don't have to keep too much of an eye on him out there. He's he's really good. Uh, offensively, you've got your. Uh... Uh, hands in that as well, really starting to come together with the bats. Yeah, it was uh, it was beautiful last night. That's yeah. the way I would describe <laughs> it. Um, just all up and down, one through nine was was competitive, and they all had a plan, and they all went up there sticking to their plan, not not straying away from that plan. Um, and like I can't, I can't describe it any more than beautiful. It was beautiful. Talking with volunteer assistant Mitchell Bow on our pregame show. Okay, today being a doubleheader, think back to your your playing days a little bit. Uh, positive or negative view on on doubleheaders? Uh, I think I'm obligated to say positive. <laughs> uh, uh, no, doubleheaders. Doubleheaders are just it's who wants it more. Yeah. Um, you know, after after yesterday coming out and putting up a lot of runs, um, we just have to match that intensity. Um, Western Michigan, they, they don't give up. You know, for listening to that dugout, watching their at-bats, they're not going to give up. Um, you know, we can get up big in, in game one. They're going to come out and be a brand new team at game two. So it's just, it's just staying on top. You know, staying focused is probably the hardest thing. Um, you know, it's, it's, you get to the sixth and seventh inning of that second game, it, it's, you start to feel it. But that's, that's where our training takes over. Um, we, we, we really get after them during practice, so it's 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 going to pay off. And this is where your experience, uh, being a little bit more recent than maybe most of the people on the staff, can, can really help the guys in that, especially in that second game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just getting them locked in, and and listen, like if we get two today, we we get an off day tomorrow. Earn that off day. You okay. know what I mean? That's yeah. that's what I like to put it. Earn that off day. Leave it all out on Saturday, and go relax on Sunday. And and and. That's you know what got me through. Yeah, got me a, through doubleheaders. That's a good reward. All yeah. right, we'll see if the Hawks can take two today. Thanks for your time, Mitch. Thank you. First year volunteer assistant Mitchell Bow on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks. Up next, we'll talk with head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Right after this, this is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this afternoon. Turned into a doubleheader with Iowa and Western Michigan. Joined now by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, before we talk about the doubleheader today, just a thought on the complete performance yesterday. Man, it was a it was a great game for us. I was really, really pleased with our team. Um, you know, start with, like we talked about in the pregame yesterday, it started with a great start from Brody Breck. Uh, Brody gave us, you know, five and two-thirds. Uh, Kept his pitch count right at 100 in almost six innings. It's getting better each time out, more efficient. Um, threw a lot of strikes yesterday. I was He was in control um, way more than he had been. So it was just a really 
really good start to the game uh, with Brody, and then I was I was really excited about how well our, our hitters executed the plan that you and I talked about with Miller, their, their right-hander, as you guys can see in the booth. I mean, good arm. Um, we, we, you know, we weren't even sure how to plan, you know, slider derby day or was it, or was it um, fastball come at you day? And it, you know, we had to kind of adjust on the fly, but we didn't chase and we got his pitch count up and hit a lot of barrels on a, on a cold, windy day that, 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 you know, for a while there I was thinking, man, this might be a two to nothing game and a nail biter. And uh, our offense really picked up the slack, played really good defense. Um, and then, uh, you know, Marcus came in, gave us two good innings, kind of fell apart uh, in the ninth. And, um, you know, uh, Jacob Henderson and those guys did a good job. Yeah. I just talked about their pitcher for a second. Uh, he did go with that slider a lot, like you had predicted, and he hit it pretty well. Yeah, he did. I mean, our guys did a really good job of, uh, of not, not chasing the pitch up that we talked about. You know, had we done that, it had been a long day. And, man, just a lot of extra base hits on a, on a day that was Cole, you know, Peterson, a home run, home run double, Kate Moss double, Keaton double. I mean, just a lot of... Huck Storff another double and just was scoring runs and, and or challenging to score runs in most innings. So I, was, I thought it was a really good day and a, a, a really good approach by our guys from start to finish. How about that play by Michael Seegers to uh, elude the catcher and find a way oh, to touch oh, yeah, him? Yeah, that, that was that was incredible and, and just Michael super athletic and uh, you know for the for the listeners you know Michael when you look at him you know he's a fairly small guy but Michael can power dunk he can really jump <laughs> yeah. as we saw yeah. <laughs> coach when you went out to get Brody yesterday it looked like maybe he wanted to get that one last out but the pitch count just a little bit too high wasn't it um yes yeah I mean with conference next week um you know I was even arguing to get him out maybe <laughs> sooner just just because and uh but that's the great thing about Brody he, he loves to be out there he loves to compete and he he um he enjoys it when he is out there, and he don't want to come out. Yeah. Uh, Brody made a pretty significant announcement yesterday. He's gonna he's gonna hang up the football cleats and, and just stick to the baseball cleats. Uh, just a thought on that. Well, I mean, you know, we knew coming into this that, that Brody loved football, and uh, you know, without football, you know, he might not be here. I mean, he really wanted the chance to do both, and um, you know, we were able to to offer him that opportunity, um, Coach Ferentz and myself, and and I just feel really bad. Um, that it didn't work out smoothly just and, and, and it was nobody's fault nobody's to blame it's just circumstance i mean brody brody he, he just was injured a lot in football and it just it, you know, when he was injured he couldn't do it's hard to do both when you're hurt and it's hard you know to to get out on the field in football when you're hurt and you know just it just didn't work out and and you know here he is a, a year away from his draft year and um, you know, he, 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 the thing he told me when he, when he said, I'm thinking about doing this, I said, are you really sure? You know, uh, I know how much you love football and he goes, yeah, it's going to be hard, but, but I, I, I want to be great at baseball and I know I can be great at baseball if I put time into it. And, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, as you can see, uh, if, if he can smooth some things out and, and you know, get a full year, uh, of baseball, I mean, he'll be in a much better place for his draft year next year, and you know, I think the sky's the limit after that. What sort of message do you have for some of our younger listeners that, that might follow down that same path, though, to, to chase your dreams and, and see how it works out uh, going for both sports or you know, keeping your hat in the ring in both? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's what I tell kids, I, I was a multi-sport guy, and what I tell kids, it, I mean, if you love it and you love it in your heart, go for it. And I'm talking both sports or whatever it is. But if you just kind of like it, it, ain't, it isn't going to work, especially in today's world at the Division One level. It's very difficult um, because of the, the, the demands on, that both sports have. You have to be very special. You have to be almost so good that you can not do as much at both and still beat people out. And, and that's the hard part. You know, that's the difficult thing. And, and I think Brody fell into that perfectly because he loves football he loves baseball i think he loves football even more um which is why he came to iowa so he could come through that tunnel and hear back in black and and be out on that field with, with our hawks um but the baseball side 
it would it would have worked out really well to, to me if he just could have stayed healthy and and that was the thing that 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 made it difficult well congratulations to brody on that decision we're excited to see where uh things take him in the future talking with Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show. Okay, so we've turned this game into a doubleheader just because of the bad weather forecast for tomorrow, right? Correct. I mean, what ha- what has happened since 7 o'clock this morning is a modern marvel. I mean, this field was covered with snow. Our, our ground screw, uh, you know, Tony C- Tony Senio and Andy Eifert and Damian Simcox and their crews, they've been out here shoveling, plowing since 7 o'clock this morning, and it, and it wasn't easy. It was a wet snow, and it wasn't it wasn't sliding off. You know, It was turning into mush and ice, and we couldn't blow it over the fence like a lot of times you can. We had to lift it with, with machines to get it over the fence, and the amount of work those guys put in just so we could play today was a lot. And, and we wouldn't be playing if it wasn't for those guys today or tomorrow. And so thanks go out to those guys. But the forecast did a 180 for tomorrow. It, it looked like yesterday that it was going to be a not, you know, a decent day, a little colder than today, and um, the rain wasn't coming in or precip wasn't coming in until after game time. And you know, get up this morning and boom, they got it snowing again in the morning, and um, you know, possible rain through two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And you know, it's not perfect today. It's a little bit of a cold breeze blowing in from left field. And, but the sun's out, and it'll be a way better day today than tomorrow, and I, I certainly don't want our ground crew to have to come out and plow snow again tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we, we just can't get a smooth operating weekend uh, under our belt. What what changes now that it's a doubleheader, or is everything on schedule like normal? Well, it's, it's pretty normal, except that, you know, uh, the, Ty, Ty Langenberg's going to have to bump up a day, and he'll throw the second game. We're going to play a nine-inning game with no 10 run rule and then the second game will be a nine inning game with a 10 run rule okay. and uh, we should be able to get a lot of the pitchers in it was it was absolutely crucial for us to get all three games in this weekend with conference play starting next week to be able to run the rotation even though it's a double header like we had planned uh, uh, this week because we haven't done it before mm-hmm. but what do you make of your offense the past few weekends looks like it's starting to hit its stride especially the extra base hits and also the stolen bases really picking up the aggression there well it's just it's just um, a bunch of guys that are really buying into the plan I mean we're just we're getting pitches in the strike zone to hit and when you do that you usually hit balls hard it's when you're swinging the balls you know outside the strike zone that you get yourself in trouble and that's what we're we're working on and Marty Marty Sutherland hitting because he's been doing an awesome job with the guys and the guys are really really buying in and we're getting on base at a high percentage and um, you know, we're swinging at strikes and you know, I always tell the hitters you know there's no help for those hitters that don't swing at strikes <laughs> and, and and when you chase um, you know you make it pretty easy on the other team and we've been making it tough one through nine and and then to your point when you get a lot of guys on base uh, especially early in the inning then you can do some things on the bases and run and that's a that's a testament to uh, to our guys getting on base uh, with leadoff guys to lead off an inning and then you know we've got some speed and we can run a little bit and that's been nice a couple of keys to victory to take down Western Michigan today in both games we're facing a young guy today and Tom, his name's Thompson and a right-hander and he's he's kind of unique really um, you don't see many of these guys anymore he's kind of the soft throwing right-hander that mm. that you really don't see I mean 84 87 uh, he's gonna pitch backwards with a lot of secondary stuff slider change up change up kind of looks like it might be a split he couldn't really tell in the video uh, but I kind of had splitty splitty action to it uh, and it's, it's it's the same plan we just talked about we got to keep him off the oh you know, he's gonna try to live on the edges uh, we got to try to get him on the on the white part of the plate and and where we can do some damage uh, just another thought on that pitcher for them today if he's gonna throw soft like that does that make it actually harder to hit harder <laughs> to time up well I mean it's just you don't see them that often. I mean, we're seeing, you know, guys in, the, and that's why you see a struggle sometimes in the midweek games when we play a Division three team or an NAIA team when you're not seeing, you know, we're coming off a weekend like Texas Tech and you're seeing, you know, 90 to 97 uh, and, and, and with 30 sliders and then you go to a, where you're seeing all 85 or below, you know, that's a, that's a significant change. But I actually like it because I think it helps us as we go through each week where we have to make the adjustments timing-wise. And um, I, I see that really helping us now. And I saw it yesterday, and I saw it last weekend as well. Um, I, I think it's a good thing. It can be frustrating when, it, when you're struggling with it. But I also think it's great for your hitters to have to deal with different timings. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Let's take two against the Broncos today. All right, thanks, Sean.
Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field. It's Iowa and Western Michigan this afternoon. We'll play two with the Broncos. We'll welcome in color analyst John Evans in just a second. But first, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth in Iowa City. Another doubleheader for us, John. Uh, we thought we could get away with something playing all three games on three days, but got to cram it in today. The weather's just not going to be too good tomorrow. I blame you for setting this up yesterday. Is you know, talking about how good we were going to be on uh, on the days and and uh, you know kind of jinxed us from getting the Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in. Broadcaster jinx. That one's on me, isn't it? Yeah, that one's on mm. you. All right, well, we'll see what uh, what Western Michigan's got. We looked at their schedule, and, and their Sunday games, they tend to give up quite a few runs, so that would lead us to believe that they just flat out run a, run out of pitching by the time we get here. I think that'll be, you know, you're, we talked about it a little bit last week when we played two on Sunday, you know, maybe getting deeper into South Dakota State's bullpen with, with a game in between, but or a day in between. But, you know, now today... Um, coming right back, you know, 18 innings, potentially 16, I guess, if there's a 10 run. But um, it, it should favor the Hawkeye pitching staff and the, and the depth they have. So if Iowa can do a good job um, keeping, a, keeping a good track of the strike zone and, and uh, forcing the pitch count up on, on Western Michigan, should be in pretty good shape. We'll see Jared Simpson get the start for the Hawkeyes today. Really excited and looking forward to that. Jared had a tough outing against uh, Texas Tech, but really bounced back. Um, and, and threw a lot of good quality strikes um, against South Dakota State last weekend. You know, four scoreless innings there, um, almost unhittable there with 10 strikeouts and um, did a really nice job and so kind of earned the, uh, earned the role and it'll be, be, uh, be good to see him, how his routine changes or if he can keep everything uh, rolling with the, with the first start. And, and then we'll see Ty Langenberg get the start in game two, back to a starter role for him. Another good, uh, you know, a good step for him to have to step away from uh, from the starting role, uh, at least the Friday starting role. Had a really good midweek outing as well, um, and a good outing last last week at South Dakota State. And so, getting back into that rotation and and but get him a little bit later in the week, so maybe he can kind of see how it plays out and you know maybe recapture some of that mindset he had last year when he was a really successful Sunday starter. I was 17 and 3 on the season through 20 games. That's a pretty good record. Uh, to keep this up, they're going to have the best start in in program history. I, I think the key if you you know you got to take it one game at a time, but if you look ahead a couple days right through the midweek that's coming up before the Maryland series, man, if you can get to 20 wins before conference play, wow, that's going to go a long way later in the season. To to get to that number is is really well, it's really impressive for any program, but but for a program like Iowa, who has to take most of those games on the road, uh, sneak in a couple of, uh, you know, I think Mother Nature is uh, is on Coach Heller's side about uh, about not playing quite so early. You know, as, as we walked in today, and your the sidewalks are clear, but uh, you know you see mounds of snow out there by the bullpen. So to get to that number with with the weird schedule that Iowa's had is is. A good testament to the grit this team has. If we could find a way to, to turn the wind off, though, right? 
it's uh, you know we've got a good uh, good wind blowing in now from left field and maybe maybe a touch to right field maybe Keaton Anthony will like it a little bit but but primarily blowing in again um, cold winds the ball's not going to carry real far so you heard Coach Heller say in the in your interview with him it'll be important to carry that um, that approach of you know, hitting a lot of barrels of the bat and hit a lot of line drives rather than try to lift the ball today we kind of heard that yesterday but had quite a few extra base hits into the into the gaps including a, a home run so uh, I appreciate the message from coach Heller but let's prove him wrong a little bit huh well and it, but that was what you know on especially on a field today that, that might be a little wet and a little cold you could get a ball that skips through to the gap and, and you know if you hit a good line drive that way you, you could you could get out there and run for a while uh, we'd like to give a great shout out to the grounds crew today tony and andy did a great job on the on the turf on the field to get the snow off of it and out of the out of the field to play so that we could play uh, a couple of games today thank you tony and andy great job grounds crew here to to make this field playable all right we'll step away for the national anthem when we come back starting lineups batting orders and then game one of the doubleheader western michigan and iowa coming up right after this this is hawkeye baseball from learfield after a cancer diagnosis it's natural to want to start treatment right away but first get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Spectacular rendition of the national anthem. That's complete here at Dwayne Banks. Great job, Aaron, singing the national anthem today. All right, we're getting ready for first pitch. Game one of the doubleheader, Western Michigan and Iowa. Let's go with the starting lineups. The batting order for Western Michigan. They'll be led off by Jackson Kitchen. He's their left fielder. Will Morrison batting second in center. Gavin Doyle batting third, playing third. In the cleanup spot at first base is Cade Sullivan. Batting fifth is Jimmy Allen. The designated hitter, Josh Swinehart, he bats sixth. Seven, eight, nine for the Broncos. Dylan Nevar, Greg Budig, and Grady Mee. Defensively for the Hawkeyes, they're about to take the field right now. Brennan DeRiggi's at first, Sam Honar at second. Michael Seegers, the starting shortstop. Raider Tello is over there at third base this afternoon. In the outfield in left, Sam Peterson. In center is Kyle Huxdorf. And in right is Ben Wilmus. Behind the plate doing the catching is Cade Moss. And on the mound, getting the start for the Hawkeyes, his first of the season, Jared Simpson. The left-hander will be making his seventh appearance of the season. He's 3-0 and with a 366 ERA, 19 and two-thirds innings, giving up just 11 hits, eight runs. They've all been earned. 10 walks, 31 strikeouts, and opponents hitting just 162 against Jared. Really excited to see his debut in the in the rotation, and uh, it, he's been one of the first guys to come out of the bullpen, whether that's to relieve Brody or Marcus uh, to start this season. Has done a really nice job, so uh, rewarded 
to uh, get a start today against Western Michigan as you try to shore up the the rotation before conference play gets here. Brody Breck did a great job yesterday to start. He's the Friday starter, and we'll see if Simpson can ride that wave of momentum and, and have a nice quality start for the Hawkeyes on Saturday. And it really gives Iowa, if this rotation holds up and works, you know, you've got... You get a guy throwing 100 miles an hour with a 90 mile an hour slider from the right side. You get Jerry on Saturday, you know, 94, 95, sharp left-handed, good, good movement on a breaking ball, um, and then you follow up with Ty um, on Sunday. You know, you know, getting his velocity back, so 93, 94, 95, um, you know, tough slider, changeup. So, and you can go right, left, right. So you, you can really. Uh, really help keep any rhythm out of the opposing team's dugout. And then you keep in mind the, the bullpen that's still intact because you're just shuffling, moving around. It's not like you're losing really anything. It's just moving pieces around. Right. We still have Zach Volker sitting there yeah. who's who's been just a complete shutdown guy for, for Iowa when when they've needed him. Um, you've got Keaton Anthony who can get outs. You've got Kate Obermuller who um, you know, didn't have the starting debut on a weekend maybe you wanted last week but still is an electric arm. Uh, and, and you've got Marcus, who's um, shown an ability to throw a couple good innings, and, and as he as he figures out kind of that hurdle of, of getting through that third and fourth inning um, will be a, a very effective, and that doesn't touch the guys that you're using in middle relief and, right. and you know, at, at the back end of the bullpen. So um, I was talking to Jacob Henderson before, um, you know, before the game during batting practice today, and just kind of laughing with with Jacob about you know him coming in just because of how different he was yesterday to close that yeah. inning out after Brody had had gotten everything started and you, know, you get kind of the hard stuff and then you get Jacob's sweeping breaking ball he threw three pitch three strikes and got out of the inning. All right, we're set for first pitch of the doubleheader today as Jackson Kitchen stands in lefty on lefty matchup to start today's game. Jared Simpson is ready the first pitch home right down the middle for a called strike. Our umpires today behind the plate is Greg Stanzik. At first base is Joshua Nolan. Out there at second is Trey Nelson. And over there at third is Ben Harlow. No balls and a strike. Leadoff hitter Jackson Kitchen. Next pitch from Simpson. Swung on and lined foul. Out of play to the left side, 0-2. The Hawkeyes are in black uniforms today. Black tops with Iowa spelled out in gold. Block lettering across the chest with gold numbers on the left hip. White baseball pants with the black and gold stripe down the side. Gold baseball hats with a black block eye on the front panel. Black bills in the field. 0-2 pitch from Simpson. That's high and outside for a ball. Western Michigan counters with brown tops, gold Print across the chest, spelling out Broncos with a white outline. They've got gray baseball pants with brown pinstripes. They wear white batting helmets. One ball, two strikes. The pitch from Simpson to Kitchen. That's outside, drifting over there, two and two. He's tried since he got ahead 0-2. He's tried both times to just hit that outside corner, maybe get a little bit of a chase, and just missed a little wide and good uh, good at bat from Kitchen. Just underway from Dwayne Banks in Iowa City this afternoon. The 2-2. This is fouled back, and we'll do it again. You kind of notice that's the philosophy when Iowa pitchers get to an 0-2 spot. Uh, they throw a, a waste pitch or two, and I think maybe teams might pick up on that as the season goes along. And, and I don't know. Uh, you know, you talk about where you want to miss, and so it, it's just kind of it, it's effective missing, I suppose. They're not really trying to miss so wide. 2-2 fouled off again. But you know, you, you take your you take your aim point and you put it to you know maybe it's the in this case it's the inside of the right-handed batter's box, so just off the plate. And then when you miss, and you miss into the batter's box, well then it looks like you were trying to, to miss really wide. It's just you missed two or three inches the the wrong direction, and it's not a swingable pitch. Another 2-2 from Simpson is hit foul again. And this has turned into a remarkable at bat between Simpson and Kitchen. Can Jared throw quite a few in his first action of the game? A good job here. Jared has a tendency to be difficult on left-handed hitters, and Kitchen's done a really nice job fouling it off and staying alive. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch from Simpson. That's high for a ball. And the count is now full. Relatively nice day in Iowa City. <laughs> for late March, I guess, compared to what it was overnight, right? This field was covered 
in snow. When the sun came up, three balls, two strikes. Pitch from Simpson. Fouled off again. Quality leadoff hitter characteristics here. Just fighting, battling. Kitchen was one for three yesterday. Drove in two of the three Western Michigan runs. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch from Simpson. There it is. Called third strike. Got him on the looping, breaking ball. One down. Gave him something different there. He hadn't, hadn't thrown that pitch through the hole at bat. Gave him a different look and just buckled his knees and got the out. After all that work, there's an out. <laughs> at least he got the out. That's, uh, that's a pitcher. You don't want to throw 10 pitches and not get the out. Will Morrison's up next. He's a right-handed hitter. First pitch from Simpson, just inside for a ball. Jared works only out of the stretch, not a wind-up delivery. Went right back to the same pitch there, just missed on the inside part of the plate, or off the inside part of the plate. One ball, no strikes. This one inside again, maybe a bit low, 2-0. When are we going to address it, John? <laughs> Yesterday, it's, yesterday's, it's too early to address it Yesterday's yet. strike zone was, was pretty tight, and uh, the Hawkeye pitchers and the Western Michigan pitchers, for that matter, adjusted uh, accordingly, but we'll have to see how this umpire calls the strike zone. 2-0 pitch just outside, ball three. That was... Uh... That was maybe just a bit high and outside. We'll see how Jared bounces back here. Don't really want to give Morris Morrison too much, hitting 378 on the season. Three balls, no strikes. The pitch, there it is, right down the middle, three and one. One away in the top of the first. Wind blowing straight in today. A little bit over to right, I suppose. If you want to try to find any any bonus to it, but yeah, pretty much in. 3-1 is bunted down the third baseline. It'll go foul, and the count's full. Simpson's done a nice job here to get back into this at bat. Interesting choice there. and uh, This is about exactly the opposite of the first at bat. It was 0-2 on Kitchen and, and worked its way to 3-2 with a lot of foul balls. And here we were 3-0, and now we've worked our way back to 3-2. See if Jared, since he can come back, if he can finish it off here. That slider was pretty sharp in the first at bat. The 3-2 fouled off to the right side. In on the hands and poked over there. And the nice part if you're Iowa from a bullpen standpoint is you really didn't use any of your middle guys, you know, any of the guys that we talked about before the game started. So you have all the arms at your disposal to go ahead and get through it. 3-2, just high for ball four. And so Morrison is on with a walk. That first at bat uh, with Kitchen went 10 pitches. And that one went seven. So we were already, uh, we're, we're 17 pitches, and we have one out here in the first inning. So A little bit like yesterday, huh, John? Maybe, yeah. yeah and, and and maybe not the results the same, but pitch count-wise. And Brody did a nice job buckling down after that first inning. And, and you know, you could roll a 6-4-3 double play here and, and be pretty much out of the, out of the soup. First pitch to Gavin Doyle's a strike on the inside corner. Good start for Simpson. Runner on first and one out. I would turn to a couple of double plays yesterday. Simpson can force a ground ball from Doyle here. Count is nothing and one. Moss sets up outside. The pitch is outside and off the plate for a ball. Doyle uh, has a 243 average on base percentage of 404. One ball, one strike. The pitch, check swing, didn't go around, doesn't matter. Called strike. Just below the letters, it's one and two. A good high fastball there from Jared. Velocity's down just a touch so far. We'll see if he kind of picks it up as, the, as he gets warmed up and the game goes along a little bit. Runner at first is Morrison. The one-two inside corner. Got him. Brings him up on a nice fastball in the inner half of the plate. Two down. Marketing department will have to be careful throwing out the T-shirts on a strikeout today. There's enough melted snow around that uh, 
they don't make a good catch, it's going to splash yeah. somewhere. I don't know if you saw that throw down there from Lucas, the marketing intern, but that was a good cannon across the stands from the right bleachers to the left. Good arm, Lucas. He had him pointed out, too. He, had, he hit his receiver. Here's Cade Sullivan. We'll wait for the first pitch to him. They'll check on the runner at first. Sullivan's their, their cleanup hitter, and, and one of the batters in this order that is dangerous, and, and Coach McGrath talked about him yesterday, both Sullivan and Morrison. Morrison stands at first. Simpson's ready, and Morrison, uh, rather Sullivan, swings and fouls off the first pitch. It'll roll back to Simpson at the mound. Sullivan had a tough day yesterday. It was 0 for 3 at the plate, struck out three times. Did have a walk, but Hawkeye's kind of had his number a little bit. Lengthy inning in the top of the first. Yeah, not not the great start you want when you get you knew you're playing 18 innings today. Yeah, fortunately nothing across for Western Michigan. 0-1 pitch, tapped foul. 0-2 over to the on deck circle on the left side. And now Simpson can go for another strikeout. He's got two in the inning. He's just taking the the long way to get there. When you'd like to see, you know, he finished off uh, he finished off the last hitter a little quicker. You know, you know got kitchen but took a long time to get there. See if he can. Get there quicker on the 0-2 here. The 0-2 is just high, just outside for a ball. Mm. You just think from a hitter's perspective, that's close enough. I'm surprised you don't swing at it. <laughs> well, unless you just get fooled. I mean, you get, that, that... you get rewarded by not swinging at that pitch, and with two strikes, you're, you're almost supposed to. <laughs> right. That that's a uh, that that ball's that ball dotted the outside corner, but maybe just a little high. The one-two runner goes. Throw down to second is into center field. Ho well, not into center field. Honar dropped it. It got away from him. He was able to deaden it on the infield. The pitch was a ball high and outside. It's two and two now. It's a, just a bit of a high throw from Moss. A little high. Honar tried to snap a quick tag down. Didn't quite have the ball secured because I think they they had a chance at the runner, but it was going to be close. Um, but now it's up to Simpson just to finish this inning off here. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Simpson's got the sign from Moss. Feels it, deals it. Outside, ball three. Every count has uh, had quite a few pitches in it, with the exception of the last hitter, Doyle. We got him out on four pitches. Another full count, this time to Sullivan. Simpson's ready, the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Seegers charging hard. He's got it. The throw is accurate for the third out of the inning. DeRiggi makes the catch. So quite a few pitches from Simpson in the first, but no damage done. The Hawkeye bats will come up right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. No runs for the Broncos in the top of the first inning. We'll see if Iowa can get on the board with a few runs here in the bottom half of the first. The batting order for the Hawkeyes today, Michael Seegers leading things off. Kyle Huxdorf batting second. Brennan DeRiggi is batting third. In the cleanup spot, designated hitter Keaton Anthony. Batting fifth is Raider Tello. Sam Peterson will hit sixth for the Hawkeyes. Seven, eight, nine, Sam Honar, Cade Moss, and Ben Wilmus. They'll take on the pitcher for Western Michigan, D.J. Thompson. 
Thompson will be making his first start of the season. It's his eighth appearance. Eighth appearance. He's one and one overall with a 9.53 ERA. Just 11 and a third innings, giving up 14 hits, 13 runs, 12 of which were earned. Six walks, 10 strikeouts. Opponents hit 304 against Thompson. Seegers will get the first look at him. Thompson's got kind of long hair that comes out the back of his hat, whipping in the wind a little bit. First pitch from uh, two Seegers is up and in. Michael gets out of the way of that one. Thompson just a bit shorter in stature. And he brings his glove really close to his face. You just see his eyeballs coming out of there as he throws the next pitch high for ball two. It's the Ty Lingenberg. Just peer over the top of your yep. glove. Yep. Don't let him see him. Don't let him see your smirk. That's right. He looks like he's one of those pitchers that won't change his hat under any circumstances. You can, <laughs> you can tell from the broadcast booth up here that it's dirty, but uh, hey, maybe superstitious like like you and me. We have our our things that we don't change. Two balls and a strike to Seegers. There's things that work for you. You just keep doing them. Yeah. The two one breaking ball called strike inside corner. Two and two. One of the things that Coach Heller talked about was the the speed of this pitcher, the velocity he has. He's not going to touch 90 today, and, and that'll be something different uh, for the Hawkeyes. A middle 80s with the fastball. Um, you know, the change up there is, is kind of middle 70s. The slider's about the same speed, so they'll have to do a good job identifying, um, you know, try to do the best job you can identifying that out of the hand so that you're ready to go. 3-2 to Seegers. He lifts this in the air to center. Center fielder Morrison shields the Ooh. sun with his glove, and he reaches up and catches it for out number one. He must have had a hard time tracking that the whole time, holding that glove up over his head. It didn't really get a chance to look to see, but um, that ball was clearly right in the sun the whole way. The, the sun just above us in the press box uh, from our position, so the field is in full sunshine today. First pitch to Huckstorf, breaking ball inside, ball one. Huck 406 on the year now, the Hawks' leading average guy, second on the team in RBIs. 2 0 is the count to him. He's been on fire the past few weeks. As Thompson misses again, up and in. He's just, it's like its like Huckstorf's got a magnet on his left elbow. Every pitch has been right about there. And, and Kyle's taken a few pitches this year. Almost takes one right there. Every pitch was inside. Huckstorf draws the four-pitch walk. We've talked about that, though. On 3-0, and o, you have to make more of an effort to get out of the way there. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no reason to take that pitch. No bodily harm. And now, you know, Huck with, with 10 <laughs> stolen bases on the year is probably not the guy you want to just give a free base on four pitches. One of the, the stats for the Hawkeyes this year is the, the stolen bases. They've had quite a few of them. They have more this year than they had uh, last year. And to do that through 20 games, that's impressive. Here's DeRiggy. Nice game yesterday. Thompson does a good job. He's fairly quick to the plate. Good move there over yeah. first base. Huckstorf had a large lead, too. And they've thrown some guys out stealing bases, so they've they've done a pretty good job that way of uh, uh, you know so they must you know good quick to the plate and, and getting it down to second base. So they yeah, work to keep Huck close. They're awfully concerned about Huckstorf over there at first, thrown over to keep him close a couple of times. Wind blowing out to right now, three times over to to first. I'd like to see Dorigi maybe get his. His power out of here to right. What do you think? I'm, I'm all for that. Are you calling it? Should we, uh, do we mark that down? I don't think I'm going that far yet. Okay, all right. Got to get a strike from this pitcher first. The 1-0 on its way. This is a ground ball to second. Flip to second for one. On to first. Double play. Better luck next time for Brennan as the double play will end the first inning. We're scoreless at Dwayne Banks. We'll head to the second right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oakmall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. 
We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Top of the second inning, Jared Simpson on for a second inning of work. Held the Broncos scoreless in the first. Threw quite a few pitches, though, 27 in that first. We saw that yesterday with Brody Breck, too, and then we got it sorted out. And we'll look to see if Jared can, uh, you know, he was around the strike zone there. You know, might have got squeezed a time or two, but but it was around the zone. We'll have to find some better spots. And, and actually, you know, Kitchen had a great first at bat, fouling off a lot of pitches and, and extended it that way, too. So. Jimmy Allen, his first pitch swinging, but hitting it foul to start his at bat. He's their five hitter. Simpson with a couple of strikeouts in that first inning. And Allen's a guy that's not afraid to walk as well, so you're going to need to throw him strikes. He's got more walks this season than strikeouts, so. Yeah, he's patient, but Simpson's really pounding the zone. Goes outside corner there, 0 and 2. <laughs> You know, one of the things Hawkeyes try to do both offensively and pitching is you know, try to dominate the zone and see if Jared can execute his pitch here. Been a little inefficient on 0-2. Goes just high there. I'm all right with that, that pitch. Uh, but uh, Allen not going after it. One and two now I think is the spot where y you come back in. D don't really bother throwing an extra chase pitch maybe, but see what Coach McGrath calls up for Simpson's 1-2 pitch on its way home. Fisted over foul to the right side. That was in on the hands. It couldn't have felt good for Allen. Fouls it off, stays alive, one and two. And now you, you busted him inside with the changeup. Maybe you throw something on the outer part of the plate here and keep it kind of down in that same low zone. Moss sets up outside. This is shot into right field into the corner. That's a base hit. It'll get away from Wilmis for a moment. Allen is rounding first, heading for second. He'll stop there. It's a leadoff double for Jimmy Allen and the Western Michigan Broncos here in the second. Changeup was to went with the changeup on the outer part of the plate. Just maybe, maybe got a little too much of the plate there, I guess. And a good piece of hitting there. Just kind of dropped the bat on it. Didn't try to do too much with it. And just poked it out into right. The field... You know, it's clear of snow, but got to imagine it's still wet down there, right? You could see, and on, on, as Wilmus approached the, the corner there in the ball, he was chopping steps to make sure he didn't end up uh, on his backside. Next batter's Josh Swinehart. Simpson's ready in the pitch. This is hit foul to the right side into the screen. 0-1. Oh, you see the, the ball had some spin on it after that, after it landed out there in right. Well, and that's, you know, the right-handed hitter hitting it out to, to right field like that. It's, it's like a golfer slicing it out that direction. It'll kind of spin and slide that way, and, which then just moves it farther away from Wilmus. Nothing in one to Swinehart. Simpson set. Checks on the runner at second. The pitch. Breaking ball. Dropped below the zone. Ball one. Really good pitch there. Don't know how you don't offer it that one. Started outside and then kind of cut the the zone in half on its way through, but ended up missing. One ball, one strike. Nobody out top of the second. Runner on second for the Broncos. Pitch from Simpson. That's a called strike inside corner. Nice one there from Jared. It's one and two. Good bounce back. See if you can get the first out of the inning here. Really good crowd on hand 
this afternoon. One, two from Simpson, called third strike on the inside corner. I think he was fooled there, John. That's, yeah, he hadn't seen a fastball, and actually Jared hadn't thrown a ton of fastballs, and all of a sudden comes back and throws it almost across the middle of the plate, but too hot to handle or, uh, or, or too fooled to pull the trigger. Because he, he, he reached like he was going to swing in an outside pitch, but that thing was on the inside corner. Thought he was going to maybe keep it out there, but one down in the second. Here's Nevar. First pitch to him is outside. Moss will grab it there, 1-0. and Nevar, a, a 222 hitter. When you get to the bottom of this Western Michigan order, the, the averages just aren't that great. Right, 222 here, 200 from Budig. Um, you know, Nevar strikes out a little bit, you know, so you kind of want to go right at him. Holding the runner close. This is <laughs> shot into right field for a base hit. Wilmus picks it up. And it'll be runners at the corners for Western Michigan in the top of the second. He gotta, connected on that one pretty well. i got to be done saying that go right at him thing. That's just not worked out well this season. Well, make him earn it. We'll, we'll pitch it that way. Instead of giving him a, a free bag, you make him earn it. Now, hey, you, you bring the double play into action here unless Nevar steals. You get a double play, you get out of the inning. All right, and you've got your catcher up, so you're going to kind of assume he might not be the be the most speedy guy moving sure. around, but um, our catchers handle the bat well, so maybe you could see some, some action here if you're Western Michigan. Short lead at first. Nevar is trying to expand it. The batter is Greg Budig. First pitch, he squares to bunt, and he got hit by the pitch. That got him on the left leg, and he'll limp and hop his way down to first. Boy, squaring to bunt on Jared and catching that one in the thigh somewhere, that's... That's going to sting a little bit by the end of the day. And that'll prompt pitching coach Sean McGrath to come out of the Hawkeye bullpen to go talk with Jared Simpson in the Hawkeye infield. Bases are loaded for Western Michigan in the top of the second with just one out. Hawkeye baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. Well, you get the bottom of the order, Grady Mee, to stand in uh, when the pitching, the, the mound visit concludes. Mee, this is his first start. Had his first Pinch hit, hit yesterday. And had his first hit of the season yesterday. So, uh, you know, handled the bat well. Kind of got what, uh, what they needed out of him yesterday. He's only appeared in six games. Six of the 19 that Western Michigan has played. All right, bases are loaded. The corners are in for the Hawkeyes with one out. Middle infield playing back. Scoreless from Dwayne Banks early. Western Michigan threatening. First pitch floats high. Ball one. And one of the things, Jared, that was the eighth hit batter of the season for Jared. So one of the kind of hasn't walked a ton of guys, but uh, has given some free bases on the on the hit batter. 1-0 catches the inside corner, 1-1. One and one. You even think a, a fly ball to the outfield, yet you have a chance to throw the runner out at home because the ball's not carrying out of here today unless it's hit really well. One ball, one strike pitch from Simpson. High and outside, ball two. You would, think, you would tend to think um, that, it, that it would be a shorter fly ball and, and would give the, the Hawkeye outfielders a chance. And, you know, Peterson's shown a good arm. Huck's been able to actually turn a couple guys out on bases at different places, so I have a chance at it anyway. 2-1, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Chase the high heater there from Simpson. He did. That was, uh, you know, based on the strike zone we've seen so far, was probably a little bit too far upstairs, and uh, me went up and tried to get it and couldn't catch up to it. Go a lot of different directions here. Simpson focusing on the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. Two down. Big strikeout there. Now we'll roll back around to the top of the order. See if uh, Simpson can dispatch of Kitchen a little bit quicker this time. Hawkeyes have recorded five outs so far today. Four of them by strikeout. Tougher task in Kitchen now, the leadoff hitter. Bases still loaded, two down, and the Broncos second. First pitch from Simpson, outside corner, strike one. Okay. 
This is one of those uh, kind of momentum moments for either team. You know, whoever can, whoever kind of wins this at bat, can either run back into the dugout pretty excited or uh, extend the inning. Simpson tries for the high outside corner, but missed it one and one. That took a little bit. Just tried the sweeper there. Didn't quite. Uh, didn't quite hit his spot again. Just, just kind of struggling to locate just a little bit. Kitchen's a left-handed hitter. The 1-1 one, one check swing did not go. That pitch looked pretty good. Called a ball, 2-1. and one. Umpiring crew maybe favoring the hitters this weekend with the, <laughs> with the smaller zone. Two balls and a strike with two outs. Bases loaded. Simpson's ready in the pitch. Line drive, base hit to center. That'll score one. They're going to wave home another. Here comes the throw, cut off by DeRiggi. Two runs are in for Western Michigan. They lead 2-0 in the second. Had to go back to the fastball down 2-1 and one there in the count. And good piece of hitting by Kitchen. Just sent it right back up the middle to give, the, give Western Michigan the lead. If we go back to yesterday, you know, that's now five in a row for Western Michigan. You know, as Hawks jumped out to the lead, Bats kind of got quiet, and Western Michigan's picked up toward the end of the game. So, Hucks will need to turn the tide around here. We were a little bit uh, concerned just how that game unfolded towards the end yesterday as a first pitch strike from Simpson to Morrison. And just that the momentum had maybe changed a little bit and shifted over to the Western Michigan side. Even though Iowa still won that game 9-3, to three, they were dominating through 7. And Western Michigan... Fouled off out of play to the right. Uh, they stayed up on their on the rail of the dugout. You know they were they were fired up and moving the whole game. Um, you know especially as they as they started to get the threat going in the ninth the ninth inning. You know they had some some chirping going on yeah. and and they were still engaged, which you don't always see when you've got a team down like that. Simpson's got Morrison in the 0-2 hole. The pitch from Jared, just outside ball one. Runners on first and second for the Broncos. Top two, they lead 2 nothing. You know, we flipped the at-bat. Morrison was ahead 3-0 the first at-bat. Drew ended up drawing the walk. Now Simpson was ahead 0-2. There it is. Inside corner for the third strike. Third out of the inning. But a couple of runs are plated for Western Michigan. A bases loaded single that... Plates two, Western Michigan two, Iowa nothing. Back to the bottom of the second right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Well, different start to this game than we saw yesterday. Western Michigan, they're on the board first with a couple of runs. Iowa went down one, two, three. In the bottom of the first, it'll be Anthony Tello and Peterson uh, due up to try to answer Western Michigan here in the second. A good, efficient first inning from Thompson. He threw 12 pitches, was the benef beneficiary of the, the double play ball, which... Western Michigan is one of the best teams in the country of turning double yeah. plays. So good job there to get the to get the turn, and now it'll be on Iowa's offense to answer that uh, crooked number that Western Michigan put up. Plate discipline and patience probably the key uh, for Hawkeye hitters. Get a couple of base runners, uh, maybe a bloop and a blast uh, to tie this one up. Trailing two nothing. Anthony's the batter. First pitch was inside. Second one from Thompson's on its way. Floats in there at 75 miles an hour. Called strike on the corner. 
Caught that high inside part of the part of the plate. Good breaking ball there, strike one. 1-1, one, one. Anthony takes a healthy hack at it. Just missed it and fouled it off to the right. One and two. That's a good fastball. Again, you're, it's not really how fast you throw it necessarily as much as the difference between the speeds. And so good job varying the speeds up, keeping Anthony off balance. One, two, way outside. Not a competitive pitch. Two and two. We talked yesterday. Booty got a workout there on his yeah. uh, on his catching gear, and that was really the first time that uh, that Thompson's been out of the out of kind of the the immediate area. We'll call it two two to Anthony. That hit him. Oh, up and in. Got him on the shoulder, left shoulder blade. And there's the leadoff man. He's on for the Hawkeyes in their attempt to answer. Well, if you're Keaton Anthony, it's probably not exactly the way you want to get on base, but uh, but a good taking the role of the leadoff hitter and getting on. That's the uh, that's the important part for the Hawkeyes right now. And here's Raider Tello, great addition to the Hawkeye lineup. Has firmly planted himself at the at the five spot in the batting order. Such a great personality too. First pitch to him. He's not swinging at that one outside and low ball one. We, we really don't talk enough, I suppose, about his, his defense over there at third. You know, he, Iowa doesn't have a ton of ground ball outs, you know, that, and, and so it's easy to kind of lose track of as that pitch, pitch misses just inside. Um, but, but it's easy to miss, you know, how Iowa can play defense is because, you know, Jared struck out five of the six hitters this game or yeah, five of the six point. outs. And, you know, Brody yesterday. So it's, it's those types of things. Two O's outside again, three and O. But does a good job down there guarding third base for, for Iowa and, um, you know, has been there been there every game so far. Probably got the red light here. Unfortunately, won't be able to see him swing at this pitch. It's right down the middle. And it called strike three and one. So now we'll get to see if Raider can swing it if he sees a strike from Thompson. If I had to guess, I'd say Raider was excited to see that strike. So yeah. He at least gets a chance now. Anthony's at first. Iowa trailing Western Michigan in game one of the doubleheader. 2-0, two bottom two. Looking for the first hit of the game for the Hawks. 3-1 to Tello. That's low, ball four. Good job there. You know, didn't uh, didn't expand the strike zone. Made, the, made uh, Thompson come to him and couldn't do it. Threw it down low. We'll see if uh, Petey's got a good bat, so we'll see if maybe we uh, we could see some. You know, Petey hit the home run yesterday, but also is a very good bunter, good speed. Hawks could play some games here with two on. And and that's the thing too, the the speed that he has makes this maybe not so difficult of a of a decision, right? Because if you have a strictly power hitter, you don't necessarily want to take it out of his hands. He's swinging on the first pitch and he missed it. It's 0-1, but here we are thinking that he was going to bunt it, and he went to swing at it. Maybe the bunt sign will be on. Here, third baseman playing even with the bag. That was 86 mile an hour fastball. Just challenged him right in the middle of the plate, down low. Petey tried to go uh, go down and get him, couldn't quite get it done. Nothing in one pitch. That's low and outside for a ball. Peterson not squaring the bunt on the first couple of pitches. Something to keep in mind. Runners on first and second for Iowa. Bottom two, down two. Nobody out in the inning. Part of it could be two that with Anthony out at second base. Ooh. Ooh, that one hit him up and in in between the shoulder blades and now three free bases in the inning for the Hawkeyes a pair of hit batsmen and a walk sandwiched in between that loads the bases with nobody out Sam Honar will come up but what I was about to say was you know sometimes with you know Keaton Anthony isn't the fastest Hawkeye runner and so you know makes the sacrifice sometimes a little bit more challenging and so maybe just decided to not do it and let Petey hit because he's been doing a nice job lately. And now Honor will get a chance as the first pitch is outside. Got action in the Western Michigan bullpen already. Yeah, I was just going to reference that because Thompson's kind of lost it here. Uh, he's hit a couple of batters, and, and we'll have a pause as the Western Michigan coach is coming out of the dugout here for a minute. He asked the infielders and the catcher to stay where they're at. Just going to talk to the pitcher. <laughs> that makes it kind of a lonely conversation. All eyes on you. I'm going to say some things I don't want you to hear right now. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, coach goes out there and just puts his arm around the young man and offers his encouragement. Bases are loaded for Iowa. Bottom two, it's 2 nothing. Western Michigan. And, Hawks threatening. And Thompson's just a freshman, so sometimes it can just be, hey, I trust you. you know, come get it done. You know, do what you do. Don't try to do anything extra. Um, you know, we talk about it with Iowa pitchers, and I, I'm sure the, the conversation is a little bit like, you got to trust that your stuff is good enough. Uh, and, you know, and it can be hard. You know, for a freshman, he's gotten hit around a little bit. Now, all of a sudden, it's cold. He's not throwing it where he wants. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We, we kind of joke about how these pep talks go. And yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how well he responds to it. It's missed on quite a few pitches in a row now. 1-0 pitch to Honar. That catches the outside corner. And it's 1-1. One one. Bases loaded. Nobody out in the Hawkeyes second. Trailing Western Michigan 2 nothing. You don't always see uh, a friendly strike zone when the pitcher's been kind of slinging it around a little bit, but got a good call there. Yeah, helped him out a bit. Goes to the outside corner again. Nice breaking ball. Called strike. Sam doesn't want to swing at that one. Don't blame him, really, because that's a ground ball, most likely. Yeah, that's why. Well, but this is where you're going to have to see. If they're going to work you outside, you've got to go the other way. Yep, just throw the hands. One, two, and got a piece of it. They went outside again. Honar fouled it off straight to the pad. And we'll stay at one and two. But it, in the way they have him shifted, even with two strikes, they're still shifted on the infield to the right side. This is one where, hey, on the outside, just throw the hands, lift it over the third baseman's head or split the difference there, and you got to base it in an RBI. And, and we've seen Sam be successful at that, so he's just got to stick with it. One, two, lifts this in the air, deep to left center. Get going, baby. It is one hopping off the wall. One run is in. Make it two. Peterson's hot on Tello's tail. He's going to score, and the Hawks have the lead. Three to two, a bases clearing double. Sam Honar, yes. Sam Honar goes the opposite way, hit that gap with a little bit more height than you were talking about as he drove that 370 out into the left center field gap. Sam Peterson got a great read on it from first base, and so he was just cooking right behind Tello the whole way. The base is clearing double, and all of a sudden the Hawks have the lead. Boom, just like that. Iowa three, Western Michigan two, and here's Cade Moss to keep it going. Nobody out in the Hawkeyes second. There's Honar at second base, time called, and another mound visit. And I think if you get two, you got to make a change, and that's what's going to happen right here. A pitching change coming for Western Michigan. Iowa getting to the bullpen early against the Broncos. And it's Sam Honar that deals the blow with a three RBI double. Hawks lead three to two. We'll take a pitching change break, and we'll let you know who the next Bronco pitcher is right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash findus. Iowa leads Western Michigan 3-2 in the bottom of the second inning, thanks in large part to the Sam Honar double that cleared the bases just a moment ago to give Iowa the, the lead. And now Western Michigan goes to their bullpen probably earlier than they had planned. In the bottom of the second, they'll go with Dane Armbrustmaker, left-handed pitcher coming in. This will be Dane's sixth appearance. He's actually made five starts. He's got a 6.37 ERA. He's 2-1 and one on the season, 29 and two-thirds, giving up 30 hits, 21 runs. They've all been earned, 15 walks, 31 strikeouts. Um, of, of the 30 hits, 16 of them have been extra base hits, so a little bit of a, a chance for the Hawkeyes to maybe barrel up a little bit and, and keep the rally going. 
Cade Moss will be the hitter for the Hawkeyes. First pitch is lifted foul and out of play to the right side. It'll be 0-1. You know, middle 80s fastball, um, about the same velocity as, as what the Hawkeyes just saw, but coming from now, now the opposite side of, uh, of the pitching rubber. No balls and a strike to Moss. And the pitch just high and outside. For a ball, one and one. Nobody out in the Hawkeyes second. Iowa leading 3-2. Runner at second is Honar. Armburst maker is ready. And the pitch, that's a breaking ball high. Ball two. And Western Michigan kind of goes with Iowa's maybe game plan to go with the lefty and then the righty. And then back to the lefty, you know, that they're with their pitching scheme. And obviously, having started so many of his appearances, they, they trust him and good fastball there on the inner half. So, so you know, he could he could survive a long time here if he can if he comes in, throws strikes and, and can keep the Hawkeye hitters off balance, he could kind of get you back on track. Two balls, two strikes. That's the count for Cade Moss. The pitch just inside ball three. It's close. Very. Uh, he's, he's had a couple of really good pitches that haven't gone his way here. Now and the count is full. Long pause. The delivery. Moss hits it. Fair down the left field line. Honar will be waved in. Moss digging for two. The left fielder just now picks it up. It'll be an RBI double. Cade Moss. Hawks lead 4-2. I was talking to Cade's dad uh, before the pregame show started. We were kind of joking about Cade's power, but when he's got placement like that, right down the line, who needs power? You can put anything into the corner. Uh, you're going to end up at, at second more times than not. Uh, very well done there, Andy. Still nobody out in the inning. The Hawks have played at four. Not done yet. Here's Ben Wilmus. Saw Ben earlier today. Still didn't ask him why he doesn't wear batting gloves. Swings at the first pitch. Missed it 0-1. I got you there. I talked to him. You did? You get yep. it? Yeah. Well, because I had to make, Always count on you, I had Sean. to make sure he knew that I called him morning track yesterday after that flyout. So, oh, more of a... You start with the dig. All start right, got with the it. dig and then go back for the information. <laughs> but yeah, he, he said he likes the feel. He, with, the, with the rosin and the, and the chalk, he gets a better grip on the bat. So it's it's just a preference. He's got a. He said he has very particular. His hands sweat in particular spots, and so this is the best way for him to get to get good grip and have good feel. All right. I bought it. You, we can, we cannot question that. If he comes up with a an answer like that, it must be true. He squares to bunt, pulls it back. Oh, and they said that he didn't pull it back, and so it's a call. It's a strike. Here comes Coach Heller to talk with the home plate umpire. And he can't believe it. The count's one and two. My goodness, John. He, he did pull it back. And I guess he, not soon enough. I guess I'm I, not sure. I suppose that's the argument. All right. Well, Wilmus has to protect with two strikes now, and swings and fouls it off. Stays alive. He has to shake off. I mean, obviously he's going to be frustrated there to not be ahead in the count. So he's got to kind of flush that and be rid of it and, and just keep a good at bat. And the pitch that he pulled the bunt uh, back from, it, it was not a strike. Uh, it was called a strike because they said that he didn't pull it back soon enough, but it was out of the zone. The 1 2, Wilmis chased it outside. He is out number one. That's just a tough at bat there for Ben. Tough break on the, uh, obviously, on the 1 1 pitch. And, you know, once you're behind, then put the, uh, put the pitcher in charge and give him the full the full repertoire of pitches, it becomes a little bit tougher, and he heated him up there with a good fastball. You know, the scouting report was was middle 80s, but um, armbrist maker has, yeah. been, uh, has been in the low 90s here so far. Top of the order in Seegers. We'll get back to that in just a moment. First pitch to Michael is at the eyes for a ball. You wonder, just make a comparison, uh, maybe something a little like Ty Langenberg, right, where uh, started a few games and went to the bullpen. His velocity all of a sudden goes a little bit higher. Maybe that's the same with this Western Michigan pitcher here. A little bit more carefree. You know, you're, you're let's not miss his low and away. You know, you're not thinking, hey, I'm going to throw seven innings here. It's I'm going to come in and, and, you know, I need to throw hard for four. You know, and so it's a little bit different mindset and, and 
Maybe you use up a little more gas in the tank with each pitch. Seager's in a good spot here. Still the runner at second. That's Moss. 2-0 to Michael. And that's high ball three. Ish. Yeah. Another, another day with a tight zone for the pitchers and the hitters. Hawks leading 4-2, bottom two. Armbrus Maker's going to have to deal this one right down the middle, but it's outside, but call the strike. All right, three and one. <laughs> we, we got to the place we should have been. Yes. We just did it in a slightly different order. Seager's patiently waiting the 3-1. That's on the inside corner, three and two. Good pitch there. We'll see now. Good battle back here from Armbrus Maker. We'll see if Seegers is ready to go if he gets a competitive pitch. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. Seegers down on strikes, two down in the Hawkeye second. Talk a little bit about uh, the Hawkeye hitters. Um, you know, yesterday with you know, call, uh, effectively wild, so to speak. You know, with, with uh, you know when the pitcher's all over the strike zone or or not in the strike zone. Um, you know, sometimes you've, it's it's hard to be ready when you get those, and so you've got to really lock in and see it well. First pitch to Huxdorf, skies it in the air on the right side, shallow right. Second baseman going back, right fielder calls everybody off near the line. And he's got it for the third out of the inning. Four runs across for the Hawkeyes. We've grabbed the lead. It's 4-2. to two. Back for the third. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Iowa leading Western Michigan 4-2, top of the third in Iowa City. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, well, we took the lead on the Broncos after they grabbed it first with two in the second. Hawks double them up in the bottom half of the inning. And now after the beginning, you got to put up a zero. We talk about it all the time, John. Right, and, and that was, you know, Western Michigan didn't. You know, so now now for Jared Simpson, you've been um, not your best, but, but now you have a lead. So come back out, throw strikes, get back in the dugout, uh, and, and do, it, uh, do it quickly and efficiently here on the 2-3-4 hitters. Yeah, pretty good spot. Three, four, five. Yep, three, four, five. Gavin Doyle, first pitch, check swing, went around, home plate umpire will call it himself. 0 and 1. And and this is a good spot for Simpson, I think, with the, the bullpen totally quiet. Uh, attack these three, four, five hitters, and then you know, hopefully face six, seven, eight the next inning. 0 1 pitch, swing and a miss. Threw that one right by him 0 2. Right. If you can if you can get to a point now where you you know you find your groove, you find some efficiency. Um, you know, Jared's been 0 2 a lot and, and so he's just gotta finish these at bats and, and uh, you know he can he can get through four and five innings. Nice job by Simpson. Foul tip into the glove, one down, another strikeout for Jared. I just like seeing that so much better. You know, didn't uh, didn't start picking at the edges, didn't try to, hey, how am I going to do this? Just went right after him, gave yep. him a fastball and said, are you good enough? And, and Jared won the battle. I like that approach, right, where 
it's maybe a wrinkle in the game plan because you almost assume that Iowa will go with a, a chase pitch. Western Michigan right now, they're free swing, and they've missed on four in a row as Cade Sullivan comes up empty on that one, 0-1. Oh one, but uh, uh, to just kind of throw a wrinkle, a curveball in there, and, hey, no, I'm not going with a chase pitch here. I'm going to strike you out right now. Yeah, went straight fastball right to it, you know, and then starts this at bat with a good changeup. Just high and outside on the 0-1. Oh but a good pitch, you know, it didn't miss by much up and away. And, you know, again, you're not going to throw all strikes all the time. But, you know, competitive pitches in and around the zone is what you're what you're looking for right now with the lead. A ball and a strike to Sullivan. Backdoor breaking ball just outside. And it's two and one. And especially with an umpire that doesn't seem to be given the black part of the plate, you know, you really have to come back and, yeah. and get across the zone and challenge hitters. Um, because you're not really getting edges, so you're going to have to be in the spot. That looked pretty good, but it was just low. Three and one. Just missed downstairs. Good fastball he came back with. Good uh, good job from Sullivan to not, uh, to not expand the zone at all. Moss sets up a bit outside. Three, one, fouled back to the screen. Good challenge pitch there from Simpson. And a possibility... For Jared to get his seventh strikeout of the game if he can deal a strike right here. Came right back to the fastball there, almost in the same spot. So good uh, good placement. See if he can give him one more. Looks in for the sign, feels, deals it, popped it up, out of play. A foul ball will stay here at three and two. One out in the top of the third. Iowa leading 4-2. The 3-2. Ah, missed it. Knew it out of the hand. That was going to be ball four outside. It's funny. You can see that a couple times with Jerry that uh, you just see it out of his hand that it, uh, it's like he doesn't have the grip on it that he wants, and it just it, it immediately floats outside of the zone. And you, I, I was right there with you. As soon as, it, as soon as it came out, you knew it wasn't going to be a pitch that, uh, that was even going to tempt the hitter. Now it's Jimmy Allen, and again, he's got another base hit. First pitch swinging. They'll keep the runner at second. A backdoor throw comes into Seegers, and a one-out single. Allen's having a nice day for Western Michigan. Just, uh, again, went with the pitch, pushed it right out into right field, and, uh, and that's on an inside pitch, so not an easy ball to hit that way. Um, to pull your hands in and, and still be able to get enough barrel to hit it hard that way, but... Get a little bit of movement down in the Hawkeye bullpen, but if Jared can just, uh, again, we're just a 6-4-3 from, right. uh, from being done here. More ground balls. Here's Swinehart. He struck out his first time. First pitch from Simpson. Breaking ball missed high. About a nice sharp ground ball to Tello where he could maybe step and throw. Get a double play. He's playing pretty far off the bag, though. Okay, that'll be a tough one for him. 1-0 is hit off the end of the bat and foul out of the stadium to the right. 1-1. One and one. Swinehart expanded the zone just a little bit there. Helped out uh, Helped out Simpson. Yeah, to your point, that'd be, have to be a chopper for Tello to get in <laughs> yeah. and get that one over there at third. Simpson's ready, the 1-1. One, one. This is hit in the air, deep right center. Look out, and it is off the wall. One run is in, and that is a deep double that plates a run. It's 4-3, to three. two runners in scoring position for Western Michigan now. That ball went 377 off the wall. It must have been 379 or so because he, he got all of it going out that direction as he stayed with the changeup and drove it out uh, Drove it out into right center field. That was a good start to the inning for Simpson, but now the Broncos are, are hitting him pretty well. And this is the Western Michigan offense that, uh, you know, not in terms of runs, but that we were expecting to see because they do have some good hitters up and down the, the lineup. Put, they're able to put the ball in play for the most part. Um, you know, so you've got you to gotta attack guys. You have to throw good pitches. And, you know, a little bit of that is the, you know, it, it is the strike zone. You re you really can't nibble, and so you've got to come to the plate. And a great job from Western Michigan of when when they when Jared comes into the middle of the plate, they've been able to hit it. Just gets a swing and miss there. Bottom third of the order. 
Getting started off with Dylan Nevar. He swung and missed at the first pitch. Runners at second and third for Western Michigan. Just one out. Top of the third. Yeah, he swings and misses again. He's down in the count 0-2. Simpsons got him in the palm of his hand right now. And Nevar had the, uh, what do they call it, the golden sombrero, the four, four at-bats, four strikeouts yeah. yesterday. So he's obviously a strikeout candidate here if Simpson can make a quality pitch. 0-2, just outside with the slider. Nevar swung at two sliders that were lower and more outside than that one. He laid off of that one, though. With two strikes, no less. Yeah. A ball and two strikes with one out. Strikeout would be huge here for Simpson. Let's see if he can get it. Feels it, deals it. Mm, fouled off to the left side. We'll do it again at one and two. Good fastball there up in the zone. See if Jared goes back to that breaking ball away and uh, if Nevar has the same discipline to stay away, but now that he's changed his eye line just a little bit. Deep breath from Simpson, the pitch. Hit on the ground a second. This will bring home a run. Honar's got it. He'll throw it to first for the second out of the inning, but the Broncos have tied it up in the third. We're in a shootout with Western Michigan. It's four to four. Yeah, Hawkeyes playing the infield back, figure that uh, uh, probably not done scoring anyway, so just give up the one run to tie instead of two by pulling in the infield and having somebody single past you. That one would have turned out to be kind of the tailor-made mm. uh, tailor ball to hold him. Yeah. Runner at third with two outs now. It takes away the, the sacrifice opportunity for Greg Budig. First pitch strike to him. You know, important for Jared here to get out of, you know, Fine, you gave the two back. You hate it, but get out of the inning tied. You know, don't uh, don't do any more damage here, and let that guy on third get in. A one hit oh. fair down the first base line into the corner. Budig rounding first, heading for second. He'll slow up and stop there. Western Michigan's got the lead, five four. Mm. So there have been some good hit balls off Jared today. That was not one of them. A little cue ball right down the first base line. Uh, yeah, Jared did, uh, that, boy, that's an inside fastball. Uh, Budig just kind of, I don't even know what he dropped on it to get that to, to roll that way, but we'll see Zach Volker now. Yeah, it was a spinner, but it didn't kick anywhere. It just spun its way all the way down past the bag and into the corner. The Broncos with a 5-4 lead, top of the third. That'll do it for Jared Simpson. Hawkeyes will go to the bullpen. We'll give you the information on the new Hawkeye pitcher right after this pitching change break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all hy V Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Now, back and forth game in game one of the doubleheader from Dwayne Banks today. Western Michigan, uh, they teeter-totter and seesaw their way back to the lead. They're up 5-4. The Hawks have to go to the bullpen. Here comes Zach Volker. Zach will be making his sixth relief appearance of the season. He's 2-0 with a 474 ERA. Does have a save in 19 innings, giving up 16 hits, 10 runs, walked just six, struck out 19. Feels like we haven't seen Zach in weeks. I was thinking the same thing. I was trying to trying to think through. I'm sure he pitched somewhere in that South Dakota State game, but or did he? Oh yeah, he did. Uh, he came in relief of. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look uh, back just a minute. But e either way, it just feels like we haven't seen Volker in in some time. We saw him at Texas Tech for sure. Did he relieve Brody on Friday down in Kansas City? I'm gonna have to pull it up quickly here. Last action for 
Volker was against South Dakota State. I'm trying to think back uh, when he got in. He pitched two innings, gave up two earned. Now that makes sense. I remember two hits, two runs. Yep. That was Friday, yeah. Yeah, that was the Friday game down in Missouri. He did have three strikeouts, but uh, yes. Yeah, the Will came in, finished that That's game right. off, or finished that inning off, and, and allowed a couple of runs, or a couple of inherited base runners to score. <laughs> Runner on second, first pitch from Volker to Grady Mee is outside for a ball. Two down in the Bronco third. They lead this five to four. Uh, out hitting the Hawks six to two. Yeah. So Iowa having their work cut out for them the rest of the way. Volker with a Taylor outside to an O. Yeah, really nice job so far from the Western Michigan hitters. I mean, there's two walks. They've taken advantage of the opportunities then with six hits so far. Volker cannot find the zone on the first three pitches. You just got one out to get to, to send us to the bottom of the third, see if we can answer, but Zach's got to work a little bit harder here, 3 and 0 You really prefer not to roll around to the top with two runners on. Yeah, good point. There it is, comes home with a strike, 3 and one me struck out in the second. I mean, you got a guy with seven at bats on the season. You really need to go right after him. Volker comes set, checks on the runner at second, the 3 1. He Ooh. chased it, popped it up left side. Raider Tello is on the line. Now he's in foul territory. He reaches up, but he's got it for the third out of the inning. Me chased that one. It was probably ball four, but we'll take it. And Western Michigan, they plate three in the top of the third. They've grabbed the lead right back. It's 5-4. Back for the bottom of the third right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Congratulations, you're having a little girl. At that moment, everything changed. Our hopes and dreams for ourselves were instantly replaced by our hopes and dreams for her. We got life insurance policies from Shelter Insurance, so that regardless of what life throws at us, we'll still be able to provide the world to her. Visit shelterinsurance.com to find an agent to help you pick a policy that's right for you. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Western Michigan with five runs on six hits through their three plate appearances. Hawkeyes with four runs on just two hits. So the Broncos have given Iowa quite a few free bases. Iowa's made them pay, but let's get the bats going a little bit. Down by one, bottom of the third in game one of the doubleheader with Western Michigan this afternoon. DeRiggy will lead things off for Iowa. Both teams have been very efficient so far. Western Michigan with their six hits, uh, five of those have come with runners on base, four of them with runners in scoring position, and both Iowa hits have come with runners in scoring position. So uh, when the teams get there, they've been able to capitalize. Lefty on lefty matchup. DeRiggy misses, uh, he watches a pitch that misses outside, ball one. Uh, interesting note that you just made right there because Western Michigan was very poor at hit, hitting with runners on yesterday. Didn't have too many on in the first place. Didn't have too many hits either, but... Uh, really struggled to advance anybody and yeah, right, right until the end of the game uh, Marcus gave up a couple free bases and and they were able to to drive one in that way but uh, why did, I was just I'm sorry I got a little distracted with uh, Derigi and they, they really have the scattering report clearly says to work him away because we saw this a ton yesterday as well as all three pitches have missed outside here make it four Derigi's on with a four pitch walk he must make some intimidating faces back to the pitcher or something, because nobody wants to throw to this guy. <laughs> I mean, clearly, they don't want to. They don't want to come inside and hit him, and he doesn't seem to particularly crowd the plate any more than most. But um, 
Th there's something about it, and especially you know, that lefty lefty matchup. Uh, you know, a good start to the inning as, as Western Michigan hung up a crooked number and good pitch there on the inner part of the plate. First pitch strike to Anthony. Derigi just drew his 14th walk of the season. Tops on the team. Count is nothing and one to Anthony. The pitch, that's outside, but called a strike. 0 and 2. Actually, Chase mostly. 15. Oh, Chase got 15? Yeah. You wouldn't think that. Again, that's the. Uh, you got my stat sheet. I, t I stole your stat sheet. <laughs> I would not have thought that. I thought that Chase might have had a few Ooh. more hit by pitches. Anthony drives this deep to right. Get going, baby. It's gone. Ho -ho! Anthony gives the Hawkeyes the lead right back. Boom. Are we having fun? <laughs> I tell you, though, this is not exactly what either team wants in the first game of a doubleheader. It's not, but we'll take it as long as we can win it 6-5. to five. Anthony with the lead on the home run deep to right. That'll give him the team lead. Fifth home run as he drives that one over the right field wall. 375. Kind of talked about, you know, maybe there was enough helping wind there to the right that that would fit in well for Keaton Anthony. And we're going to have a mound visit with the trainer. Yeah, this is interesting. A lot of staff members coming out to check on the Western Michigan pitcher. And, you know, maybe that's why he didn't get the start. Was he's maybe he's been battling something and, you know, the things that you, you don't know. Um, but yeah, we've got a a big visit there, and so we might get uh, we might have some time if if they have to go to the bullpen. Long pause here and just checking out. It looks like uh, some something to do with his back, and I honestly don't see anybody down there in that Western Michigan bullpen, do you? Now with an injury, though, you can you, then you get as many pitches as you need sure. to to warm up. So we'll see what happens here, but. Hawk fans experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels, Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton. Each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. A couple of Broncos come sprinting out of the dugout to go down to the bullpen and, and get loose as the pitcher... Armbrust maker is going to throw a few just to see how he feels in the meantime. We well, can't catch the throwback, so he must be in trouble. Yeah. He's got some something up with his back. He's twisting and turning out there. And I don't know if he's going to be able to go. Yeah, that looks to be about all. He just threw a couple and talking to his coach, and I think we're going to be making a change here. Yeah, they point down to the bullpen to try to bring in the, the pitcher and that'll do it for Armbrust Maker. We'll take a break here in just a minute. Iowa leading 6-5 and you hope that Dane Armbrust Maker can, can make a recovery and, and feel a little bit better soon. He's coming out of the game. Western Michigan will go with a new pitcher in just a little bit. He's going to have to take some time to get warm because he's surrounded by the snow that's out there in the bullpen. He's probably as ice cold as it is over there in the bullpen with the with the snow. New pitcher coming in for Western Michigan. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this pitching change break. Listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at Opal.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. John Evans, John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. The Hawkeyes leading the Western Michigan Broncos 6-5 in a back-and-forth game. We're just in the bottom of the third inning, though. Both teams getting into their bullpen. Western Michigan just a bit 
deeper. They'll have to go to the bullpen now with Jake Gurnan. This will be Jake's ninth appearance. Best uh, best Western Michigan pitcher by ERA, 235 ERA, seven and two-thirds innings, giving up six hits, four runs. Just two of those were earned, though. Two walks, three strikeouts. Held opponents to a 231 batting average. So we'll see... Uh, We'll see how he can do here, and as he'll get uh, as many warm-up pitches as he needs. You know, that's one thing to one thing to come rolling in on a day that's 80, 85 degrees, and, and think, oh yeah, I'll get loose and be fine. But a day like this, it uh, you know, you see these guys do a lot of the the plyo stuff, the throwing the throwing the ball off the mat, those types of things. Even before they start pitching, he had no time to do any of that. Nothing. No bands. No weighted balls. Nothing. Uh, to get loose, but he, hey, he's ready to go. He threw all his pitches, and and that'll do it for his warm up. But you know, you just think, mm, in a doubleheader game, you don't want to get this deep into the bullpen. You're really going to run out of pitching, and I, I think Western Michigan's kind of shorthanded as it is. And and we got to him a bit yesterday too. So uh, using a lot of pitchers, three of them now through uh, just a few innings. Raider Tello is up. He'll try to get things started again for Iowa with the bases empty. Nobody out. First pitch strike on the outside corner to Tello. Iowa leading 6-5, bottom three. Kernan has that low 80s fastball slider. Uh, fouled off right into the, the Bronco dugout. But slider kind of in that same, same range, really high 70s. So not a lot of speed difference. So you look for the Hawkeyes to kind of stay, stay locked in. And even if they're fooled a little bit, be able to make contact. 0-2 oh, up and shouldered away by Tello. Almost hit him. 1-2 and two's a count. We looked to close a couple uh, couple books. Jared Simpson, 2 and 2 thirds innings, 6 hits, 5 runs, couple walks, 6 strikeouts. 1-2 to Tello. Shot down the right field line and down for a base hit. Into the corner. Raiders digging for two. He's got a double in the Hawkeye third. How about that, Raider? Really nice piece of hitting there. Ball was a really good pitch. Low and outside and right on the edge of the strike zone. Had to make contact. Raider went and got it and drove it into the right field corner. Opposite field power for Tello. That away. And dug that one deep into the corner. And he just fun watching the ball skip off the turf today. It's just sliding because it's so wet and cold yet. You might pick up speed on that first hop, really. On the Western Michigan side, DJ Thompson, one inning, gave up a hit, four runs. They were all earned, a couple walks, a couple hit batters. Here's Peterson, first pitch swinging but missing, 0-1. An arm brisk maker will end up on an inning pitched, gave up two hits, two runs, both earned on that home run, a walk, and a couple strikeouts. All right. It's Gurnan's job now. Nobody out, bottom three. Ooh, this one got Petey up and in. It sounded like that hit the the jaw protector on on the helmet it sounded like i heard a click up here didn't you that's a two for two day you don't want to go with pd as he's <laughs> been hit both times now as uh the plate appearances he's got a magnet or something and he will lead uh you know, i'm not going to jump to the conclusion you got the you got the stats he's got to be the most hit batter on the iowa that lineup is, maybe chase mosley's in there no that is eight that uh that takes the lead uh he, he had the lead with, at six, so there was a couple guys at five, but he's he's decided to take a stranglehold on the lead, and he's up to eight now. It's just sort of fascinating uh, with, with Honar standing in, first pitch strike to him. Two on, nobody out in the Hawkeye third, leading 6-5 over Western Michigan. The 0-1 in the air to left field. Left fielder has a beat on it. Kitchen will take a few steps in. He's got it out number one. Honar just missed that one. That's he, he did the same thing. He, he took a good approach, knew they were going to be working him away, and uh, just didn't uh, didn't quite have the same drive he had on the, in his last at bat. Just a point I was going to make: the the free base conversation that we always have is is mainly viewed on a defensive or pitching perspective from from our standpoint. When we talked to Coach Heller, man, I was gotten a lot of free bases this weekend. They have a lot of a lot of walks, a lot of hit by pitches. I think we were. Uh, Yesterday, the Hawks took. Hawks only ended up, I guess, with eight walks um, and no hit by pitches. But you had three wild pitches yesterday from 
pitch misses just inside. He had three wild pitches yesterday from the Broncos, so you know, Hawks count those all as free bases as well. It's three to three today with walks and, and hit batters, and we haven't even played three innings yet. Iowa leading 6 5, 2 0 pitch to Moss. I ah, chased one, fouled it off to Coach Heller. Good fielding practice for Coach down the line. He scooped it up, tosses it to the Iowa dugout. Two balls and a strike with one out. Iowa up one in the third. I got that tempting fastball up where he could see it up around the letters, but just tough to get around on that on the inside part of the plate. Hits this on the ground to the shortstop. He'll throw it to third for one. They'll get the lead runner there, and that's all for now. Two down in the Hawkeye third. We saw that same play yesterday, too, except for the shortstop had to make a diving play, so he made an off-balance throw to third, but um, really going to be the easiest out for him. You don't, you don't see it all the time, but good heads-up play by the third baseman to make sure he, he goes and covers the bag to give a target, because otherwise that's a tough off-balance throw all the way to first to get Moss. Tello was the runner out at third. Here's Wilmus. First pitch, low. Ball one, just below the knees. Ish. Yeah. That was a fine-looking pitch from up here. Hawks really don't want to be done here. You'd like to see Wilmus drive in that runner from second. 1-0 to Ben. There's a pitch that was in a similar spot this time. Called a strike. It's 1-1. One and one. Ben had the tough strikeout last at bat when uh, didn't quite get the bat pulled back on a bunt. Just a little bit late on the 1-1 pitch. Swings and misses. One ball, two strikes, two outs now to Wilmus. He hit being late on an 82-mile-an-hour fastball. Must have had something, uh, thinking something a little different or just didn't see it very well out of the hand. So he'll have to bounce back here and see if he can get this ball in play. The 1-2 just low and outside for a ball. Evening the count at two. Two's on the board for Wilmus. Like Gernon tried to give that a little bit extra and got it to 83 mile an hour, but missed the uh, missed the zone. Here's the 2-2 shot right back up the middle into center field. They're going to wave Petey. Here he comes. The throw cut off at the mound. An RBI single. Benny Wilmus. Yes. Very nicely done there by Wilmer. Stayed right on that one. Drove it right back up the box. We saw that second baseman make some, make some outstanding plays yesterday. Couldn't dive and get that one, though. And that'll be an RBI single and bring the top of the order up for the Hawks. Not done yet. Hawks lead 7-5. Just like that, the Hawks are piling the hits together. They only had two coming into this inning. They're up to five now. And done a nice job. You know, they've, they've been able to, to cue this one up a little bit. Obviously, the uh, uh, the Anthony home run's the loud one, but Tello, Tello stuck with one, and they've just done a good job of hitting line drives again. That's something that's really starting to, to come around, right? To, even at the beginning of the year, the contact was, was all right. Now the Hawks are really putting the barrel on it. Seegers takes a first pitch strike. The only night that they really didn't seem to do that was was Sam Houston when we were down in uh, we were down in Texas there, but but they kind of had a more focused approach coming out of the batting practice. Seegers drives this to center, carrying well. Center fielder still going back near the track at the wall, and he's got it for the third out of the inning. Mm, Seegers gave it a ride, but it's caught out there. 385 to the deepest part of the park. He needed he needed at least 395 to get her done. All right, the Hawks get three back and now jump in front of Western Michigan again, 7-5. We've played three at Banks. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. The 
All right, Iowa's got the 7-5 to five lead. About an hour and a half of a game time into this one, but we've only played three innings. A lot of runs coming across. We're in the top of the fourth. Top of the order coming up for Western Michigan. Zach Volker gets the ball once again. Why did you say that out loud? That was. Uh, I tried to turn the tide a little bit here. We got a lot of baseball yet to be played in this game and the next one. That was pretty depressing when you say it that way all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that's, a, that's a four and a half hour game pace. That's, that's kind of gross. Come on, Zach, throw some strikes, well, man. We're, 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 we're going to go the opposite way on the jinx. How about that? That way. Uh, need to have a shutdown inning here. Iowa up 7 5. Top of the order. Volker versus Kitchen. He squares to bunt. And I guess he pulled it back in time. And so that's called a ball. Well, and you know, before you said that, I was kind of thinking, you know, we always talk about when you score, you've got to answer with a zero, and, and no, neither team's been able to do that. We've had runs scored in, in four consecutive half innings here. Volker looking for the strike zone, can't find it, still searching, two balls, no strikes. To the Bronco leadoff man, who is one for two today. He has a two RBI single, though, back in the second. The first one looked like a legitimate bunt attempt. That one just looked like I'm going to annoy you, square around. Squares pulls it back, called strike there from Volker. Out of the windup, the 2 1 delivery. Popped up, shallow right. Honar will go back from his position at second, shielding his eyes from the sun, and he's got it, out number one. Oh, we've seen this before. I'm not falling for this trap. <laughs> we get the first out of the inning. I've seen the first out. I've seen him look good, seen him be efficient, and we need to stay after it. Three out of four innings, the Hawks have got the leadoff men out. After that, the Broncos have done a pretty good job of piling on today. It's Morrison. He squares the bunt, pulls it back, ball one. So Morrison, he's 0 for 1. He walked in the first, and he struck out in the second. Zach's ready with the 1-0. Here it comes. This is a bunt attempt. Pulled it back, called strike, 1-1. One and one. Well, I think that was an either way. The, uh, he was as slow to pull the bat back as... Uh, as Wilmus yeah. was when he got called for the strike, so I would have expected that either way. Ball on a strike pitch from Volker, tapped foul to the left side. It's one and two. Nice breaking ball from Zach. Interesting new approach for Western Michigan. They haven't really, they haven't shown probably three or four bunts all weekend, and all of a sudden now both guys are up and show it on three or four consecutive pitches. Volker looking for the strikeout, not going to get it there as he threw that one at the eyes. Two and two. Tried to really juice up the fastball there and missed way outside of the zone. Bring it back in right here, Zach. Set with the 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, just low. Wow. Mm, full count. Tight zone today. That was either a really good pitch, which it was, and it was then a very good piece of hitting to not offer at that at all. This next pitch lifted in the air to center. Huxdorf's got a beat on it. He looks up. He's got it two down. All right. So we eventually get him out. Morrison's really been uh, a, a tough out uh, these first couple of games. Well, he was hitting 400 coming into yep. the series, so you, you'd kind of expect that. And the Hawks have really held him in check. Um, but he's, he's had really good at bats. He doesn't have a whole lot to show for it, but he's had good at bats. Gavin Doyle stands in. First pitch to him is a ball low and outside. I was watching him just run as he as he ran out that fly ball and uh, looked down to see how many stolen bases. I'm amazed he has one stolen base in four tries. Just looked like he has a glide to him. He must get poor jumps. <laughs> Something, because it, it sure looked like he knew how to move. By the time Huxdorf had caught that ball in center, he was basically at second base. <laughs> with with what looked like minimal effort, right. just kind of just kind of slid his way out there. 1-1 one, one pitch from Volker is low and outside. Maybe safe to say Morrison's probably their best player. I would uh, guess so. Yeah. Certainly their best hitter. And center fielder typically uh, typically a, an athlete. 
2-1. This one's shot into center. Huxdorf's got to move back a few steps. He looks up. He's got it. A 1-2-3 inning. The first of its kind issued by the Hawkeyes, and it comes in the fourth inning. We hold the Broncos scoreless in the top half. Iowa leading 7-5. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Bottom of the fourth inning, Iowa trying to add to their lead. Hawkeyes up 7-5 on Western Michigan. In game one of the doubleheader, this is a a full day of baseball it's turned into now. The weather just not going to be good enough tomorrow to play. And so we'll wrap up the series with Western Michigan today. Iowa leading 7-5. Huxdorf leading off the inning with a first pitch. That is high for a ball. Kill the music. <laughs> Let the music run a little bit there. As if Huxdorf needs any more motivation, any more pump up. 1-0 is inside for a ball, 2-0. Kind of like at a golf tournament, though. If you had consistent, steady music, it would be okay. It's the, it's the hard surprises that get you. 2-0's tapped to the left side, gloved by the third baseman. He'll step, fire, and throw for out number one. Huck had green light there on the 2-0 pitch. Pitch he probably wishes he he had back. His 81-mile-an-hour fastball pretty much right in the center of the plate. He just kind of rolled over the top of it. That's one of the rare times that you see Huxdorf miss, right? Correct. Here's DeRiggy, first pitch to him. That's on the outside corner. Called strike. See if... uh, Frig kind of sticks with that ball that's on the outside part because they do not want any part of the middle of the plate even on him. I'd like to see DeRiggy surprise everybody and just swing at one of those outside pitches if it's a strike, you know, on the corner and see what he does with it. I think we know what he'd do with it. The 1-1 tapped foul to the on-deck circle to the right, 1-2. and two. He's got the opposite field power, so it's not like it's that big of a difference to go outside to him. He knows what to do with that. Well, I'm still really surprised. You know, you're attacking him on the outside. Look at the shift. Yeah, it's everything's over to the right, especially the infield. I guess the outfield looks to be playing straight up, but the infield uh, is shifted to pull. I mean, he has to cue ball one past one guy. The, the right. third baseman has shifted well over. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, he hits that on a line to the left side, fouling out of play. So, I mean, he's got to He's got plenty of hole to work with. They're they're giving it to him, and you know he pulled the ball yesterday through the shift and got it past the second baseman. But two two on the ground foul past volunteer assistant Mitchell Bow in the first base coach's box. Yeah, and that that's about the first pitch. Center plate, just maybe even a little inside, but not sure this weekend he's seen very many of those. Gernon operating out of the windup. He's ready. Here comes the 2-2. Just got a piece of it. DeRiggy staying alive. Decent crowd here today. We'll see how many of them stick with us through Mm -hmm. the whole whole adventure. If the marketing department's got uh, anything lined up, any prize for sticking around for both. (laughs) Two balls, two strikes. Pitch to DeRiggy. Again, just a tapper foul. This one straight back. Are we eligible? <laughs> Just asking. Just asking for a friend. Hayden wanted to know. We'll have to think of uh, what surprise that you'd be willing to accept, John. 2-2. Two, two. 
That's high. Ball three. There's just there's <laughs> some candy. Uh, there's some pretty some big list. M &Ms. There's a pretty big list there. At this point, I might go back to that food ticket again. There you know? we go. Full count pitch to DeRiggy. Here it comes. Mm, fouled back. Sends the folks in the front row flinching in their seats. We'll do it again. Full count. We saw a couple of high quality at bats from uh, from Western Michigan to open the game, and DeRiggy's matching that one here. Three balls, two strikes pitch. That's high and outside. The vet, DeRiggy, draws the long walk, and he'll remove all his elbow protection, shin protection, and now jog on down to first. Sorry, I was counting. That's 11-pitch walk. That's, that's a well-earned walk there. And he didn't chase anything, and the pitches that were close, he just fended him off to stay alive. Here's Keaton Anthony, homered his last time up. There's a pitch right down the middle, and he laid off at 0-1. A little on the upper part. We'll see if, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. They've got a little bit of a shift on for Keaton to pull, which is not a direction he often goes. Mm -hmm. So um, their scattering report must be different than what our eyes have told us through the through the season. Nothing in one is the count to Anthony. The pitch, that's high and outside for a ball. Right fielder's playing a few steps deeper this time. He's uh, not too far inside the <laughs> warning track out there. If he has to take many steps back, he's going to have to forget about it. Dorigi at first, the 1-1. Anthony, good swing, but fouled it back, just missed it. Mm, one and two. That was that 81-mile-an-hour fastball kind of located up and away, which is uh, basically the ball he put into the parking lot a little while ago. Just kind of daring Gurnan to throw it again, right? That's two pitches that have been strikes that have been in the upper half of the zone. The 1-2 to Keaton. Ooh, up and in, almost got him, 2-2. Two and two. And Keaton has that little bit of an uppercut swing, so you know, middle up is a pretty good way for him to, to get a ball and – a little bit easier for him to elevate. Again, inside, high as well. Ball three, full count to King Keaton. You know, and DeRiggy, DeRiggy's got a chance. Hawks might, uh, might, might put him in motion here. There he goes, the 3-2, swing and a miss. Throw down to second, is into center field. DeRiggy will stay put right there. Keaton Anthony says that he got a piece of it and fouled it off. Oh, hold on a minute. No, they say batter interference. And so Keaton's out, and DeRiggy's out at second. Oh, my. That is a nasty ca caught stealing on DeRiggy's part. Is, uh, what should be his sixth stolen base of the season is, uh, is his first caught stealing. And so that'll end the inning. Quite a sequence of events there we've played four at Dwayne Banks Iowa seven Western Michigan five back after this this is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield Ooh, got my nachos got my big TV and my favorite chair it's game time but you know the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game oh, hello you must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio I sure did do you have a DVR you bet do you have a streaming device yeah Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. Zach Volker just getting settled in for the Hawkeyes this afternoon. Top of the fifth inning and leading Western Michigan 7-5. Volker set down the Broncos 1-2-3 the last time around. Now he'll face this part of the order that's given Iowa a lot of trouble today. It'll be 4-5-6. and six. Sullivan starting things off. First pitch from Volker. Outside, ball one. 
Statcast is having a hard time scoring that last play. They haven't caught quite up to <laughs> what all went on there. Yeah, Sam's going to have to figure out exactly what did happen. 1-0 pitch from Volker. Swing and a miss. Good, hard, fastball. And Sullivan missed it. Those are the coding buttons you don't have to use very often. Right. <laughs> so you got to find the fast it. keys. Yeah, you don't know what those are. Where they are. What exactly do I have to punch in there? A ball and a strike. Pitch from Volker. Got him again. One and two. Well, again, Sullivan's been another strikeout candidate here for the Hawks. See if Zach can finish him off. Mm, just got a piece of it and fouled it back. And it's one and two. Nice. Really like what Volker's brought to the team as well. Oh, he's been, I got a chance to spend some time with him on some of the trips. And great personality too. Ton of fun to be around and comes in and does his business. One, two, oh. nice slider. Got him outside corner. Ho, ho, what a strike out there from Volker. Outstanding pitch there. Good foot and a half of movement there as it broke, uh, broke away. Hawk fan pelted in the hat or pelted in the head with the t-shirt. Lucas has got the cannon out today. <laughs> All right, here's Jimmy Allen. He's been a problem today. Volker's going to challenge him. Throws a strike right by him. Allen today is two for two. He's got two runs scored as well. Poked them both out to right field, too. One got into the corner, and one was right to Wilmus. 0-1. Good pitch from Volker. Not getting the call up in the zone. Ball one and one. Like what he did there, though. It was a good pitch. See if the Hawks have changed the approach a little bit. It's been fastball so far. Two balls and a strike. Next one from Volker just outside. Three and one. He's kind of gone everywhere he can around the zone. He's been, uh, they've been strike ishes. Yeah, they've been really close. Three balls, one strike pitch from Volker. That's way outside this time. No doubt about that one. Ball four. Hawks haven't found a way to get Allen out so far today. Yeah, he's just been a problem right in the middle of the order. Splitting the difference. He's the five hitter. And then he, he kind of gets things going for him because the bottom half has actually been the stronger portion for Western Michigan this afternoon. Zach doesn't walk a ton of guys, so see how he bounces back. Swinehart taps it foul to the left side to start his at bat. Yeah, he's driven in a run. And 268 on the season. A couple of home runs. Again, struck out over 20 times so far, so. This is hit to Tello at third, quickly to second for one. That's all they'll get there as Honar had to stretch for it. Good play by Honar and a good hang. It'll be two down. That was an outstanding play by Honar. To, you, as a second baseman coming across the bag, your, your inclination is not... Uh, to stretch, especially to kind of the, the left field side. You're coming across and you want to, you know, you're trying to get out of the base runner's way so that you can turn that and, and the, you know, the rules have made it where you don't have to worry quite as much about getting blown up at second base, mm -hmm. but you're still trying to get away where you can make a good, strong throw and good job to keep his foot on the bag and get the out there. Seven hitter Nevar, he's up now. First pitch from Volker is low and in for a ball. We saw that yesterday. Central Michigan, I'm sorry, Western Michigan had a chance to turn a double play, didn't do it. Hawkeyes scored Man. two runs after that. Good point, um, John. So I will need to. It looks like they're going to get out of it. Weak pop up on the infield. Tello looks up, got it. Right in front of the shortstop position. A good inning for the Hawkeyes. Defensively, back to back innings that they've held the Broncos scoreless. Iowa 7, Western Michigan 5. Back for the bottom of the fifth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great. 
But they're not always great for us, because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes, the Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Hawks up 7-5, bottom five. Coming to the plate now to try to add to their lead. Feels like one of those games that there'll never be enough runs until we get to the ninth, right, John? You feel that way, and then we're going to we're gonna get to the top of the ninth inning and 7-5 is going to be the final score. <laughs> uh, All of a sudden, pitchers will kind of find a way, and hitters will maybe lose track a little bit. And next thing you know, we'll be, we'll be starting game two. Tello to kick things off. Third baseman, Raider Tello. First pitch to Raider. He had a lot of action in the field the last time up. Uh, the, the last inning, rather. Tello today has reached both times. You've been asking him to turn that double play, and yeah. he didn't give you the throw to roll it over. Down on the count, 0-2. Oh All of a sudden, the strike zone ballooning a bit. I'm a big fan of that at this point. Don't mind it. Not at our expense, though. Not at our hitter's expense. Well, yeah, we gotta we got to expand <laughs> it both ways from both teams here. No balls, two strikes. Pitch to Tello. Lines this right to the second baseman. Out number one. Good contact there by Raider, but right to him. And Tello's down for the first out of the inning. With one of those good, solid hits. 11 uh, or 101 on the exit velo. Just hit it right at him. See if Petey can get going here. See if actually they can not hit Petey. First pitch was up and in on the hands. Almost got him. He, he kind of gets his hands going and brings him closer to the plate where he almost got hit by that pitch, even though it wasn't necessarily that close to him. The 1-0, that one almost got him. 2-0. We got to look. We're, we're kind of looking across the way from the plate, a little bit right to left. We're, we're more right behind the left-handed hitter's batter's box. 2-0 to PD. That's in again. Ooh, called strike. 2-1. and one. He must be crowding the plate really close. He's got to be. We can't exactly tell. Yeah, I can't see. I can't quite see his toes, but it doesn't look like he's on the inner, Ooh, yeah. inner piece there. 2-1. Rips this foul down the left field line. Wynn tried to pull it back in. That <laughs> makes a big splash over there in the bullpen. That ball is going to be waterlogged. We're not using that the rest we, of the day. We've just, uh, we've just finished that one as he piled it into the snow drift out there. So, yeah, that'll be... Uh, That'll be the souvenir for somebody. That one's not coming back in. 2-2 Two -two to Peterson. Base hit into left center field. Peterson around first hard, but stopped there. Yeah, he's going to make the center fielder get over there, feel it, and any sort of laziness, and Petey would have looked to take second. Remember, this is Sam's walk-up song. Oh, that was a new one. I don't remember that one. Yeah, he's, most uh, most of the players have a really upbeat, you know, kind of fire me up song, and, and Sam's is more sitting around a fire in the backyard with your friends. PD does have seven stolen bases, and with one out in the inning, uh, you know, maybe a chance to to try to run your way into a into being able to score this inning. Haven't seen the first pitch to Honar yet because we're just checking on Peterson a few times at first. For Major League Baseball, he gets second base now because they've thrown over three times and didn't get him. Why isn't that a thing in college, John? First pitch to Honar, there it is. It's in on the shins for a ball. I'm impressed they threw a left-hander inside. They haven't really done that. They've, right. they've really stayed outside the whole time. 
whether it's Dorigi or Honar, they've they've really kept on that outer half of the plate and right-handed batter's box. That's more like there it. There it is, outside for a ball, <laughs> two and zero. Oh. Floated that curved ball out wide. Now this wind favors Honar. It's it's starting to blow out a little bit to right. Left to right, strong, and out a bit. Sam went around on that one. On the outside portion of the plate, not sure it would have been called a strike. It's two and one. I think that was just a just a touch outside. I think Sam knew it too, but couldn't couldn't hold up in time. Runner at first is Peterson. He takes off and the pitch is fouled back. Two and two. Hawks try to hit and run there, but a foul ball will send Peterson back to first. So Iowa trying to get uh, creative in the bottom of the fifth. Leading 7-5. Could be another one, too, where you just go ahead and see PD going again. There he goes, the 2-2 two -two on the ground and through the right side. Peterson got around two, headed for third. Here comes the throw, cut off at second base. And PD gets to third on the single from Honar. Not easy to hit it through the shift like that. Shortstop was covering second base, so really didn't disrupt the, the right side of the infield at all, but we'll have a pitching change immediately here. Yeah, that'll do it for Gurnan for Western Michigan. And and that, probably about the length of his go. I mean, when you look at his statistics, he's not a guy that was going to throw four or five innings for him. So the gate opens down the left field line and out sprints a new Bronco. We'll give you his... Name and statistics following this pitching change break. Bottom of the fifth inning, Iowa leading 7-5. Runners on the corners and one out. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, Start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Still in the bottom of the fifth inning, Iowa with runners on first and third, leading Western Michigan 7-5 in the first game of today's doubleheader. The Broncos have to go to the bullpen once again. They'll go with right-hander Hayden Berg. Berg making his sixth appearance. He's 0-1 on the season, 5.54 ERA. 13 innings pitched, giving up 13 hits, nine runs. Eight of those were earned. Four walks and 11 strikeouts. Looks like a... Uh, velocity rating that the Iowa hitters will be somewhat familiar with. Yeah, the upper 80s, low 90s, um, slider change up, a little slow to the plate, so you might see Honar do some action uh, over there at first base, but um, everything's going to kind of be set up off the fastball, and Hawkeyes will have to try to drive that into the drive it down a little bit, make sure it's into a zone they can, they can work with and, and uh, drive it somewhere. I know we've kind of fixated on this a, a little bit, but, man, Western Michigan burning through a lot of pitchers here in game one. Yeah, and, and you know, you look at, uh, you know, your staff ERA is 945, and, and uh, you know, Gernon was, the, Gernon's really the only guy that's that's below five. First pitch, runner takes off for a second, so Honar's there safely. Moss squared to bunt, pulled it back, ball one. And now a couple of runners in scoring position for the Hawkeye catcher. Back yep. to you, John. You know, Josh Schweinhardt has one. Uh, Swinehart has one at 491, but um, you, you know had some had some control troubles. We've seen a little bit of that, um, but Hawks will have to kind of keep that discipline and keep trying to keep trying to pile it on as they go along. Infield comes in for Western Michigan. Cade Moss with great plate discipline. All eyes on that one. Ball two. And Berg is one of those guys that has had good control. You know, just four four walks in his 13 innings. So. You'd think he's going to be, 
He's going to be around the plate more. Mm, Cade lays off the 2-0 breaking ball, called strike outside corner. Don't really want to swing at that one, do you? Right, and he had swung at a, I think he had swung at a 2-0 pitch a little bit earlier, and and uh, I guess it was, and Huck did the same. So, you know, go ahead and take one, be ready to go. Cade always shows good plate discipline. That's a strike at the knees. That's been about a 50-50 call today, so <laughs> I don't really blame Moss, and he's seen a lot of pitches down there, too, being the Iowa catcher. Infield stays in for Western Michigan. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Bottom of the fifth. Iowa leading 7-5. Two runners in scoring position. This ball is way outside. Ball three. Yeah, and obviously you see pitchers in the, you know, kind of the, the, the low 80s, high 70s, and, and then all of a sudden you jump back up there, and, and now it's, it's coming in the 90s. It takes an adjustment. 3-2. Good job by Moss to stay alive. Fouls it off to the left side. Yeah, and then as I say that, then you get the 80-mile-an-hour the breaking ball, which is then just a whole different adjustment to stick with. And Got movement, different velocity, and, and that's what makes a, a good pitcher, to right. have the difference in speeds. It's not necessarily about throwing a, a pitch that has the nastiest of movement. It's really the, the change of speeds. 3-2 to Moss, stays alive, fouls it back. Now, if you do have a pitch that is, <laughs> you know, uh, with crazy movement, then that's great, but... Uh, at, yeah. at this level, you're never going to turn down Brody Brecht or, or Will Christofferson slider. You know? That's right. <laughs> the, the movement on those and the, and the, the velocity they're able to throw it at. Moss battling in there right now for the Hawkeyes. Fouls another one off. I'll wait until the at bat's finished before I make the. I will the, allow you to wait. The next comment. I usually turn to you for bits and pieces. I'll let you wait on this one. <laughs> Three, two. Ooh, foul ball. That was in on the hands. I don't know if Moss really wanted to swing at that one, but the count will stay full. Just sent a spinner down the third baseline. Well, and sometimes it gets difficult just because you know you're in protect mode, and so really any ball close. Uh, you know, you, you get triggered, you know, green, green, go, and, and you know, you go ahead and, and swing at it. But, boy, that one, unfortunately, he did about the only thing he could do, which was, was hit it off his own body. Yeah. Impressed by Berg, though. He hasn't really missed the zone lately, the 3-2. That's high. Ball four. Well, I set that up. And, and my point was that, that Cade's done such a good job with the at-bat. He's hard to strike out. Right. Ben Wilmus comes up with the bases loaded and one out. You know, he and Michael Seegers, uh, you know, really good two-strike contact guys, even if it means kind of fouling pitches off, poking pitches around to, to be able to give yourself a, a, a chance to fight a little longer in the at-bat. First pitch to Wilmus, got him, it hit him on the hip. And that'll bring home a run. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. In the meantime, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, Iowa leads 8-5 now in the bottom of the fifth. Bases still loaded, one out. Let's find some green grass. Michael Seegers in the top of the order. Yeah, that was the RBI that uh, Wilmer might not have been looking for to take it off the uh, the thigh or the hip there. But Ouch. First pitch to Seegers. Ooh. Down the left field line, it is a fair ball into the corner. One runs in. Make it two. Come on, Benny Wilmus. He's rounding third. Here comes the throw. Safe. Ha-ha. Seegers, yes! The second bases clearing double for the Hawkeyes today, and all of a sudden there's some breathing room at 11 to 5. This game's been blown open. Iowa making the Broncos pay for their mistakes and shortcomings on the mound. That was a good piece of hitting there. Fastball up in the zone, inside part of the plate. Seegers got turned around, got the barrel out, and just hammered it into the left field corner. 11-5 to five with one out. This pitch is in the dirt, blocked nicely by the catcher, Budig. Seegers has to stay there at second. Yeah, the Hawks is... As the uh, Western Michigan pitchers have come into the zone, Iowa's done a really nice job of, of driving it somewhere. One ball and a strike now to Huxdorf with one out. And 
You know Kyle's maybe got a little extra pep in his step right now because he, he missed that last one uh, right in the in the last inning, in his last at bat, on the ground out to, to third. We've got a little chirping going on in the uh, to the Western Michigan dugout. 1-1, one, one, Huxdorf skies this to right. Right fielder Nevar, he's actually going back, ball carrying well. Nevar dropped, dropped it. it out of his mitt. Seeger's at second, he's going to have to stop at third because he was going to try to tag. Nevar dropped it, hit him right in the palm, and Huxdorf will wind up on second. He oh, was, boy. He was battling the sun the whole way there, couldn't quite get it, and the ball just... You talked about how the wind has shifted just enough that the ball started to carry that way. Um, he just kept drifting, kept drifting, um, battling the sun, and all of a sudden uh, he catch that in the palm and it just bounced right out of his glove. Two more in scoring position, still just one out. Here's DeRiggy. Iowa up 11-5 now, another big inning for the Hawks. First pitch to Brennan. Outside corner, called strike. John, you were mentioning the chippiness between the home plate umpire and the Western Michigan coach. Now, I think it's got to do something with that that clock, that 20-second clock. Is that what it was? Well, I, I think it was the pitch clock and then calling for time. Uh, Huxdorf had, had kind of taken his time getting in the box as DeRiggy's now down in the count 0-2. That would make some sense there. And I wasn't sure if uh, you know, we've talked about a little bit of a mercurial strike zone that uh, if maybe that was his, his argument, but the, the, the timeout call would make sense too. 0-2 fisted into shallow center, but the shortstop is there to catch it for the second out of the inning. DeRiggy just couldn't get the barrel through on that one. Well, and that, that's that's good pitching there from Western Michigan. You know, they've they've just lived on the outside part of the uh, the plate and beyond to the Hawkeye left-handed hitters, and that one they're able to really bust him inside. He can't get the barrel around because maybe he's he's cheating out over the plate a little bit and gets a soft pop up. Couple more Hawkeyes out there. One at second, one at third. First pitch to Anthony inside. Got his hands going, but held off. Ball one. Iowa leading 11 5. This game is a full nine inning game. There's no run rule in this one. 1 0. Anthony hits on the ground to short. Shortstop charges, throws. Got him. Third out of the inning. So a couple of Hawkeyes are left on base, but a big inning for Iowa. Four runs come across, and the Hawkeyes lead 11-5. to We're back for the sixth inning right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknoll.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. We'll see Zach Volker again now in the sixth inning. He'll uh, pitch with the lead, a big one, with Iowa on top, 11-5. to five. Greg Budig leads off the Broncos sixth. First pitch from Volker is a bender on the inside corner for a strike. Budig today. Is one for one with an RBI double. It was hit by a pitch his first time up in the second. Volker missing just low and outside, one and one. Got a few bodies down in the Iowa bullpen, but uh, nobody up and throwing. The wind and the fire on the one one. Nice breaking ball missed somewhere, and it's two and one. Must have been low.
Two balls and a strike from Volker. That's inside now, three and one. Last pitch looked good, John. The, the one before that one, and you go from what could be two and two to now three and one. Volker's got his work cut out for him. The pitch right down the middle, but low. Oh, you think? My depth perception must be off a little bit. I got to get used to the home broadcast booth. Mm. We haven't been here. We haven't been here often enough to know where that one is. Uh, regardless, it missed, and Budig is on first with the leadoff walk to start the sixth. Second baseman Grady Mees, 0 for 2 today, shoots this into center and deep. Huxdorf going back, still turning and running. He's got it on an over-the-shoulder catch. Got it for out number one. No advancement on the on the tag from Budig, one down. Yeah, because other than being mouthy, you know what our opinion counts for on those <laughs> balls and strikes, right? <laughs> well, if the coaches and players don't change it, we certainly are. Just trying to give a little perspective that these pitches are close. Yeah, it's. I think that's the most important part is that it's just uh, these aren't wild misses. They're, they're around the plate. Top of the order with Kitchen. First pitch strike to him. And, and not, and you know, trying not to be critical. That's not what, what our oh. angle is at all. It's just the, the, cause the consistency's there. I, I, want, I, want, I want no part of calling balls and strikes. No, I, I, can, uh -uh. I can promise you that I can't do any better. We'll, we'll start with that. We'll start with that word of, of advice. Kitchen right. went to bunt that one, and he, and he fouled it to the left side. So 0-2. Oh and, and I was thinking about that yesterday with Brody. You know, you get a guy that throws that hard and has that much movement on a slider, and then you're trying to call balls and strikes. And, I mean, you know, I, I have a hard time. You were talking about the, the pitcher's hat that was dirty. I'm like, yeah, I can't see that. <laughs> Nothing in two is the count. This is hit on the ground into right field for a base hit. Pass to Riggi. Didn't have a play on it. And so a walk, a fly out, and now a single puts two on for Western Michigan. Good piece of hitting there. And that's one of those where, uh, you know, when you're holding the runner on, you're kind of in a little bit different position. I suppose you hope he bounces off first base and you think you can catch them all, but that's not quite the way it works. It's a good part of the order, too. You know, we flipped it around to the top, and now it's Morrison. We've held in check pretty well today, and for the series, for that matter. But he comes up in a dangerous spot. Iowa leading 11-5, and two on for Western Michigan. A little low-ish. I mean, that's that. Cade's done a nice job framing them, though, snapping them up and around if they've been right around. Yeah, maybe that's our problem is Cade, Cade's tricking us, but not the home plate umpire. Here's one on the ground to the left side. Off Otello's glove. Seegers picks it up. He's got nowhere to go. Bases are going to be loaded for Western Michigan. Tough play there. I'd be surprised if they charge that as an error. Yeah, uh, big high hop. You, you kind of you hope he gets the uh, gets the glove on it and... and and corrals it if he can just he can make the pick then he can throw it just about anywhere but unfortunately kind of got out of his glove Looks it like. is a single for morrison not an error on tello really tough play he had to race over to his left bases loaded for western michigan so a few clean innings in a row this one getting a little dicey and the three-hitter, Gavin Doyle, will stand in. Right-handed hitter, Volker, looks down at a sign. And he's got it. One out in the inning. The double play would get us out of here. The pitch from Volker. Outside corner, called strike. I mean, we're a, we're a little roll of our ground ball from just being done here. So no real action other than the snowman in the Hawkeye bullpen. I just noticed that before the last pitch, too. Nothing in one. Uh-oh. Left center gap. Down for a base hit. Huxdorf trying to get over there. This one's going to get to the wall and clear the bases. Three RBI double for Doyle. Good, strong piece of hitting there. Took the fastball and just drove it right into the left center field. As we talked about, the ball's got some scoot to it when it gets to the turf. Huxdorf couldn't get the cutoff there and... That will spur some more action besides the snowman in the Hawkeye bullpen. 11 to 8. 
Iowa still leading by three. One out in the inning for Western Michigan. A runner at second, and Cade Sullivan will be the batter. We just can't put these guys away. They don't quit, do they, John? No, and, and you heard Coach Heller talk about that yesterday. Um, you know, it's a it's a hallmark of uh, uh, of the coaching staff and and uh, and a good testament to them that you know everybody's engaged. We saw it yesterday when Iowa had the the nine to nothing lead that um, they kept battling. They kept trying to have good at bats and and you know got it back to nine to three and they started today off quickly too and and then even now with the lead they they've decided to fight back and not just pack it in knowing they get to go home tonight. Iowa leading by three. Tying run would be in the on-deck circle. Just in the top of the sixth, though. Volker is ready, and the pitch on the ground to the left side. Tello charges hard. He's got it on the backhand. Throw across. Got him. Out number two. Really well done there. Tough play. Um, you can see Derigi kind of work his feet to get a good stretch over there at first as well. And so um, Hawks kind of catch a break. You know, Zach's maybe struggling a little bit with uh, with hitting his spots. Gets a first pitch swing and just the tapper there and, and able to throw him out. See Every if... Everything had to be perfect there from Tello, and it was. He had to charge it hard. He had to glove it on a hop, and he had to make a good throw. And he did just that, fundamentally sound. To get the second out, Jimmy Allen is the batter. First pitch strike. Yeah, he's been a pain in the rear end today, right. too. It's been on every time he's been up. A couple of hits and a walk. Two down in the inning. The nothing and one is hit on the ground to Tello. High chopper. Raiders got it. Accurate throw to Derigi. Back-to-back -back plays from Raider Tello to Brennan Derigi, and that'll do it for the top of the sixth inning. Three runs for Western Michigan, but Iowa still on top. It's 11-8. to eight. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Bottom of the sixth inning, Iowa leading Western Michigan 11 to eight. Not sure that we were expecting maybe a, a high scoring game from both sides, but Western Michigan's really shown up and put a nice offensive performance together. Iowa, on the other hand, they've taken advantage of the, the free bases that they've been awarded today. Yeah, a little bit of both really. You know, Iowa has, you know, both teams now, four walks for Western Michigan, uh, five for, for Iowa. Uh, a couple of hits batters on both sides that's probably where the the biggest difference there is uh, you know i was done i was done a good job some timely hitting from both sides it seems like when when the teams have had an opportunity to drive in runs they've done it raider tello will lead off the inning first pitch downstairs ball one yeah to that point western michigan hitting 429 with runners in scoring position iowa hitting 308 And both teams over 350 with runners on base. Yeah, that's uh, not something that you were expecting to see when you came to the ballpark today. Just the way the weather is, too. Tello thought about swinging at the 2-0. It's a called strike, breaking ball, 2-1 and one now. Uh, but with the weather being cold and windy, you expect lower scoring games just by the nature of the beast right and that's the opposite of what we're getting today you kind of expected the pitching staff uh you know, certainly from a hawkeye perspective you, you you expected or hoped that jared was going to go out there and 
and put up a bunch of zeros. And then when Zach came in, you thought the same thing. Good ball there. Line drive up the middle for a base hit. Here we go. Raider Tello leading things off in the sixth with a great at bat. And he's rewarded with a single up the middle. That looked the uh, third time the Hawks have let off the inning with a base runner. You just look at the, the scorebook that I've got going, and it's getting full. I mean, I was batted around a couple times today, and got to see where I left off. On either side, what have we had? We had yeah. just the one three-up, three-down inning. So we ended up three-up, three-down for Iowa in the first on the double play ball. But, uh, you know, it, it's been it's been rare that the pitchers have commanded the inning, I guess we'll say it that way. Yeah. And you just wonder what game two will be like. You know, you, you start at 0-0. Peterson, shallow left field on his first pitch of the okay. at-bat. Shortstop goes back, and he's the one that makes the play. That's a big no-no. He caught that, but my goodness, the left fielder, that should be his ball every time. Okay. It just gives me a little scary vibe, you know, being a former player too, John. As a guy that played shortstop, that is that is my nightmare move there. I've, I've been wiped out by a couple of left fielders before, and uh, yeah, that's... Uh, the 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 infielder is designed to or, or his job is to go out and get it he's not he's not supposed to call it and he only has to stop if the if the outfielder calls him off and outfielder didn't call him off there fortunately kitchen avoided the collision um, but boy that yeah that one I, I get a little Oof. I get a little knee flinch there when those start happening Honar's the batter for the Hawkeyes swinging and missing at the first one. Tello still at first base. Decent lead. Next pitch to Honar. That's inside ball one. She got two guys running full speed at each other oh, like man. that. And... Think back to, you know, a couple of collisions that, that you see even in the majors. I mean, it happens at all levels, right? Uh, communication being a, a key. And just baseball fundamentals. As Honar fouls back the 1-1, the one, one, it should always be the outfielder's ball because he's the one coming in. It should be an easier play for him. But for some reason, Kitchen thought that, hey, Allen's got this, and, and it's easier for him. I'm not going to call him off. Well, and that's, you know, maybe Kitchen just didn't think he could get there. And, and you know, from our perspective, maybe he had he had plenty of lane to run away from him. But, boy, it, it looked like it was going to be close. Honar waving and missing at the 1-2. He's down on strikes, two away in the inning. Good, uh, just good pitching there. That was uh, attacked, attacked the hitter. That was a 90, 90 mile an hour fastball, high and away. Uh, Honar couldn't keep up with it, but had probably had to swing at it. You know, we said we had a little, a little differences on whether those have been called strikes or not, but certainly close enough. You got to be swinging the bat. Two gone in the Hawkeyes six, leading eleven to eight. Here's Cade Moss. First pitch to Moss outside for a ball. And this is a big inning for Western Michigan. You know, they, they've scored runs, you know, three times now and, and haven't been able to keep Iowa off the board in the following inning at all, or the following bottom half of the inning. So, Moss shoots this into right center field. It is down in front of the right fielder for a base hit. And now runners on the corners for the Hawkeyes. I cannot believe that Nevar did not come in and catch that. Uh, it, I mean, he, that was hit, I think, where he runs forward a couple steps, and he's got it, and he let it. It was in the air long enough, I think, for him to make a catch on that. I, I don't disagree, but in, in the game and a half that we've seen, he hasn't exactly shown tons of, of great movement out there in right field. I think that's also part of why you see him playing so deep is because uh, you know he, he's not really good at coming in, and that ball, if that ball skips away from him, then all heck breaks loose. Keeps the inning alive for Iowa. Two outs. Runners on the corners. Here's Ben Wilmus. First pitch to Ben. Breaking ball. Uh, called strike <laughs> on the outside corner. You know, ben got hit by a pitch last time. Drove in a run. Also singled in a run before that. And he's going to single in another one. On the ground to left. Tello will jog home, and Wilmus having a career type of day here for the Hawkeyes this afternoon. He's driven in his third run of the game. 
Hawks lead 12 to 8. I was just going to say that. Give my man Wilmer a career high in RBIs. His previous high was two. Give him three now. That's a couple hits. He's approaching his uh, record for hits in a game as well. Yep, he's two for three. Now to the top of the order. First pitch strike to Seegers. Really going with the outside corner breaking ball to start off the at-bat. And like we've talked about before, that's just... All right, you tip your cap to the, to the pitcher on that one. Next one to Michael. On the ground to the third baseman. Good play. On the backhand, he'll take it to third for the force out as Doyle finishes the inning. We've played six here at Dwayne Banks. Iowa adds another run to the board. It's 12-8. to eight. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Iowa leading 12-8. Top of the seventh inning in game one of the doubleheader. We'll see Zach Volker again. It'd be nice to have Zach have a nice clean inning. Don't want to ask for too much. Nice one, two, three inning maybe to put up a zero after we scored a run in that sixth. Well, we've seen 12 half innings, and it is it is a lot today to ask for a one, two, three yeah. inning. So uh, see if Zach can get it done here, though, and save uh, – Save an arm or two in the Hawkeye bullpen. Again, you've got a uh, you've got a ton of options down there, but that Hendo's been getting loose. He kind of tried to get loose there to finish up the last inning, but Volker got out of his own mess there. And I would assume Hendo's pretty close if there's any uh, if there's any need here. But you know, still got still got nine outs to get here, and can't turn it over to Christofferson too early. Swinehart leads things off for Western Michigan. First pitch strike from Volker. That's good. You, you think about who could be coming in out of the bullpen for Iowa this afternoon. Uh, you mentioned Henderson, Christofferson maybe later. Uh, Llewellyn's out there. Gatilla maybe as well, although we, we saw Nick a little bit in the midweek. Um, you, you just kind of think about the arms that are still there for Iowa, and we just don't know much about Western Michigan's bullpen for Game 2 today. You're probably going to keep Llewellyn and Christofferson on opposite sides in case you need a closer in each game. A 1 pitch is lifted in the air to center, rather the 1-1 one -one pitch. Huxdorf is camped. He's got it. One down. You know, have a chance to, you know, whether, whether Christo closes out this one and, and Louis potentially closes out the second one, but you, you wouldn't necessarily think you'd use both of them in this game. Um, you just imagine getting to a point, and, and you probably will get to a point at some point this season where you can throw both those guys in the eighth and then the ninth. Wouldn't that be something? We, we kind of saw it in, in, in uh, Missouri, the game against South Dakota State. We saw Christofferson first and then Llewellyn late in the game. Volker dealing a, a first pitch strike. Pinch hitter Deering here. Yeah, he might be. Uh, yeah, he's coming in for Nevar right now. Hitting in his spot. And I think the idea was that you wanted Christo to finish that game. Who good pitch there. You wanted Christo to finish that game in Kansas City, but or maybe he wasn't quite as sharp as he normally is, and, and that's the, the beauty of having options was you were able to, to make a switch there and, and get out of it and leave Christo for the rest of the weekend too. Nothing in two is the count to Deering. The pitch from Volker outside for a ball one and two. That's the breeze we could do without. Ooh, yeah, I don't need that. The window's open for us in the broadcast booth. 1-2 pitch from Volker just outside for a ball. And at times when the wind blows in or across us, 
Ooh. Papers get moving. The whole thing kind of shimmies a little. Bad day to forget my coat, John. <laughs> I can't believe you forgot your coat today. I got a couple of jackets on, but 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. Volker got him. Two down. I mean, I'm well layered up, but uh, I'm going to have to go make nice to the manager again. <laughs> Think about, get hey, a, they like you down there. Scotty will get you some hand warmers. Get a winter coat to finish it up. Booty back to the plate again. Two up, two down for Iowa, uh, for Western Michigan, rather, in the top of the seventh. Iowa's done a good job to get these first couple of guys out. Good start from Volker, 0-1, on a foul back to the screen. And Budig's another one of those. And we've been on base a couple times today. Hawks have had a hard time getting him out. 0-1 from Volker, just outside for a ball. One for one, a walk. I think he's the one that got hit by a pitch when he squared the bunt as well, so... Hawks have had a hard time setting him down. See if Zach can buck a couple trends here. He likes trying to go for that outside corner. Hasn't hit it yet. Two and one. Out of the wind up, the two one pitch is low. That one was down there. Three and one. Up around. This will be pitch 61 for Zach. Mm, nice pitch there from him on the outside corner and fouled out of play three and two. You just kind of you kind of think that this would probably be it for Zach, one way or another. I don't hopefully see him getting in any trouble this inning, but uh, pitch count's getting up there for him. Here comes the three two. Popped up right side, shallow right. Here comes Wilmus. His hat flies off. Ben looks up. Still got a beat on it. He's got it. A 1-2-3 inning. Good job by the Iowa pitching staff. And defense, Volker and the Hawkeyes behind him do a good job to set down the Broncos in order. We'll stretch things out at Dwayne Banks. Iowa leading 12-8. Bottom of the seventh coming up right after this. It's Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Family first. <laughs> My dad used to tell us that all the time. But family first wasn't just something he'd say to us. It was how he lived every day of his life. And it's how I try to live mine too. At Shelter Insurance, our agents are dedicated to helping provide personalized auto, home, and life protection that puts your family first. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Bottom of the seventh inning, Iowa leading Western Michigan 12-8. And only up by four, and you think of just how wild this game has been. Yeah, might as well get a few more here. Yeah, we're not uh, we're not 100% out of the woods here yet. So good part of the order here, two, three, four. Good time to, good time to add as Huck's still looking for his first hit of the day. Who would have thought with all the hits that Iowa has, 11 of them, that Huxdorf doesn't have one of those 11? <laughs> you know that you know that's put a little chip on his shoulder in this at bat here. You'd like to think that he's semi-aware of that. Somebody might have let him know in the dugout, hey, Kyle, you, you're hitless. He's got on a couple of times, but... Pitcher Berg is gone with a couple of breaking balls on the outside portion of the plate, but it's one and one. One called a strike, one called a ball. The next pitch to Huxdorf mm, on the ground is short. Gloved on a couple of hops. Throw across Ooh. is in time. What a pick by the first baseman, Sullivan. That thing was in the dirt and kicked up, and he picked it. And that was not uh, – you know, we've talked before about how sometimes you make throws on turf that – 
you go ahead and take the bounce. That was not. That ball got into him before it took the hop. A really good pick up there at first base. Here's DeRiggy. First pitch to him. Called strike. Outside corner. Brennan today in this first game. He's 0 for 2 with a run scored. A couple of walks. Swinging for the fences. Missing on this one. He's reached base eight games in a row now. It's a good streak to have. The nothing and two in the air, left center field, tailing away from the center fielder who's giving chase, and then he caught up to it, and he got it. Morrison makes the catch, two down. I thought, uh, thought Brennan was going to sneak one in there as that ball was slicing away from the center fielder, but tracked it down nicely. I think the wind played a factor on that one. I Certainly could have sliced him back into it. You can get, knock it down so it doesn't carry quite as far and, and doesn't slide and slice a, away from him quite as much. Here's Keaton Anthony. Quickly two up, two down for Iowa in the seventh. Hawks lead 12-8. First pitch to Anthony. Called strike inside corner 0-1. Good pitch there. Keaton with the, the big home run to right earlier. Scored a couple runs. He's had a nice day. He he himself has scored two runs, was hit back in the second. Pops this one up to right. Right fielder is camped under it, but moving back. Wind playing with him a bit on the track, and he stumbles and makes the catch for the third out of the inning. That was close over there in right. Karens makes the grab. Three up, three down for Iowa this time in the seventh. We'll head to the eighth. Iowa leading 12-8. to eight. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Top of the eighth inning, Iowa leading Western Michigan 12-8. We'll have the second game of the doubleheader uh, coming up about 30 to 40 minutes after this one concludes. And helping to shut things down this afternoon in game one, Hawkeyes go to the bullpen, Luke Llewellyn. Luke making his eighth appearance, eighth appearance on the season. I can't wait till they get past that. I really <laughs> struggle with that one. <laughs> Appearance number eight. How about that? One and zero on the season with a three three flat ERA. He's got a save. He's thrown nine innings, five hits, three runs. They were all earned. He's walked seven, struck out fourteen. Opponents just hitting one sixty one against Louie. Really been impressed by him this season. He, you know, he he's done a nice job. He's kind of been you know, last year, kind of earned some trust there. Had the closer role for a while. Had a hey, I just need you to go get some outs role for a while. Did a little bit of everything for Iowa, uh, and has really carried that into this year now. Um, after not pitching the first weekend or so, um, getting after it. He'll see nine one two in the eighth. First pitch to Grady Mee is low, ball one. Again, downstairs from Llewellyn to start off the at bat against Mee. Yeah, I've seen, seen a little feast and famine from the Hawkeye pitchers. You know, it's been 0 2 or 2 0 a lot, it feels like. Right. This is shot into center, right to Huxdorf. He's got it. Out number one. Me really put a charge into that one, but 
And trouble lifting it anywhere. Uh, he hit it hard. It's just, uh, it, you know, a little bit, little bit of that, uh, maybe not enough power to, to drive it over Huck, and so almost hit it too good yep. as it flies then all the way out to Huck instead. Needed to hit that closer to the ground or higher, one or the other. I don't know if higher would have done him any good. Yeah, <laughs> top of the order with Kitchen. First pitch strike to him. We saw this the last time through with the top of the order for Western Michigan. They, uh, you know, I don't know whether they're just at a point of the game where they're going to take some pitches, and, and so they just go ahead and show bunt, but haven't really shown any real inclination to bunt it. Mm, Llewellyn's got Kitchen down now, 0-2 on the swing and miss. I, think that... I, don't, I don't know what the value is of that. Well, you know, you do it in Little League because you're trying to distract the pitcher a little bit, but you wouldn't think it would work a ton at the college level. The 0-2, that's low, ball one. And you really almost see it where you distort your strike zone and, you know, a pitch that might not be a strike gets called a strike because... It feels like it would hurt you more if, you, yeah. if you're not really being genuine with your, with your thought process and, and trying to get a bunt down there. 1-2 from Llewellyn, tapped foul. To the left side. Nice play by the one of the Broncos in the dugout to jump up and grab it. You know, Kitchen's been um, you know, done a nice job at the plate. You know, good at bats, long at bats. Hasn't always had hits, but um, has been a pretty big thorn for the Hawks so far. One, two, just fouled back. He's a guy you got to keep off base, though, right? Because he's got quite a few stolen bags. Llewellyn working a one and two count. Here's the pitch. Line drive right to Seegers. Michael's got it. Two down. Had him fooled there with the curveball. Had been kind of busting him with the fastball. Had him, had him off balance with the curveball there and just hit the soft liner. Sliced. Tried to slice away from Seegers a little bit, but... Easily made the grab. Two up, two down for the Broncos in the eighth. Llewellyn will try to get Morrison. And the pitch on the ground to third. Tello reaches up, grabs it, throws it. Good pick by Derigi at first on the low throw from Tello. Three up, three down. The Hawks go back to back and set down a few in a row and close out the Broncos in the eighth. We head to the bottom half of the inning. Iowa 12, Western Michigan 8. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. John Evans and John Leo from Iowa City. Bottom of the eighth inning. Hawks lead the Broncos 12 to 8. Trying to get a couple more runs of insurance before we try to close them out in game one of the doubleheader. We can talk a little bit more about this in our uh, in our between game break, but uh, Iowa women, of course, beat uh, beat Colorado last night. Big Ten representing well today as Maryland gets a big win over Notre Dame to advance to the Elite Eight and Ohio State on top of UConn, 50 to 48 in the second, or 42 in the second half. So Hawks looking to have three teams in the Elite Eight, or <laughs> Big Ten the looking Big to Ten, have three yeah. teams in the Elite Eight. That conference is strong. Raider Tello's down in the count, 0 and 2. Really enjoyed watching the Iowa women's game yesterday. They just found a way because at halftime, 
uh, when you're down, you know, you got to make some adjustments. Tello hits this foul to the right side and really came out hot in that third quarter. Came out right away, scored, and, and you know, had you have Caitlin Clark play most of the, you know, you know, the second quarter there, the back half of the second quarter with two fouls, um, which, you know, both teams had some foul trouble. The, the starting guard for Colorado did as well, but, um, you know, obviously when you have a, a player of Caitlin's, Caitlin's status to, to have her be hampered in any way can slow your team down, but Hawks sure found a way. Tello takes a great cut at this one, fouls it out, a play to the right side. And they're just such a they're such a fun and willing passing team. I think that's what makes them entertaining to watch, you know, amongst a bunch of other things. But uh, Kate Martin had a, just a crazy pass behind the back, didn't turn into a bucket because O'Grady got fouled. But but just really good work, and and they they just look like they're genuinely having fun when when all those things start going for them. We'll get to some more coverage on that game uh, in just a minute, but. You got Louisville next. Louisville looks pretty darn good. 2-2. Tello hits it on the ground to the right side. Diving play by the second baseman. Throw to first. Got him. Mm, good play by Grady Mee at second. Tello's out number one. That's even a different guy than yesterday. He came in uh, pinch hit later, but uh, I think it was Harity yesterday that was uh, right. causing, the, causing the havoc by making wow. some good plays. And so... Might have a good defensive battle out there and see who gets to play. Mm -hmm. Iowa leading Western Michigan 12-8 in the bottom of the eighth. Here's Sam Peterson, first pitch strike to him at the knees. Next one, Petey went after it. Slider on the outside corner, 0-2. Really good pitch there, got... You know, kind of showed it in that, uh, showed it in the very hittable tunnel and then just broke it away. 0 2 on the ground and through into left center field. Peterson is on with a single, another single for PD today. Wow, the shortstop was playing way over towards the third baseman. There was a lot of room in where the traditional shortstop would play. And if if he is playing there, that's probably a routine ground ball, isn't it, John? They were, they were playing him to pull there, and, and that one was uh, another good curveball, but just a little bit more, uh, caught a bit more of the plate, and Petey was able to, to pull it through. Nice move over to first. Peterson dives back safely on a close play. Sam Honar's turn now. He drives the first pitch into the right center gap. It's down and cut off by the center fielder. Then he bobbles it. Petey's round in third. There goes the helmet. Peterson hustles and scores 13-8 on yet another Hawkeye double. This one comes from Honar. Big drive there from Sam. That's his second double of the game, third hit of the game. Great day for him. He drives in his fourth run. That one was clubbed. We'll see if they give him the RBI for that one or if they end up charging the center fielder an error for for dropping it. But Yeah, that'll be an interesting scoring. I think Petey's probably scoring either way, don't you? I would have guessed so. Here's Moss, first pitch ball inside. And if you believe that theory, then no runner advance, so there isn't really an error. Um, but I think they've got one flashed up on the board, so... Next pitch is low. Well, they gave him the they gave him the RBI. They credited the error and said he advanced to second on the error. So, so Pete, yeah, which th that probably checks out, don't you think? Peterson going to score anyway, and the only way that I think he gets the, I, I think, think he gets, gets the home, second yeah. either way. So I, I I'm not sure that that's uh, I'm, I'm, I think that's a double as they just credit him with a single. So. Counts two and one to Moss. Honar takes off for third. Pitch is inside. Throw to third is just off the bag. And so Honar's in there safely. That was in. Third baseman never really tried to put the tag on. He just kind of skipped over and made a pretty good pickup on the throw, but never tried to put the tag on at all. Three balls and a strike. Pitch to Moss. That's outside, but called a strike. On the corner. Three and two. I'm hiding track, man. You can't come. I know. I'm looking over there. You see me? 
Full count pitch to Moss. The infield is in. That hit him. Cade takes it. Hit by pitch. There's got to be an inside competition between these players and taking and taking pitches with three balls. You get out of that way of that one, and it's ball four. But there must be some sort of club who, clubhouse uh, competition going on. Well, that's the first time for Cade. Is Cade's he, got a long way to go. Yeah, Cade's got a long way to go. <laughs> he just got on the board for the first time. He's a catcher too. He doesn't. He doesn't he's need tough. to do anything else. He, there's no other thing he has to do to show toughness. He's he's plenty tough already. Close move over there to first. Moss might have been leaning a bit. Here's Wilmus. That's just rude. You hit him and then make the catcher dive back. First pitch to Ben. Called strike outside corner. Good breaking ball there. Just a little bit more insurance would be all right. Got to, got to think it'll be Llewellyn for another inning, don't you? I would guess so at this point. Berg feels like he's done a good job, and you look down and he's given up four runs. Wilma squares to bunt, puts a nice one down oh. the third base line, and then it kicked foul. Mm. You know, Love the idea. You don't see, uh, uh, you don't see the home team get get turfed very often but uh it's that, two days in a row isn't it yeah that one that one was that one looked more like a bad break the one yesterday was just a, a slightly bad angle on the bunt um that one boy it looked like it hit the it hit the green brown seam and just kicked yeah. left and and went from being a pretty darn good bunt to to foul pretty quickly no balls and two strikes now to wilmus with runners on the corners this pitch is a slider outside and it's one and two. The Hawks have scored in five of the eight innings today. Really done a nice job, kind of piling stuff together. It's you know three up, three down, three up, three down in the first. But the innings that they've been able to do it, they've they've really just been able to keep momentum going. One two is high and outside for another ball. You know, I think that's been an impressive part of, of the Hawkeyes' take because it was Western Michigan that jumped out in front first and then took the lead again in the third, and then we grabbed the lead back. 2-2, Two -two, Wilmus chased it. He strikes out. And the throw down to second on a stolen base by Cade Moss. I think they might have been able to tag Cade out there at second. He didn't even try. They were watching the runner at third. It had him 100%. Um... Runner at third must have given a little flinch move. Honar must have must have taken the shortstop off, but you know, with two outs, you know, tagging for the third out. It doesn't it's care. It's definitely going to be out. Doesn't care what the guy on third does, and Cade Moss gets a uh, a pretty cheap stolen base there. Seeger squares to bunt. He bunts it right back to the pitcher. The pitcher has to execute the throw to first, and he does so for the third out of the inning. So the Hawkeyes strand a couple of runners there. Seeger's trying to get. Fancy with the bunt. Doesn't work out, but we've played eight in game one of the doubleheader. Three more outs to get. Hawks lead by five. It's 13 to eight. Back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Top of the ninth inning, Iowa 13, Western Michigan 8. We'll stick with Louie here to close down game one. And I think it helps, you know, adding adding that one more run, you know, just to, to make it uh, uh, that you really need a rally to if you're if you're Western Michigan to tie it up. And so give Llewellyn a little extra rope, save the rest of your bullpen for uh, 
for game two and just see what happens. So this will this won't be easy. Uh, three, four, five, Doyle, Sullivan, and Allen are, are due up. Doyle one for four on the day. Driven in three runs. How about that start from Llewellyn with a breaking ball called strike? I've actually been impressed by uh, Western Michigan's hitters today. Nothing and one from Llewellyn. Lined foul to the right side, out of play, 0-2 now. I walked away from the game yesterday thinking, all right, that was a pretty dominant effort by the pitching staff for Iowa. I think Western Michigan, uh, they, they remember to bring their bats today. There, there wasn't a ton of solid contact on any of the Hawkeye pitchers yesterday. 0-2 from Llewellyn. That's high and goes over Moss's head all the way to the backstop. And you obviously credit that to Brody going through five and two-thirds, but you know even after that, nobody really touched any of the Iowa pitching. Okay. It was, it, I think it was an even balance of good Iowa pitching and Western Michigan just was off. Hawkeye struck out 17 yeah. Western Michigan hitters yesterday, and another one goes down to, with that one. Yeah, Llewellyn crossed him up, got him, one down, now in the ninth. Yeah, I mean, they went from 17 strikeouts yesterday. That's just the ninth strikeout today, so... Um, you know, much better approach if you're Western Michigan. You're, you're going to be a little bit happier about uh, about what you've done at the plate today. Now you got to get your pitching square. <laughs> Another one to the backstop from Llewellyn as he threw that one high. Hard fastball. Sullivan is the batter. He's 0 for 3 today. Has scored a run when he walked, though. 1-0 pitch, there it is at the knees, brought it back home. <laughs> you are never going to make game two if you're cold already, man. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to run get this hood up over my headset. Can you run home between games, grab, a, uh, grab another jacket? or? I can't. We would need about an hour break. All right, let me go. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go make nice to the manager, see if I can get you a better coat. Wouldn't that be something? You talk to Ty, you talk to Ty between games, and I'll go. I'll get handle your coach. Ty. You talk to Scott. <laughs> One ball, two strikes to Sullivan from Llewellyn. Check swing. Did he go around? You bet he did. Two down. Oh, he is livid. But and so is the head coach. He's out of the dugout. And. And now, head coach still coming out. Now he's making his way towards the first base umpire, and he's been tossed out of the game. Ejected. I thought That'll he, do it for Billy Gurnan. He's going to get his money's worth now. I thought he went, but it was tight. It was inside. He's going to make sure he gets to everybody. He hasn't he hasn't yelled anything at the second base umpire yet, so he should uh, should make sure he includes him. I'm just curious, John. I know you probably don't have the answer. I definitely don't. When you get tossed out of Dwayne Banks, where do you go? Well, exactly, because we don't <laughs> we don't have a visitors clubhouse. So he's going to go out of the stadium over there to the left. And here's the interesting thing for you then. So. As we learned when Brody Breck got ejected, uh, the pitcher loses four games, but a, a, a coach or a, an assistant coach loses a game. Is he going to be able to be in the dugout for game two? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so because, you know, Brody couldn't even be at the stadium. Right. So bus driver might have to get the – Fire up the bus, fire man. Fire up the bus. Two down in the inning in the top of the ninth. One more to get for Llewellyn. He's – Working on Allen, the count's one and one. Allen, two for three today, scored a couple runs. Double down the right field line. He's been he's been good. Got his average up to 250 on the season now. Llewellyn set with the one one. Here it comes. Check swing. Doesn't matter. Called strike outside corner. One and two. Hawks are a strike away from an 18 and three start. Llewellyn looks in for the sign from Moss. He's got it. The one-two feels it, deals it. Line drive into right, base hit. One hopper in front of Wilmus. 
And Allen again. Third hit with of the a day. Hit. He's yeah. outstanding. Been on base four times. And all of the three hits have all been poked out to right field. He's just done a good job going to the opposite field, staying in there. Broncos stay alive in the ninth. Swinehart's the last chance now. Llewellyn starts him off with a first pitch fastball. Outside corner, strike one. How about all fastballs right here, Luke? The 0-1? Mm-hmm. Yep. Again at the knees. This time 0-2. Thank you, sir. May I have another something like that? Right. Iowa leading 13 to 8, top of the ninth. Llewellyn is ready. The 0-2 on its way home. Got him. Swing and a miss on the outside part of the plate. And that'll do it for game one of the doubleheader. Hawks win 13 to 8. Man, that game had just a little bit of everything, didn't it? That was uh, a good battle. You know, Western Michigan showed their, uh, you know, they're not just here to, to spend some time in uh, tropical Iowa City. They, they really wanted to compete. And, and, you know, after a tough day yesterday, came back, bats were really alive. Pitching staff, for the most part, for them was good in, in, in spurts, just couldn't consistently get the outs. Each team really countered every punch that the other threw. And uh, and I think that was impressive. I was I was impressed by the, the Western Michigan side that, you know, Iowa hit them a couple of times and they, they bounced back. The Broncos got the, the, the first couple of runs on the board, but in the end, Iowa out runs them and beats them 13 to 8. Before we take a break, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Game 2 scheduled to start at 535. Coming up in just over 30 minutes. So we'll wrap up the series with Western Michigan. Another series win, John. Another series win. That's good. The Hawks have only had uh, only had one weekend that they can't claim uh, a winning weekend, but rebounded nicely there and and really, you know, need the. Uh, we, we haven't really talked at all about RPI today, and but you know, need the need the sweep. This is a, a way yep. to get it done. One more to get. This afternoon, we'll take a break. We'll break down this game uh, right after this break. Iowa wins it 13 to 8. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. Iowa wins game one of the doubleheader 13 to eight over Western Michigan. And just, John, as we're looking down at the stands, we were joking in the middle innings about all the people that would stick around. Either they're going to go get warmed up underneath the stadium or in their cars. It's well, cleared out pretty well, hasn't it? And if they get to their cars, boy, once you start warming up in a car. Oh, that's hard, what I'm saying. It's hard telling if you're coming back. That's what I'm saying. If they're warming up in the cars, they're out of here. <laughs> so uh, the, the stadium is cleared out pretty good for now. And we'll see who re-enters and, and refills for game two coming up at 535 at Dwayne Banks. We'll wrap things up with Western Michigan for the weekend. First pitch at 535. Iowa wins game one, 13 to 8. John, I guess just your 
your preliminary takeaways from it. It was a it was a really strange game, in my opinion, looking back already. It, it certainly wasn't pretty from a Hawkeye perspective. You know, you, you know, Jared Simpson, you'd like his first start to go a little bit smoother. Zach Volker um, was sharp, except for one spot where he kind of got himself into trouble and and got punished for it. And then Luke Llewellyn did a nice job of. of cleaning up the end and maybe getting back to what we're used to seeing from the from the Hawkeye pitching staff but um, you know again the Hawkeye bats did a really nice job took advantage early on of some free bases and then uh, when the free bases got cleaned up on the Western Michigan side Iowa did a good job of putting the ball in play and putting it into gaps the key with this weekend series was to solidify something before we get to conference play and we have another game to, to sort through but do you think that Iowa's figured out what they we're trying to so far in this series uh, yes I, I mean I, I think that uh, you know it, it, it was it's, it's Jerry's first start so you know it's, it's different there and so you know you you give him you give him that look to uh, to kind of get more acclimated and and hopefully comfortable and then roll out next weekend against uh, you know what'll be a big series against Maryland uh, you know Zach's still gonna have the role he's gonna have um, so no no real surprises there. Now, you need Ty to come out and, and, and do his thing here in, in this game um, and really shut down right from the beginning so that it's, hey, this is what it's going to look like and, and be pretty comfortable with that. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get you the highlights of game one of the doubleheader right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. We're in between games. Iowa took down Western Michigan 13-8 in game one. We'll get you the highlights in just a minute. But we're joined in the broadcast booth by student assistant Tyler Snepp. Ty, it's good to have you finally up here in the in the booth with us. A chance to chat with you a little bit. How would you think about that game one? Uh, you know, I mean, guys played well, played hard. Um, you know, obviously, West Michigan played well. We went a lot of back and forth there on runs, but, uh, you know, came out with it there, obviously, towards the end. Thought it was a good effort overall, and uh, just getting ready for game two here. Your role as, as student assistant, walk us through that a little bit, some of the things that you do. Yeah, so, um, I mean, obviously, I played here the last couple. Now, um, here, finishing out um, as a senior. Uh, came back on the coaching staff. I coach the catchers every day and uh, help out with the hitting as well. 
So you played for the Hawkeyes for the past few years. Injury basically forced you to hang that up. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. That's so, so what's uh, the perspective is a little bit different. We talk with Mitchell Bow quite a bit, and just how he, you know, played here a few years ago. Uh, you're kind of in the same boat as that, and and now on the coaching staff. So, how do you balance the? Hey, I still feel like I should be a player, but I'm coaching now. Uh, you know, man, it's uh, it, it, we we talk about walking the line a lot. Talk about walking the line with the guys. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, I have guys in this team that I played with, I lived with, and I have guys now, that, same guys that get to coach. Um, I love it though. And at that point, you just you know play the cards you dealt. Wasn't able to play anymore, so got the opportunity to be in this situation. Thank you, Coach Heller. <laughs> and um, it's been it's been awesome. So we just kind of go one day at a time on that. Ty, you and I talked a lot last year, and I got to know you a little bit because we we had we had similar issues that that kind of led you to to uh, to your forced retirement. You know. Do you see yourself, you know, kind of as you've gotten a taste of it, do you see yourself coaching down the road? Was this kind of your, your entry entry to, to build your career here? Absolutely, the plan. Um, I love what I'm doing. I'm very blessed for the opportunity I've been given, and this has been a great way to get kind of started on what was kind of a dream at one point. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely a plan as I kind of go forward here. Want to hang around here? Have, have Coach Heller keep you around for a while? Uh, you know, man, we'll see what happens. We control what we can control with that stuff. That's I, I love Iowa, and I love love baseball. I love coaching it, so we'll uh, see how that all goes. We've had a lot of fun on the road to start the season, haven't we, Ty? That's that's probably that part never changes whether you're a player or a coach, huh? No, that's been great. We've had a lot of fun with that. Been been a real good spring here going. Well, we're off to a, a great start, 18 and three now, Ty, and one more to get against Western Michigan. Here, what do you think the message is uh, in between games like this? Uh, finish, you know, um, play hard. We I mean, obviously came out today, first one went our way, but, you know, game's not done. Western Michigan does not give up. They play oh. hard. They're a good ball team. You know, we got to come out and do our thing. We're going to come out on top again. So that's our whole thing right now is finish. Coach Bo told us uh, that there might be a little reward for the guys if they sweep today, maybe get Sunday off. Is that, is that true? That is that is potential. There's the potential, There's potential. That that's the plan. All right. Well, hopefully the guys do get the, the Sunday off and we take care of business against Western Western Michigan here in game two. Thanks, Ty. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. All right, Ty Snap. Thanks, buddy. Student assistant on our post-game slash pre-game show of game number two <laughs> coming up. Thanks to Ty for coming on. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get you those highlights of game number one coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Iowa beats Western Michigan in game one of the doubleheader, 13 to eight behind 13 hits. The Hawks had no errors in the field. Defensively, Western Michigan, eight runs, 10 hits. They did have two errors. Zach Volker gets the win for the Hawkeyes. Let's go over some of the highlights 
from game one. The offensive fireworks started for Iowa in the second. Sam Honar gave the Hawks the lead with a bases clearing double. 1-2, lifts this in the air, deep to left center. Get going, baby. It is one hopping off the wall. One run is in. Make it two. Peterson's hot on Tello's tail. He's going to score, and the Hawks have the lead. 3-2, to two. a bases clearing double. Sam Honar, yes. Cade Moss would trade places with him in the very next at bat. Moss hits it fair down the left field line. Honar will be waved in. Moss digging for two. The left fielder just now picks it up. It'll be an RBI double. Cade Moss, Hawks lead 4-2. After Western Michigan retook the lead in the third, Keaton Anthony grabbed it right back with this bomb. A few Ooh. more hit by pitches. Anthony drives this deep to right. Get going, baby. It's gone. Ho -ho. Anthony gives the Hawkeyes the lead right back. Boom. Iowa had a lot of opportunities with the bases loaded today. You heard Honar clear them all earlier. Michael Seegers said, hey, you know what? I'll take some of that too. First pitch to Seegers. Ooh. Down the left field line. It is a fair ball into the corner. One runs in. Make it two. Come on, Benny Wilmus. He's rounding third. Here comes the throw. Safe. Ha-ho. Seegers, yes. Honar kept his hot day going with a two, with, with an RBI double that came in the eighth and put away the Broncos for good. Sam Honar's turn now. He drives the first pitch into the right center gap. It's down and cut off by the center fielder. Then he bobbles it. Petey's round in third. There goes the helmet. Peterson hustles and scores. 13 to eight on yet another Hawkeye double. This one comes from Honar. And then in the ninth, Luke Llewellyn with a couple of strikeouts to lead off the inning, gave up a single, and then slammed the door on the Broncos. The 0-2 on its way home. Got him. Swing and a miss on the outside part of the plate. And that'll do it for game one of the doubleheader. Hawks win 13-8. to Man, that game had just a little bit of everything, didn't it? Oh, there you have it. Iowa winning 13 to 8. The Hawks now 18 and 3 overall. Seegers with a great game. He was just one for six, but had three RBIs. The middle of the order really did a lot of damage with Anthony Tello, Peterson, Honar, Moss, Wilmus, all with multiple hits in game number one. We're getting closer to the first pitch of game two. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll We'll re-air our interview with Coach Heller that you heard in front of game number one. All right, we'll be back in just a little bit. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at MidAmericanEnergy.com. 
Paid for by the customers of Mid American Energy. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball this afternoon. Turned into a doubleheader with Iowa and Western Michigan. Joined now by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, before we talk about the doubleheader today, just a thought on the complete performance yesterday. Man, it was a it was a great game for us. I was really, really pleased with our team. Um, you know, start with like we talked about in the pregame yesterday. It started with a great start from Brody Breck. Uh, Brody gave us you know five and two thirds. Uh, Kept his pitch count right at 100 in almost six innings. It's getting better each time out, more efficient. Um, threw a lot of strikes yesterday. I was, he was in control um, way more than he had been. So it was just a really, really good start to the game uh, with Brody. And then I was, I was really excited about how well our, our hitters executed the plan that you and I talked about with Miller, their, their right-hander, as you guys could see in the booth. I mean, good arm. Um, we, we, you know, we weren't even sure how to plan, you know, with slider derby day or was it, or was it um, fastball come at you day and it, we, you know, we had to kind of adjust on the fly, but we didn't chase and we got his pitch count up and hit a lot of barrels on a, on a cold, windy day that, 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 you know, for a while there I was thinking, man, this might be a two to nothing game and a nail biter and uh, our offense really picked up the slack, played really good defense. Um, and then, uh, you know, Marcus came in, gave us two good innings, kind of fell apart uh, in the ninth. And, um, you know, uh, Jacob Henderson and those guys did a good job. Yeah. I just talked about their pitcher for a second. Uh, he did go with that slider a lot, like you had predicted, and he hit it pretty well. Yeah, he did. I mean, our guys did a really good job of, he, uh, of not, not chasing the pitch up that we talked about. You know, had we done that, it had been a long day. And, Man, just a lot of extra base hits on a on a day that was Cole Hill Peterson home run, home run double, Kate Moss double, Keaton double. I mean, just a lot of Huck Huck Storf another double, and it just was scoring runs and, and or challenging to score runs in most innings. So I, was, I thought it was a really good day and a, a really good approach by our guys from start to finish. How about that play by Michael Seegers to uh, elude the catcher and find a way oh, to touch oh, yeah, him? That, that was that was incredible, and and just Michael super athletic and. Uh, you know, for the for the listeners, you know, Michael. When you look at him, you know, he, he's a fairly small guy, but Michael can power dunk. He can really jump, <laughs> yeah. as we saw. <laughs> yeah. Coach, when you went out to get Brody yesterday, it looked like maybe he wanted to get that one last out, but the pitch count just a little bit too high, wasn't it? Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, with conference next week, um, you know, I was even arguing to get him out maybe sooner, just just because. And uh, but that's the great thing about Brody. He, he loves to be out there. He loves to compete, and he. He, um, he enjoys it when he is out there, and he don't want to come out. Yeah. Uh, Brody made a pretty significant announcement yesterday. He's going he's gonna to hang up the football cleats and, and just stick to the baseball cleats. Uh, just a thought on that. Well, I mean, you know, we knew coming into this that, that Brody loved football. And, uh, you know, without football, you know, he might not be here. I mean, he really wanted the chance to do both. And, um, you know, we were able to, to offer him that opportunity, um, Coach Ferentz and myself. And, and I just feel really bad um, that it didn't work out smoothly. Just in, in, And it was nobody's fault, nobody's uh, to blame. It's just circumstance. I mean, Brody, Brody he, he just was injured a lot in football. And it just, it, you know, when he was injured, he couldn't do, it was hard to do both when you're hurt. And it's hard, you know, to, to get out on the field in football when you're hurt. And, you know, it just, it just didn't work out. And, and you know, here he is a, a year away from his draft year. And, um, you know, he, 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 the thing he told me when he, when he said, I'm thinking about doing this, I said, are you really sure, you know, because I know how much you love football. And he goes, yeah, it's going to be hard, but, but I, I, I want to be great at baseball. And I know I can be great at baseball if I put time into it. And, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, as you can see, uh, if, if he can smooth some things out and, and you know, get a full year uh, of baseball, I mean, he'll be in a much better place for his draft year next year. And, you know, I think the sky's the limit after that. What sort of message do you have for some of our younger listeners that, that might follow down that same path, though, to, to chase your dreams and, and see how it works out uh, going for both sports or you know, keeping your hat in the ring in both? Well, I mean, it's... it's, it's what I tell kids, I, I was a multi-sport guy, and what I tell kids, it, I mean, if you love it and you love it in your heart, go for it. And, and I'm talking both sports or whatever it is. But if you just kind of like it, 
it, ain't, it isn't going to work, especially in today's world at the Division One level. It's very difficult um, because of the, the, the demands on, that both sports have. You have to be very special. You have to be almost so good that you can not do as much at both and still beat people out. And, and that's the hard part. You know, that's the difficult thing. And, and I think Brody fell into that perfectly because he loves football. He loves baseball. I think he loves football even more, um, which is why he came to Iowa. So he could come through that tunnel and hear back in black and, and be out on that field with, with our Hawks. Um, but the baseball side, it would it would have worked out really well to, to me if he just could have stayed healthy and and that was the thing that 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 made it difficult. Well, congratulations to Brody on that decision. We're excited to see where uh, things take him in the future. Talking with head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show. Okay, so we've turned this game into a doubleheader just because of the bad weather forecaster for tomorrow, right? Correct. I mean, what ha what has happened since seven o'clock this morning is a modern marvel. I mean, this field was covered with snow. Our, our ground screw, uh, you know, Tony C Tony Senio and Andy Eifert and Damian Simcox and their crews, they've been out here shoveling, plowing since seven o'clock this morning. And it, and it wasn't easy, it was a wet snow and it wasn't it wasn't sliding off, you know, it was turning into mush and ice and we couldn't blow it over the fence like a lot of times you can. We had to lift it with, with machines to get it over the fence and the amount of work those guys put in just so we could play today, it was a lot and we wouldn't be playing if it wasn't for those guys today or tomorrow and so thanks go out to those guys but the forecast did a 180 for tomorrow it looked like yesterday that it was going to be a not you know a decent day a little colder than today and um the rain wasn't coming in or precip wasn't coming in until after game time and you know get up this morning and boom they got it snowing again in the morning and um you know possible rain through two o'clock tomorrow afternoon and you know it's not perfect today it's a little bit of a cold breeze blowing in from left field and, but the sun's out and it'll be a way better day today than tomorrow and i i certainly don't want our ground crew to have to come out and cross snow again tomorrow yeah. well we just can't get a smooth operating weekend uh, under our belt. What what changes now that it's a doubleheader, or is everything on schedule like normal? Well, it's, it's pretty normal, except that, you know, uh, the Ty, Ty Langenberg's going to have to bump up a day, and he'll throw the second game. We're going to play a nine-inning game with no 10-run rule, and then the second game will be a nine-inning game with a 10-run rule. Okay. And uh, we should be able to get a lot of the pitchers in. It was, it was absolutely crucial for us to get all three games in this weekend with conference play starting next week to be able to run the rotation even though it's a doubleheader like we had planned uh, uh, this week because we haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. But what do you make of your offense the past few weekends? Looks like it's starting to hit its stride, especially the extra base hits and also the stolen bases really picking up the aggression there. Well, it's just it's just um, a bunch of guys that are really buying into the plan. I mean, we're just we're getting pitches in the strike zone to hit, and when you do that, you usually hit balls hard. It's when you're swinging the balls, you know, outside the strike zone that you get yourself in trouble, and that's what we're we're working on. And Marty Marty Sutherland, our hitting coach, he's been doing an awesome job with the guys, and the guys are really really buying in, and we're getting on base at a high percentage, and um, you know, we're swinging at strikes. And you know, I always tell the hitters, you know, there's no help for those hitters that don't swing at strikes. <laughs> and, and 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 when you chase, um, you know, you make it pretty easy on the other team, and we've been making it tough one through nine. And, and then, to your point, when you get a lot of guys on base, uh, especially early in the inning, then you can do some things on the bases and run. And that's a that's a testament to uh, to our guys getting on base uh, with leadoff guys to lead off an inning. And then you know we've got some speed and we can run a little bit, and that's been nice. Uh, a couple of keys to victory to take down Western Michigan today in both games. We're facing a young guy today, and Tom, his name's Thompson, and a right-hander, and he's he's kind of unique, really. Um, you don't see many of these guys anymore. He's kind of the soft throwing right-hander mm. that that you really don't see. I mean, 84, 87. Uh, he's going to pitch backwards with a lot of secondary stuff, slider, change up. Change up kind of looks like it might be a splitty. Couldn't really tell in the video, uh, but it kind of had splitty, splitty action to it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the same plan we just talked about. we got to keep him off the oh, – he's going to try to live on the edges. Uh, we got to try to get him on the, on the white part of the plate and, and where we can do some damage. Uh, just another thought on that pitcher for them today. If he's going to throw soft like that, does that make it actually harder to hit, harder <laughs> to time up? Well, I mean – 
it's just you don't see them that often. I mean, we're seeing, you know, guys in, the, and that's why you see a struggle sometimes in the midweek games when we play a Division three team or an NAIA team when you're not seeing, you know, we're coming off a weekend like Texas Tech and you're seeing, you know, 90 to 97 uh, and, and, and with 30 sliders and then you go to a, where you're seeing all 85 or below, you know, that's a, that's a significant change. But I actually like it because I think it helps us as we go through each week where we have to make the adjustments timing-wise. And um, I, I see that really helping us now. And I saw it yesterday, and I saw it last weekend as well. Um, I, I think it's a good thing. It can be frustrating when, it, when you're struggling with it. But I also think it's great for your hitters to have to deal with different timings. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Let's take two against the Broncos today. All right, thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Just moments away from first pitch between Iowa and Western Michigan. Game two of the doubleheader after the Hawkeyes took game one. All right, John. Well, let's uh, let's go for the sweep uh, over the Broncos today. See, no good reason that we shouldn't do that. Right. Uh, and, we, and we've kind of talked about uh, the, uh, the pitching for Western Michigan. They got to be running thin out there in the bullpen. You would think so, although, you know, uh, I think it was Berg there came in at the end of that one. Uh, Hayden did a nice job. At least, at the very least, he did a good job of eating innings. You know, sure. finished three and two thirds innings um, and did it on, on kind of a neat number of pitches. You know, just threw 64 pitches to get through that. So, so good job there. But Hawkeyes had seven seven hitters register a hit. Seven guys scored a run. Um, you know, it was five different guys had an RBI that game. So really up and down the lineup. Did a pretty good job with it, and uh, you know the two guys that didn't have hits um, were on base as well with walks and hit by pitches. So um, everybody everybody spent some time running around the bases, and so let's need to carry that uh, carry that through here and and uh, see if uh, you know, Ty can come out and, and put up zeros a little faster than maybe uh, maybe the Iowa pitching staff did yeah. in the first game. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see him get another start uh, now. After spending some time in the in the bullpen, and maybe can solidify himself as the Sunday starter, even though it's not Sunday for us. Right, the, you know, finishing up because, you know, somewhere along the way that'll be a, it'll be a big deal. You know, Hawks will have split the first two games of the series, and and uh, you know you'll need to you'll need to come back and close the door and win that Sunday game and, or third game, whatever day it happens to be. And um, you know, Ty was very capable of that last year, and so uh, we'll see if he can uh, uh, kind of resume that role now. 
Let's go over the starting lineups. Batting order for Western Michigan in game two. Jackson Kitchen will lead things off. Morrison will bat second. Doyle is at third. Batting third. Sullivan fourth. Allen fifth. Swinehart is the DH. He'll bat sixth. Nevar, Budig, and me, seven, eight, nine. So the same lineup for Western Michigan. Iowa has the same lineup as well. Seegers, Huxdorf, Derigi, Anthony Tello, Peterson, Honar, Moss, and Wilmus. The only thing different to start will be the, the pitchers as the Hawkeyes are about to take the field right now. The starting pitcher for Iowa is Ty Langenberg. The starting pitcher for Western Michigan is Ethan Hotelling. So uh, the line on Ty Langenberg, the, the stat, the scoop, what do you got, John? 457 ERA, 2-2 two and two on the season, six appearances, four starts. Uh, but I, you know, we're hoping it's fairly safe to say that uh, the Ty Langenberg you'll see today um, doesn't account for for all of those stats. You know, you'll you'll see a a much sharper a sharper Ty, the one that threw last weekend against South Dakota State. You know, six appearances, four starts, 21 and two thirds innings, giving up 28 hits, um, just walked 10, struck out 24, um, but opponents hitting 315 against him, but. He was very sharp um, in that outing uh, through, you know, through four, four crisp, easy innings. And it'd be nice to see Ty, <laughs> Ty show some of that depth, get five, six innings here and, and really, uh, really work it around. And, you know, that, that's the, if you're going to have a, if you're going to have a criticism of the Iowa pitching staff, I know the, the idea is, is five or six starters, but, um, you know, they haven't had the guy yet where you go, boy, I know he's going to go deep in a game. They've really had to make sure those pieces yeah. all work. So let's think about who's available in the bullpen for Iowa when, when Ty's day is done. We've still got Gatilla out there. Uh, I'm just thinking about maybe the first guy to come in after Ty. Probably depends on how long you could see. Uh, you could see Kate Obermuller. Yeah. You could see Keaton Anthony. Um, Henderson was warming up. We'll see, I don't know if, if you kind of burned him already with the warm-up. Let's we'll see about him. The nice part with, with Hendo is, you know, maybe it's a, a you know, you're, you're really rarely looking for Hendo to go, you know, two innings. You know, for, for Jacob, it's more of, hey, can you come in and get me? I need this out. We've got a dirty inning going, and I need a guy that throws strikes, and I need this out. Um, and that's where his role is great. And so... You think maybe even if he threw a little bit earlier that um, you could heat back up and and you know try to get try to throw ten pitches to get to get an out or two if you needed it. All right, we're getting ready for first pitch of this one. It is a nine inning game with a run rule after seven if either team is up by ten or more. First pitch from Langenberg high and outside for a ball. One zero pitch hit foul out of play one and one. Iowa eighteen and three now. Western Michigan five and fifteen. Hawks looking for the sweep. The doubleheader sweep would give them the series sweep. Langenberg comes inside for a called strike, one and two. And remember, at the end of game one, Western Michigan's head man. Billy Gurnan was ejected from the game, and Kitchen is down on strikes to start game two. So the head coach for Western Michigan, he's not around. Yeah, he's on the bus or something somewhere else. <laughs> we don't we don't necessarily mean that as a joke. He's literally, he can't be in the stadium, so I don't know where else you go. There's no clubhouse here. Yeah, you're going to be, he, he's going to grab a hot dog and, uh, and. Take a walk down the hill, go to one of the establishments on the strip. Exactly. I don't know. That's a foul ball, yeah. Tough break there as he squared the bunt and ball came up and in on him and um, actually probably good, pretty good protection to, to have that hit the bat. But. Yeah, he spun around. Made contact. Moss did a nice job. Jumped out from behind the plate, picked it up and tagged him just in case. 0-1 from Langenberg. Nice slider. There it is. 0-2 on the inside corner. Kind of dirty after you throw one... Uh, Throw one up and in like that to then throw the throw the big sharp bender to, to break it off. Yo two, that's high. Ball one. <clears throat> I'll have midweek game on Tuesday now at Illinois State. Our first road midweek. One two from Langenberg just got a piece of it and fouled it back. 
as we'll take a little take a little road trip and before we come back home. Kind of an odd place for an away game there between two weekend home series. Langenberg set with the one two. Here it comes. Tap just foul. We'll do it again at one and two. Illinois State just a bit below 500 on the season. One, two, foul ball again, left side. Just taking a look, six and 11 on the season for mm. Illinois State so Ooh, far. That's, yeah, the last time I looked, they were, I think, six and eight, so even further below 500 now. Yeah, had a tough weekend against Belmont this weekend. 1-2 from Langenberg. Again, another foul ball, this time to the right side. They dropped a 10-3 decision midweek last week to Minnesota in 10 innings. So you don't, you don't usually get beat by seven in extra innings. Langenberg with a slider off the plate outside, 2-2. Two and two. Minnesota struggling a bit, five and nineteen on the season. Yeah, there's a couple of teams at the bottom of the Big Ten that have had a hard time. This is a great at bat here to get the count full now. I look forward to uh, taking a closer look at the Big Ten standings. Maybe we can get to those later in this one. Three two from Langenberg, right back to him. Ground ball, he'll run over, underhand toss to Riggy with two hands. Got it, two down. Yeah, Hawks will open with Maryland. We talked about a couple times, 12 and 9. Uh, but really had a tough schedule. Played some played some good baseball teams. Played Old Miss four times already. So a <laughs> top 15 SEC team. Defending national champs. Langenberg's first pitch to Doyle is swung on and missed. So they've played played a little bit better here in uh uh, in recent weeks, although UCF got the better of him yesterday. Check swing. Did he go around? No, he did not. One and one. But yeah, March, is, March has been much kinder to uh, to the Terrapins, so I will will have to be have to be on their game and ready to go. Ball and a strike. Swing and a miss. Well, you don't see a swing and a miss at a pitch that the catcher <sighs> that's so far outside the catcher doesn't catch it. <laughs> that one was way outside, wasn't it? One, two from Langenberg. Check, swing. Did he go around this time? You bet he did. And a couple of strikeouts in the inning for Langenberg. Good start to game number two for the Hawkeyes. We'll go to the bottom of the first. I get on the board early against Western Michigan. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Bottom of the first inning, Michael Seegers, Kyle Huxdorf, Brennan DeRiggy to lead off for the Hawkeyes against Western Michigan pitcher Ethan Hotelling. Ethan is making his sixth appearance, his fifth start on the year. He's 1-2, and 16.2 ERA. He's thrown 11 and two-thirds innings, 21 hits, 21 runs. They've all been earned, 11 walks, so a little bit of control issue. Opponents have hit 4-12 against him, and he's hit six batters. Mm. We'll see. Good fastball. It's in the upper 80s. Um, slider changeup. Just had a little bit of trouble finding the uh, 
finding the sweet spot so far this year. He'll operate out of the windup. First pitch to Seegers, low and outside, ball one. Now we, we've been complimenting Western Michigan on their on their fight, on how they battle. I think if the Hawkeyes jump on them early, you'd have to see a really impressive effort from Western Michigan to keep battling. Just the way just just my first guess. Yeah, there's a there's a get on the bus and go home version to it that would be like, all right, I've yep. seen enough. Let's uh let's put a bow on this and head home yep. and, and kind of regroup cuz yeah, they're they're into their conference season already. They've played two series. 3 and 1 is the count after a 3-0 fastball goes right down the heart of the plate. Yeah, they've they've struggled a little bit there. They've they've lost the first two series. They've went one and two both weekends. And... Seegers takes the three one up and in, so the leadoff man is on for the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the first. And that'll be yeah, you know, we've we've talked about quality at bats, you know, continuing continuing to make make the Broncos work. Yeah. And that that's it right now. And, and to your point exactly, there's there's no need for sympathy. There's no need to to let off. It's it's zero zero. So, right. So go ahead and, and get it done right here right now. The, what's happened in the first two games don't matter. The practice practice sweeping. It's Kyle Huxdorf's turn. First pitch on the outside corner. Called strike. It's 0 and 1. Same uniforms for both teams. Hawks with the black tops, white pants. Western Michigan brown tops and gray pants. Quick check on Seegers at first. He's all right back in there safely. Hawk looking for his first hit on the day. One of the few Hawkeyes that did not have a hit in that first game. He got on a couple times, but... Yeah, Hawk's starting lineup now, though. Ben Wilmus... <laughs> Hitting ninth has the lowest batting average, and it's 273, and his on-base percentage is 515. So, um, again, that that lineup one through nine that can that can contribute and hurt. Um, so you don't need that guy to be on because a lot of guys can do it. A one to Huxdorf catches the outside corner. It is 0 and 2 to the Hawkeye center fielder. Seegers hasn't taken off for second yet. I think he might be. Hinting at the idea of it with a good lead over there, but no balls, two strikes. Huxdorf drives this deep to right. Get going, baby. It is gone. He's Home got run. He's got a hit now. There it is. Kyle Huxdorf. Boom. Hawks lead 2-0 in the first. A really good piece of hitting there as that ball, fastball up and away, went with it and just drove it out of the ballpark. 382. That one was a line drive. Got out of here in a hurry, John. Yeah, the <laughs> exit angle on that one was under 24 degrees. So yeah. just uh, just launched it, kind of cut right through the wind. Uh, didn't get a ton of extra push, but uh, you know, again, to to your point, exactly what you were just talking about. Jump on it early, and and just give Western Michigan every reason to just kind of pack it up and get ready to go home. Two nothing lead. Bottom of the first. It's Dorigi's turn. First pitch was low. Second pitch is on the outside corner, one and one. And that'll tie Huck again with Keaton for the team lead. Now each have five. You think there was some frustration behind that swing? <laughs> one, one. Brennan lays off, but it's a called strike. We're probably making Huck seem like a bad guy with <laughs> with, with his maybe frustration from the first game because he hit a couple of balls really hard but couldn't find any grass, and he'll get the – First hit of the game for the Hawks with the two-run homer. The one-two, that's in the dirt. Ball two. You see Brennan with two strikes there. He just made a change. Normally he kind of has his back foot right on the back batter's box line. He, he actually stepped up about two or three inches just to just his approach. Two-two was in on the hands and fouled back. Nobody out in the inning. Brennan fouls it back again. It'll stay two and two. Good to get some early run support for Ty Langenberg. We saw this type of at-bat in the first game, too, from Brennan. 
Hanging tough. He fouls another one off. Still two and two to the Hawkeye first baseman. Just got a piece of that one too. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't get much of that one, but but obviously got enough to send it uh, send it to the backstop and stay alive. Got to be rewarded at some point, right? Now well, there's ball three. And again, we we've, we've seen this at bat from him, and and that's the uh, uh, you know whether it's the the fifth year hitter or. Uh, or what, but just does a really nice job. 3-2, up and out of here, fouled to the left side. We might, uh, we might be, we might set the record for uh, today for... I think it's been 11 today, right? Uh, yeah, he had the 11 pitch at bat earlier. Uh, uh, it was uh, Kitchen that had the 10 pitch at bat, and he got, he got rewarded with the walk again. Another walk for Derigi today he's really driving up his walks now is he tied for the lead john i think he's tied with chase mosley right with 15. that was just 10 pitch so he was he was mm. a little lazy there but ah. uh <laughs> but yeah that one should uh that might be that might actually be 16 six, he, yeah yeah that's 16 so that should uh should give him the lead keaton anthony's up nobody out in the bottom of the first hawks lead two nothing and if we follow the pattern Keaton should hit one into the parking lot there in right field. <laughs> walk, home run, now a walk, and now the 1-0 is to the backstop. Derigi gets to second. And in scoring position. That's you know, we saw that with from Hotella in his stats as we were as we were looking him up to come in. That just has a little bit of trouble with the control. Um, the catcher Budig will go out and talk to him. Yeah. And, and we saw a couple of the conversations from Western Michigan settle the pitcher down and, and do a pretty good job with it um, in the first game. So We've seen some of these, you know, when you look at Western Michigan's schedule, we've seen a couple of the Sunday scores get get a little out of hand. And yeah. so, um, Really playing Keaton to pull on the infield. Two balls, no strikes, the pitch. That's up and in. Anthony turns away from it. 3-0. Some early action down in the Bronco bullpen. Can't find it there, and it's low. Ball four. A couple of runners on for Iowa. Coming for Iowa, third base, the 28 Raider Collins. Already to the five hitter in the inning. Three walks drawn by Iowa in the first. Leading Western Michigan 2 nothing. Raider Tello's up. And this is a little bit how Iowa got started in the first game of this doubleheader. It wasn't so much hitting as it was trouble control and then timely hitting. First pitch to Tello, low and outside, ball one. And, and so we're, we're seeing a little bit of a replay there. A couple runners on and, and uh, you know, Walk home run, and now a couple, couple more walks, and so see if Iowa can, you know, really inflict some more damage with it. A lot of room in right center for a Raider if he can go opposite field. Got to have a strike first, though, and it's two and zero to him. Yeah, we really haven't seen a ton of competitive pitches right now that that made the Hawkeye hitters want to take rips at it. Two balls, no strikes, nobody out. Runners on first and second. Tello takes that one. Oh, it was high. Ball three. Yee. That was close, wasn't it? That was really close. But you know, we've talked about it a couple of times. When you're spraying it all over the place, um, it's hard for an umpire to give you any benefit of the doubt. That one's hard to argue. The 3-0 right down the middle, 3-1 and one now. Now Tello will have the green light if it's a strike. Peterson is on deck for the black and gold. 3-1, Tello Ooh. drives it left center. This one's going to get to the wall. It's down and rolling. Here comes Derigi. Anthony's hustling for third. They're going to send him. Raider stops at second. Here comes the throw. Anthony's got by it easy. Two Hawkeyes score. It's 4-0, courtesy of the Raider Tello double. That's a long way from a man Keaton Anthony to run. <laughs> I think he was hoping Coach Heller was going to throw up the stop sign. <laughs> he was huffing and puffing, and he got in there. 
Good job there as again the Hawks take advantage. Both free bases driven in by Tello there. Uh, two hits and four runs now. We'll see. We're gonna get a yeah. we get a slow walk out to the mound, and that might uh, that might be it already. Iowa leading four nothing in the bottom of the first. Nobody out. Runner on second is Tello. Peterson will be the batter. And here is the slow walk to the mound. There is somebody warming up in the bullpen for Western Michigan. Got to think this is something to, to let that pitcher get warm. Well, and, you know, that's the one thing, too, when, you're, when your head coach isn't around is how do you manage your bullpen? How does it happen differently? Um, you know, you, you'd like to think everybody's on the same page, but everybody does do it. Uh, a touch differently, and this one, this one might just be a might just be a chat, but certainly it'll confuse us on which guy comes out to you know. We kind of know if Coach McGrath comes out, it's just a chat. Yeah. If Coach Heller comes out, the guy's gone. And uh, that's what we were. I think we were on the same page on that. It was like, well, their guy's out, so I don't know who who's going to be making the calls. Yeah, we, we don't know which guy's got the hook. Yeah. All right. Mound visits wrapped up. Ready for play again. It's Peterson. Keep the inning going for Iowa. Nobody out in the bottom of the first. Hawks have already played it four. First pitch to Petey is outside for a ball. I was just looking around at some of Iowa's opponents for the year. Texas Tech's actually 0-2 against Texas this weekend. Really? Yeah, lost 6-5 to five Come today. on, Red Raiders. They scored two runs in the top of the ninth but couldn't push across the tying run. They get walked off on or no no um actually they did you're right they tied it up at five and then oh. texas walked them off in the bottom of the ninth 2-0 pitch to peterson skied foul to the right side well, that's one of the things you know we saw that with the texas tech bullpen was it was it felt gettable you know that you know maybe they were uh, uh you know they were going to kind of lean on their starters to get deep and if they kind of got in the middle there um the, the, maybe a team would have a chance Ooh, 2 1 got Petey in the head. Oh, man. He's all right, though, and he's running down to first. Third time and, for Petey today. Man, that one got him up and in. We'll have a pause. I think this is the pitching change that we were thinking of. Before we take our pitching change break, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, we'll have a pitching change break as the Broncos go to the bullpen. We'll be back right after this. Iowa leading 4 nothing in the first. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. All right, new pitcher into the game for Western Michigan will be Drew Shapaniak. He comes in in the bottom of the first with nobody out, and the Hawks still in business with a couple of runners on. Shapaniak's eighth appearance on the season. He's 0-1. He has a 9 ERA. He's thrown six innings, five hits, six runs. They've all been earned. He's also walked six guys, struck out two. Opponents hitting 250, but four wild pitches and three more hits batter so again we're starting to see the uh, uh you know the part of the the nine plus era as a team that, yeah. that western michigan has i haven't recorded an out yet 
And just as a programming note, uh, there is a run rule in this game. Didn't have one in the first. Didn't get there at any point, but there's a run rule. So after seven, if any team is up by ten or more, the game would be called there. Iowa leading 4 nothing. bottom of the first. Nobody out. Chapaniak is ready. First pitch to Honar with runners on first and second. Mm, Sam just missed it and fouled it hard to the left side and out of play. Chapaniak's going to bring it in the low 80s. Um, got a good... Good curve, or I'm sorry, good changeup as well. Curveball. It's going to come, be really slow. High 60s, low 70s. Honar pops it up left side, foul territory. Third baseman Doyle gives chase in between the line and the wall, and he's got it in foul territory. Honar pops out. Out number one. If Cade Moss can, can pick up his partner there a little bit and keep this inning going. Here's Cade Moss. Chapaniak, tall lefty. Different than the pitcher we just saw. Taking forever to get his sign. Now he's got it. First pitch to Moss. Breaking ball, called strike. There it was right there. 72 miles an hour, slow on the way in. Slow bender. If, if Hawkeye hitters can identify that early, they'll be able to... Yeah. Uh, you saw it yesterday, time that up and, and drive some balls into gaps. Throws it again, but missed outside, a little bit high, too. It's one and one. Chapanik trying to bail his partner out here a little bit. Moss is all eyes on this one. Didn't break in, so it stayed out, and it's two and one. Drop the two hard hard name guys on you right off the bat. Right off Hotelling the and Chapaniak. Yeah. Had to go to the pronunciation guide on this one. 2-1, Moss taps it foul. Four straight curveballs there. That's the scouting report is that he's very spin heavy is what they called it. And you've seen that so far as he's attacked Moss. It's a situation, just sit on it, wait for it to get there, and then put your best swing on it. The 2-2, Moss drills it to left. Left fielder takes a couple of steps back, then forward. He's got it two down. And to your point there, he doesn't have an overpowering fastball, so it's not like you can't sit on that, and maybe if you see it, hit it, um, you know, as opposed to a guy that maybe is going to be able to get that fastball past you. Mm -hmm. I was batted around in the inning because Ben Wilmus, the nine hitter, he's up. Ben had a couple hits, three RBIs in game one. First pitch to him is that breaking ball called strike. Floats in at 73. I think, I know, I think they can firmly trust the scouting report at this right. point. <laughs> Whoever put that together, good job. 0-1. Outside with the curveball, 1-1. One one. Just missed there. Good good pitch, though. I mean, that's again, if you're going to miss, that's the location to miss. Just, just a little wide. Hitter's probably not going to be able to do a ton with it anyway. Still some runs to get. Standing out there. Wilmus drives it to left. This one hooking. Foul. Oh, that ball's done too. Yep. It's <laughs> the end of its life cycle as it splashes in the bullpen down the line and left. And that you're probably going to see that a lot the first time through against this pitcher for Western Michigan. A lot of pulled balls for both um, righty and lefty hitters. Yeah, as you expect the expect the guys to get a good uh, good early break on it. One two is low. Two and two. Wilmus did a good job to lay off of that one. Whew, that was uh, that was a send you back to the dugout pitch. Ben was doing a nice job too. There's a Johnston baseball team here, and you know, that's Ben's hometown. Mm -hmm. So he was the he was the folk hero for the uh, yeah. He was the folk hero for the guys. He was signing autographs between games, and uh, pretty pretty cool to see. Two balls and two strikes. Now it's a full count to Wilmus. The pitch. Runners are going. Swing and a miss. Wilmus goes down for the third out. Hawks leave a couple of runners on, but they score four to start this one. Iowa 4 nothing over Western Michigan. We'll head to the second right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks. Iowa leading Western Michigan 4 0 in the top of the second of game number two of tonight's doubleheader. Cade Sullivan is the batter to lead off the inning for the Broncos. A swing and a miss on the first pitch from Ty Langenberg. All right, we put up a crooked number. Let's get that zero. Got to follow right back up. Counts one and one. Pitch missing outside. I saw Luke Llewellyn between games, too. and he was uh, asking me how we how we commented on his on his two pitches that he just sailed to the backstop. And I said, "Well, ooh, up ooh. and in, ball two. Sorry about that, John. Oh no, you're good. <laughs> I, I was cringing the same way. <laughs> That's going to get me every time. I, I said we were doing everything we could to think that there was a plan involved. We just couldn't quite come up with what it was. Three and one. Langenberg's missed on a couple in a row now. I love that. That's the. Uh, that, is that one of the top things that Louie talked to you about? He had to talk to you about something else, right? Or was he too concerned about how he <laughs> framed those ones? He had some he had some fans around, so it was just a quick conversation. Oh. 3-1 hits Sullivan, so Ty loses him after getting him to swing and miss at the first pitch. All right, that just opens up the door for a double play, right? We've got a, we've got a feistier crowd here. This is for game two of the doubleheader. Listen, the Western Michigan fans have been vocal, and, and they actually brought quite a few of them. They're sitting down to our left on the third base side. Langenberg low and outside to start off the at-bat for Jimmy Allen. Allen's probably been their best hitter of the weekend. Agreed with that. Uh, certainly, uh, certainly today he's been... Uh, He's been a pain in the Hawkeye side. Next pitch is a strike on the outer half of the plate. It's one and one. We've got his average up to 260 now. Mm, nice one there from Ty. The slider on the low and outside corner. Allen got his hands going but didn't swing at it. It's one and two. And uh, Nick Crandall was the pitcher yesterday we saw this from Johnston. I talked to his dad before the first game, and he's here with the – just misses outside. I think he's here, actually here with the uh, with the Johnston bunch of players and, and uh, at least from kind of that same – obviously the same area. So fun to, fun to kind of meet somebody from the other team every once in a while. Sure. Langenberg ready with the 2-2. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Got him. Chased a pitch on the outer half of the plate. One down. Third early strikeout for Ty. So far, Ty looks pretty good. Obviously with the strikeout numbers, but being around the zone for the most part, I guess he, he kind of lost Sullivan there, but starts Swinehart with a strike, a swing and a miss. Yeah, just had that little bit of a little bit of a cramp there on the on the first hitter of the inning, and so hopefully that's just a little blip in the radar and goes ahead and gets things done now. Well, here's a base hit for Western Michigan. Swinehart drives it to right. It's a single in front of Wilmus, who gets it in quickly, so the runners will be at first and second for the Broncos. Don't worry about it, John. That's all right. <laughs> there, was no, there was no jinx there. 
And that's what, you know, one of the things that we've, we've seen with Ty so far, minus the, minus the outing last weekend, was, uh, you know, opponents have done a pretty nice job, uh, you know, barreling balls up and, and really not trying to do a whole lot. You know, Sam Houston didn't hit him, you know, out of the ballpark. They just kind of were able to spray it around the ballpark and, and do a really nice job of, of singling him to death. Dylan Nevar, the batter, first pitch strike to him on the outside corner. Just missing a little bit low and outside. This feels like it's one and one. This feels like six four three. This isn't even a four six three. I think this is this is six four three. You called that. Six four three. Huh. Let's see it. Chopper to Seegers, flip it over, double play. Pitch from Ty. Swing and a miss. Corkscrewed him with a slider. A good back foot pitch there again. You'll go double play, I'll go strikeout. Hmm? I wouldn't argue with that. The one two. Oh, just outside. Just off the plate. Good chase pitch. That one was screaming 6-4-3. Yeah, it was. That would have been shot right to Seegers or somewhere on the left side. The 2-2, two -two, that's low and in now. Ball three. All right, here we go, Ty. Let's bring it in. Again, it's almost like he's overthrowing that fastball again. It's kind of the tie we we saw before where... And when he was getting 93, 94, 95, it was effortless. Now he's back to 92, and it's a little bit more of a struggle. 3-2, swing and a miss. Got him. Out number two. Really good pitch there with the slider. Came back inside again. Swung right over the top of it. So much like we started the first game, Iowa's recorded five outs. Four of them have been strikeouts. See if... Ty can do a better job of cleaning up the second inning than uh, Jared was able yeah. to, though. Budig is the batter. Two down in the inning. Two on for Western Michigan. Budig is the batter. has got a little rhythm to it there. There we that's, go. That's pretty good. <laughs> Langenberg set with the 1-0. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. 1-1. One and one. Another good off-speed pitch. Change up there. The movement on that one just dropped it right down and away. And that's what, you know, the difference with Ty, you know, we were talking in game one about speed differential. Oh, man. Good pitch that there. That one looked good, but it was inside two and one. You know, when Ty's fastball dips to 90-91, when his changeup comes in at 85, there's not really enough difference then to, to be as effective as when he gets it up to 93-94. Goes with the outside corner there, fastball, two and two. Yeah, you're right. There's just not much of a difference, so it doesn't change the timing enough, right? Right. They're able to stay on it a little bit better. Even if they miss time it a little bit, they're able to, to still make connection and move it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Pitch from Langenberg. That dropped low, ball three. That was a good pitch. Tried to throw that change up again you know, with the movement, see if he could get a chase on it. Hung in there and didn't do it. See if he can finish off the at-bat. Uh, just like... Tapper foul to the left side. Count stays full. Runners will be going here, so this is a, a big pitch in the game. Iowa leading 4 nothing, and with the runners in motion, a base hit could score both of them. Yeah, if it gets into any version of a gap, they might have a way to do that. Langenberg ready, the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Got him. Foul tip into the glove. And Langenberg gets three strikeouts in the inning. Hawks hold the Broncos in the top of the second. Iowa leading 4-0. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at bulkmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. 
because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Bottom of the second inning, Iowa leading Western Michigan 4 0 in game two of the doubleheader with the Broncos. We're wrapping things up. Iowa going for the sweep of Western Michigan. We'll have a Tuesday midweek at Illinois State. First pitch of that one is scheduled for 5 p.m. over there in normal Illinois. We'll have pregame coverage on the Hawkeye Radio Network beginning at 4.30. We were talking about the break there. What uh, what we're, what we're going to do tomorrow with the unexpected day off and this morning walking in, Keaton Anthony's parents had just rolled in and you know, they drove in from Georgia. Wow. Um, and so first pitch in the dirt for a ball. They might be the most excited when excited because instead of having the game start at 1, get done at, at 4, 4.30, jump in your car and drive Oof. and get home at 4.30 tomorrow morning, they're going to be able to get home at a semi-reasonable yeah. hour tomorrow. Seegers puts down a nice bunt down the third base line. He's beating it out to first. The pitcher came off the mound, bobbled it. I think that's a single, don't you, John? Oh, 100%. And that's uh, that's a great bunt. It's a tough play for the left-hander because um, he's going to have to turn, make that throw all the way over. Um, and then, you know, we talked about the sun for fly balls in game one. Um, right now, I think if he tried, if that pitcher would have thrown a bullet to the first baseman, I'm not 100% sure he would have been able to see it. Yeah, good point. He's got sunglasses on. Huckstorf taps this foul. Huck homered his first time up in the first. Those sunglasses over there at first, that doesn't really help you as much as you'd think. In fact, it creates a glare. The, the, the sunglasses take the... Uh, take the real brightness out, but if you're looking right into the sun, it's still right into the sun. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't matter. Does yeah, I mean, <laughs> looking at the sun is looking at the sun. Doesn't matter what you try to put in front of your eyes. I mean, you, you you may protect your retinas, but that's all. That's, that's all. That's it. the only good part that's going to come of it. Seegers takes off. The 0-1 is a called strike. Throw down to second. Bounces, and so Michael is in there safely. He's in scoring position now, but Huck's down on the count 0-2. And, and Schepanik, even though he's a left-hander, you know, tall, angular guy, long arm motion. He's a good guy to steal on if you can get a good read on it. Seegers got a good jump there. Uh, steals his sixth base, sixth base of the season. 0-2 to Huckstorf. Ground ball to the left side, backhanded Ooh. by the third baseman. Long throw and a good play for out number one. What a great play there. Short hop, backhand. That's uh, that's a whole world of a handful wow. of play there. And picked it up, made it look smooth. But he's smoother than you are handling that pen over there. Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> fill out my book, and I'm going to throw my pens everywhere. All right, one out in the inning. Here's DeRiggy. Runner in scoring position is Seegers at second. Big secondary lead for Michael. Boy, I tell you what, he might take off for third one of these times. DeRiggy watches the first pitch drop low, ball one. You know, and again, it's still slow to the plate, even with the runner on second. So, And they're calling a balk on the pitcher. Chapaniak flinched. Seegers will get third, whether he was going to steal or not. Yeah, basically, st basically stole the base in a different way. All the umpires jumped, too. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, They, they all saw. Whatever, whatever he did, they all saw it. I didn't see a thing up here. 1-0 to DeRiggy. Called strike on the inside corner. It's 1-1. One one. Infield has come in now for Western Michigan. A ground ball in the infield would, uh, would test Seegers and, therefore, the Western Michigan infield if they want to try to throw him out at home. One ball, one strike, one out. Pitch to DeRiggy. Mm, right down the middle. And it's one and two. It's hard to pull your infield in and shift. Yeah. And that's kind of what they're trying to do here is they still have Dorigi shifted over toward first base. Shortstop's kind of up the middle, but. A one, two. Brennan hits it foul on the ground to the right side. But Staying if, alive. If Brennan hits that ball at the shortstop, it's not going to be really hard enough for that shortstop. Yeah, now they're moving him all the way over. Wow. Um, Makes more sense if you're going to play your infield in that way. Dorigi really doesn't hit on the ground of the left side, so I get what you're saying. The 1-2 is low and outside, ball two. 
course, if he hits a rope at that shortstop slash second baseman, it could uh, self-preservation mode might take over. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Seager stands at third. Shapaniak is ready, and the pitch. That's low and outside, ball three. Shapaniak had worked him on the inside part of the plate when he got ahead, and then he started trying to work away and uh, hasn't had any success working away. DeRiggy with another strong at bat. See if he can be rewarded. The 3-2 base hit in the right field. That'll bring home Seegers. And DeRiggy's on first. Iowa leading 5-0. The way to beat the shift is to line it over the shift. Yep. One of those top spinners from DeRiggy. He seems like unless he hits a home run or something really deep, those base hits that he has, they're all the top spinners that get over the infield and then just dive in front of the outfielders. Want another one of those, just a, just a little smooth line drive with a 107 exit velo. So oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing. Here's Keaton Anthony. First pitch to him is a backdoor breaking ball called strike. 0-1. Good pitch there from Chapaniak. Painted the outside corner. Anthony fouls off the 0-1, and oh boy, that caught the bare hand of the catcher. Budig, and he's irritated. That that can't feel good. Not, you got to keep that hand behind you. Yeah, not on a not on a day ever, and and certainly not on a day like today. But he did give uh, did give home plate um, home plate umpire Joshua Nolan the thumbs up there. So Anthony down on the count 0-2. Dorigi at first. The pitch to Anthony. That hit him. Just got a piece of something. Breaking ball. I thought, it, did it go behind him? No, it caught him just kind of under under the got armor. It, okay. And, you know, again, we talk about kind of that elbow pad's a great place to get hit. Just kind of skimmed off of him there. So good spot there. So a couple of runners on now for Iowa. They're really trying to put the finishing touches on Western Michigan early. You'd kind of like to see that and... and uh, I know selfishly we would as well. DeRiggy with a huge lead at second. First pitch to Tello. He lays off. It's a called strike. DeRiggy does a great job at second base with that secondary lead, The you know, hopping around, um, especially if nobody's close. He goes ahead and stretches out. I mean, he has a, he's a fairly giant lead at this point, and he'll, he'll hop it off even farther when he comes set. Trepaniak with the pause, the pitch. Tello sends it into deep right, carrying well. Get going, baby. It is one oh. hopping off the wall. It's down. DeRiggy is getting waved around third. The throw comes in. It's poured a second. And Tello has a deep single that drives in a run. Runners at the corners now. It's 6 nothing. He kind of had to hold up there because he couldn't be 100% sure that Anthony was going to well, that DeRiggy was going to score and that Anthony was going to be able to run in. So he, good good heads-up play by Tello to hold up. And then you kind of see the ball roll through the infield. You'd like to like to have seen him get there, but uh, safe than sorry. And I thought you were going to have to roll out, uh, roll out your call again as he put Almost. that one off the wall. I was ready for it. <laughs> I think Raider was too, but hit it to one of the hardest parts to take it out of here, even with the wind blowing out. Here's Peterson, first pitch is in the dirt low, ball one. Hawks lead 6 nothing in the bottom of the second. Runners on the corners. Otello well, hit that 377. Crushed it. So he, he got, uh, just, just needed just a little bit more oomph. 1-0 pitch to Petey. Mm, he laid off it, and I think he probably thinks he shouldn't have, but... Good fastball there, kind of upper middle part of the zone, and Petey started to, started to, to go, but just ended up kind of buckling up. 1-1 one, one is outside for a ball. Got a little bit of action again in the uh, the Western Michigan bullpen, so they're uh, might be might be nearing the end of Chapaniak's rope here. Peterson waiting for the two-one swings and misses on one on the outside corner, two and two. Snowman down in the Hawkeye bullpen is about two feet shorter than he was before. Yeah, starting the the radiant warmth of the sun, right? Is Starting to get to him, although might be able to add to him. I guess they're going to get some snow overnight, huh? That was the uh, that was the fear. <laughs> two two. Petey takes it low. Ball three. <laughs> Petey's knees buckled there. He was uh, 
I don't think he would have been surprised if he had taken the walk back to the dugout. It's close enough there. Counts full. Tello at first, Anthony at third. One down and the Hawkeyes second, leading 6 nothing. Pitch to Peterson. Ooh, hit him, and this one's going to hurt. This one's on the knee, and Peterson drops to a knee. Peterson is going to be really Man. happy to see Western Michigan leave town. Man, another one. Was he hit? He was hit earlier, wasn't he? That's the that's, second one of the... That's four today. Four yeah. today. <laughs> At least that one missed the helmet. Oh. Yeah, two off the helmet today. I can't remember the other one. This one was in on the leg. Yeah, so. Man, oh, man. Whatever. I know Petey hit a home run yesterday, but he get, didn't. I didn't think he tossed a bat or anything to irritate anybody. Get the ice so. bath ready, Jake. Here's Honar. Wild pitch. Gets to the backstop. Here comes Keaton Anthony. He'll score 7 nothing. Budic blew a tire kind of chasing he, that. He stepped on the logo and kind of slipped. lost his footing there. And. You know, that'll come into play here a little bit more as the sun goes down, um, starts to get a little cooler here again. You know, they did a great job moving the snow off the field, but, you know, we've seen some of these balls skip. It's still wet. Yeah. And so freeze that top layer a little bit. After the wild pitch, runners on second and third. Honar lifts this deep to left, carrying well, but the left fielder is camped under it. He's got it. Out number two, Tello will tag and score. Hawks lead 8-0. Sack fly, Sam Honar. Really gave that one a charge, but just, uh, you know, that, that area of the ballpark, it's not getting any help at all. You know, just the wind kind of knocks it down, especially left-hander slicing it into that wind a little bit. Uh, it's going to kind of force the ball down generally. Uh, so good drive out there, and but enough to drive in a run. Bottom of the second, Iowa leading 8 nothing. Peterson at second. Here's Cade Moss. First pitch to him. Low portion of the plate called a strike. Hawks have hooked up four runs in both the first two innings. They're on their way to making that statement and maybe run ruling the Broncos. We still have to get to the seventh, though. Hawks up by eight. The other side of this, though, from a from a Hawkeye perspective, is you know you could get some guys some at bats. You know, if you get far enough ahead, get some guys some at bats that don't get a ton of at bats. Sure. Good, good breaking ball there for a strike. Yeah, it's one and two. And I was thinking about that earlier when I saw Cade Moss getting the start. If this game were to go to nine, I I can't imagine he'd catch all nine, would he? You wouldn't think so. Yeah. One two to Moss. That's high ball two. And even better would be, you know, you have him catch five, and and you know you, you've got you've got the run rule intact, so you know you know you're pretty safe there. Uh, not that there's a huge drop off to to any of the other guys, right. but baseball's um, two two. Moss swings, misses. It's in the dirt. The catcher has to throw it down to first, and it is an accurate throw to get the third out of the inning. Hawks lead 8 nothing through 2 in Dwayne Banks in Iowa City. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth in Iowa City. Hawks lead 8-0. We get to the top of the third. All right, Ty Langenberg, this will be a challenging inning. You're in the dugout for quite a while there. Yeah, he's had he's had some pretty big breaks between his his two pitching adventures here. So, um, see if he comes out here in the the third. He's thrown 42 pitches already, so you kind of want to see um, a little cleaner, a little quicker inning. Um, but you know, just to finish the thought we had it going in the bottom of the inning there, 
um, you know, baseball's, you know, there is no re-entry in baseball. So, you know, when you take a, you have to be sure of what you're doing because when you take a player out, you aren't sneaking them back in later. And That's so, it. So whether it's hitting, um, whether it's fielding, you got to make sure that uh, you've got covered what you want covered. Here's a bunt down the third base line. Let it go, Raider. Let it go. It's still rolling towards the bag. Raider will watch it. It is now foul. Wow, that was – they really drugged that out. Tello let it go, 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 and then grabbed it foul. And now the head coach is out. He was tossed from the first game, and we were misinformed. He, he gets to hang around, so he's back out of the dugout now. That ball was foul. I mean, it, it hung on the line a long, long time. But Tello waited to grab it until it got foul. And I'm, so I'm not really so sure. Now there's a discussion going on. I don't know what where it's foul or it's not. You think it crossed Just, the line or you don't. Right. But you're sitting in the you're sitting in the dugout with no view of it versus two umpires looking right straight down and both lines. To be fair, I will say from the Western Michigan standpoint, the neither umpire Definitively they, called, they, yeah. and they didn't. They didn't stop the play. Tello was the first one to grab it. He he just grabbed it before the umpires made any move, and then the umpires said foul ball. Well, but but that's what that's the way it works. They can't call a foul ball until it's touched because that ball could that's hit true. something and ricochet back it's in. This is in front of the bag. You're right. That's why Tello grabs it quickly once it got fouls because then that that's what causes the foul ball, especially on a ball a ball that isn't going to get past the base. Here's one lifted into center. Seegers goes back, can't quite make the play on it. And so Me is on with a single. Just off the end of the bat, he capped it. Yeah, little, Seegers gave it a good, good effort out there into shallow center. Yeah, a little pool cue out there and bring the top of the order up. And again, it's kind of been Ty's bad luck there of a head 0-2 and then can't finish off the at-bat. Starts off Kitchen with an outside breaking ball. Ball one. Hawks up 8 nothing in the top of the third. Langenberg ready with the 1-0. Here it comes. There's a bun attempt that's hit foul. And now it's 1-1. One and one. Kitchen struck out in the first. Ty was cruising right along there early. 1-1 one, one slapped foul to the left side. He's had some traffic really. Had some traffic in both innings, but actually the first inning was smooth. The second inning had a little bit of issue. And see if... Uh, Another ground ball this time to the right side. Jack Whitlock's got shag duty today. He's the uh, he's the ball boy today and uh, <laughs> hustling down now to get the ball there in uh, short right. That's probably not the best job. That that kind of lets you know you're probably not playing in this one. I mean, we saw him yesterday, but a day off. One two popped up left side. This will get into the outfield. Peterson drifting towards the line. He's got it for the first out of the inning. No tang from the runner at first. Yeah, Jack. Jack knows. Uh, Jack knows there's not going to be a call to say, "Hey, I need you to come yeah. get a couple outs." And I was giving him a hard time this morning. I'm like, "Man, you were too efficient. You just threw what two, three pitches to get uh, to get two outs and get out of them. Get out of the soup yesterday." Here's Harrison, Morrison rather, as this one skied foul to the left side, out of play. So far, so good from Ty, just giving up a couple of hits. Hit a batter, but he's got five strikeouts. The 0-1 on its way home. That's low and away for a ball. 
you know, other than the, he ended up hitting the batter on the 3-1 count. So, uh, you know, he's been been around the strike zone through through most of the hitters. 1-1. One, one. This one's drilled to left and trouble. Peterson giving chase. It's to the wall. Peterson picks it up, throws it in. They throw on the stop sign, throw to third. No, it comes home. And the runners are at second and third. Seegers cut that ball off and then threw a nice ball home, but the runner didn't come home. I think maybe if he would have thrown that to third, could have had him out. Had a chance there as the, the me rounded hard, and uh, coach threw up a late stop sign for him, and he jammed on the brakes. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a tough play cutting it off. Your your brain is is you know where you're supposed to throw it. You're not going to throw behind the runner very often. Morrison with the double. Here's Doyle. I believe that's Morrison's first hit of the weekend. Mm. So the Hawks have done a really nice job on the guy that came in hitting 400. Langenberg shifting to the windup. The pitch, outside corner, called strike, and it's one and one. You know, you're going to run into these, these bouts. This one's in the air to right. Wilmus giving chase. He's back towards the track, towards the wall, and it's off the wall. One run is in. They're going to wave home another. Wilmus just picks up the ball now, throws it into second. It gets by Seegers, but Tello's there to back it up in a couple of runs for Western Michigan. 8-2, top of the third. You know, we've seen the ball really carry out that direction. That's the first time Western Michigan's been able to do it, but back-to-back -back extra base hits now for, for the Broncos. And draw Coach McGrath out of the dugout. Well, more work to do. That's really hasn't been anything wrong with Ty. They're just hitting him now. And, and that's one of the stats that Ty has is his opponent batting average is relatively high, and it's it's higher than what he'd like for it to be. You know, he came into the game with it at 315. They've got four hits right now, and um, actually probably pushing that number right now. Yeah, hitting 364 right now, four hits and 11 at bats, uh, and a couple extra base hits. So that's been something that ties done a pretty decent job of not giving up a ton of extra base hits. Uh, seeing that uh, here so far, I guess as I say that, he has given up 11 extra base hits, eight doubles so far, 10 now on the season uh, that he's allowed. And so, you know, you're going to face some adversity. You're, you're rarely going to go through. Uh, any start, whether it's Friday or Sunday or the second game of a Saturday doubleheader. It's a two RBI double for Doyle to get Western Michigan on the board. Hawks still leading 8-2. I mean, I think the part to me that's probably a little bit uh, concerning is not the right word, but that the fastball's been good pitch there. It's a swing and a miss. The fastball's just been 90-91-92 today. Yeah. It, it hasn't been that same that same zip that we had seen uh, in the relief appearances, the the same that would would come out of the bullpen. I just you, you wonder what what that is. I don't know if it's a an adrenaline rush to hey spur of the moment I'm in or or what it might be. Two balls and a strike to Sullivan. Maybe that's the coach's trick. They don't tell him he's starting yeah. until 20 minutes before. Mm, really had him fooled there. On the slider, two balls, two strikes. Let's go get him, Ty. Langenberg looks in for the sign from Moss. He's got it. This one is hit in the air to left. Peterson goes back a couple of steps and then grabs it with the glove. Two down. Another ball, though, hit hard. It yeah, just happened to, be, happened to be right at right at PD, which was uh, beneficial from the Hawkeye side of the fence. But, uh, you know, after, after really making him look uh, a little silly on a couple swings, he was able to send that one out with triple-digit exit speed. Jimmy Allen is the batter. First pitch from Langenberg, right down central, 0-1. Yeah, that's a good that's a good note, John. And they have three hits in the inning, a couple of doubles, and, and they've been clobbered pretty well. Oh one is just inside for a ball. One and one. Two down in the inning. Two runs across for Western Michigan. Hawks lead eight to two. Yeah, that ball was an out with a 100-mile-an-hour exit below. Mm -hmm. 93 on the floater. 
Misses high there now. Down in the count, another 90. A couple of not so good ones, but yeah, they've been able to get the barrel on it here in the third inning on tie. Two balls and a strike. The pitch, nice breaking ball. Called strike outside corner, two and two. Got a chance to limit the damage here, Ty. Again, we're up 65 pitches. This will be the 65th pitch here through through just three innings. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Overwhelmed him with the fastball there and got him for the third out of the inning. The Broncos get a couple of runs. Hawks lead 8-2. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. Lunch is ready. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe and a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> Find an agent at shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Hawks had their lead cut into him just a little bit, eight to two. Iowa out in front in the bottom of the third now. And it'll be nine one two due up for the Hawks. Wilma Seegers and Huckstorf. And trying to get a look at the pitcher here. New pitcher for Western Michigan is Ryan Watt, a right-handed pitcher, 6'2", 230 from South Bend, Indiana. Eighth appearance on the season. He's 0-2, nine ERAs, thrown six innings, given up nine hits, six runs. They've all been earned, three walks, three strikeouts, six extra base hits of his nine hits. Good news for Hawkeye hitters. He's only hit one guy. <laughs> Just informed by... Uh, Sports Information Director for Baseball, Sam, let us know that if PD gets hit one more time today, that would be the school record. In a, oh, in a game? In a day? In a, in a game? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll have to follow up with Sam, I guess, but... I would assume three in a game. Three in a, a game record. should be a record. My goodness. One guy. Here's Wilmus to lead off the Hawkeye third. Hawks up six. First pitch to Ben is outside. Watt misfires. Watt's a stockier right-handed pitcher. Operating out of the stretch. The pitch to Wilmus. There it is. Called strike inside corner one and one. Kind of hoping Iowa's going to get all the way through and bat around both times uh, in the first two innings. I wonder if that'd be some sort of record. The 1-1, one, one, Wilmus laying off, 2-1. and one. Wilmus cranks this down the left field line. It is down for a base hit. Left fielder will cut it off. Wilmus rounds first hard, and a hard hit single for Wilmus to lead off the Hawkeye third. Good job, Ben. Ben's had himself a nice day. Had uh, a couple hits in the first uh, the first game. Now he's uh, his first one here in game two. He's had a nice weekend. He's really coming on, especially with. Uh, seeing more time in, in right field due to the unfortunate injury of uh, Chase Mosley. You're worried about what would happen. Mosley was just kind of starting to find it, and so you're worried when he had to go to the bench. First pitch to Seegers is up and in, ball one. If Iowa would be able to just kind of plug and play, and so far Wilmus has done a really nice job taking that position. And 
and we've talked about it. That's how you're going to make it yours. Yeah. When you get a chance, hit. This pitch is in the dirt. Catcher will knock it down, but he won't hustle too hard after it. And Wilmus took right off, heads for second. He's there safely. Yeah, that was an interesting. Uh, must have. That was a business decision that I'm not going to get him, so I'm just going to go grab it at my leisure. Yeah. Counts two and zero to Seegers. Runner at second is Wilmus. The pitch. That's high. Ball three. Yeah, Watt's going to be in the low 80s for the most part with the fastball. He's kind of a he's kind of a give you one you can hit or it's not really going to be in the zone. He's not one of those guys that's going to nibble at the edges. 3-0 catching the inside corner for a strike. The pitch, Ooh. Seegers sends it right back up the middle. Wilmus will take off for third, and a base hit for Michael. Wow, that one had us flinching up here because it went right back to the pitcher, and if he doesn't move his head to the right a couple inches, he takes that one right off the forehead. My goodness, that was close. Yeah, Seegers did a, Seegers did a really good job. That was, that was almost literally hitting it right back to where it came right. from as, as he gave it right there. And then the other piece of that play was the second baseman was late um, leaving the bag. He was holding Wilmus on second. And actually by being late, it almost left him in a position to make that catch. So Wilmus had to stop, wait to see if he was going to have to hustle back and instead was able to just move to third then. Huxdorf's turn, squares to bunt, puts it down the third baseline. Huxdorf digging for first. He is safe at first. Bases loaded for the Hawks. Nobody out. How about that bunt? We've seen just about everything for the Hawks today, and just great bunts to kind of put the cherry on top of things. Really well done there from Huxdorf. I'd like to talk to Coach Heller uh, or maybe even Ben about what the read was there because obviously as good a bunt as that was, that should have probably been the safety squeeze or a, a suicide squeeze also. Mm -hmm. But Ben just didn't look like he got a good read on it at third. And then when you don't get a good read, do the smart thing. Scrap it. Stay put. Yep. No, nobody out. You got a chance to score later. Brennan Derigi, the batter, counts 0-1 to him. The pitch on the ground. Foul down the first base side. Boy, get that door open, create a little wind tunnel. Just starts whistling Tough. through here. Yeah. Riggy's been in this spot a couple times. And see if he can. On the ground to the left side, oh. past the third baseman. He went opposite field on the ground. One run is in. Here comes Seegers for the second run. He is safe. Throw gets cut off at third, a two RBI single. Brennan DeRiggy, Hawks lead 10 2. Good piece of hitting there. And again, they're just finding a way to beat the shift. Doyle, who's made some really good plays at third base, had a chance to make another highlight play. Um, might not even have been the hardest one that he made. That one, that one looked gettable, um, but was able to sneak <laughs> under his glove and roll into left field. He, he's kind of on an island over there at third when Dorigi's up, isn't he? Well, and that's the thing, too. When you do that shift, your, your third baseman is not really in a normal fielding position either. Yeah. Um, and so he, he's got to do something a little bit uh, unusual or out of character. Anthony's the batter. Runners on first and second. The pitch lines it foul to the right side. Keaton doesn't have an official plate appearance in game two, but he scored two runs. Walk and a hit by pitch. The Hawkeye cycling through the lineup for the third time yeah. here in the bottom of the third inning. Hawks up 10-2. Anthony checks swing, got a piece of it, and fouled it off. He's a little bit irritated. He's down in the count now, 1-2. and two. Still nobody out in the inning. Runners on first and second. Checking back to the home plate umpire, asking if it was a strike. Mm -hmm. Find out how bitter he needed to be. Yeah. Protect that outside corner, Keaton. Here comes the 1-2. That's low and away. Good read by... 
Huxdorf out at second to not take off for third. Catcher blocked that one nicely. Budig talked about it more yesterday. The first game, uh, Western Michigan's pitchers were a little closer to the zone, but Budig again starting to get a workout. Yeah. Anthony patiently waiting. The pitch from Watt. On the ground to the left side. Shortstop bobbles it, booted it. It's got no play. Nowhere to go. That'll be an E6. Boy, that's uh, that's tough. Again, a team that turns a lot of double plays. You really think that's, with, with Keaton running, you think that's maybe a 6-4-3 a double play. Almost felt like we've seen him go to third a couple times in that. And almost like he wanted to jump switch his feet instead of just taking the two outs. Yeah. Inning continues with still no outs. Bases loaded for Raider Tello. Raider got a hold of one to the right center gap, but it ended up just being a single. His last time up. First pitch to Raider. Swing and a miss. Foul tip. Went after one on the outside corner. That was a good cut right there. Yeah, Raider two for two in the nightcap here with three RBIs already. Scored a run. The 0 1. That's low and away. Ball one. He finds extra bases here. Could be one of those bases clearing opportunities. Tello hits this in the air, deep to right, carrying well towards the line, and oh. just foul. Stayed in the ballpark, but landed in foul territory. It'll be one and two. All of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm thinking cycle. I was trying to think sure, yeah, let's single see. And double, so yeah, double and single. That slices into the corner. That's the triple. That's the hard one, isn't it? You'd think so. <clears throat> Iowa's had the bases loaded a few times today. Seegers and Honar have hit doubles to bring them all in at some point. The 1 2, Tello pops this one up. Get out of play. Over towards foul territory. First baseman's over there, and it is out of play. That was going to be a sack fly if he made that catch rolling away from mm -hmm. the infield. Iowa up by eight in the bottom of the third. Nobody out. The one-two pitch to Tello. Taps it foul. Bases remain loaded. Peterson's on deck. <laughs> I was looking at the game notes just trying to find uh, the hit-by-pitch thing. And just stumbled across the the Hawkeyes are three and zero when tied after eight innings. Really, it's a pretty impressive stat. Well, let's try to think about what what games those are. Tied after eight. Well, you won the Indiana State game with the grand slam in the eleventh. Yep, that should have been really easy to remember. I just feel like we haven't had that many games that have come down to the very very end yeah, that like were that. That tight. One two pitch to Tello. Base hit off the left, off the third baseman's glove. One run is in. Here comes Derigi. It's getting away from everybody. Still rolling down into left field. And Tello's got another double that scores two. Surely that's a base hit. Yeah, that was sharply hit. I can't imagine that can't imagine that one will will go for an error. Couple more runs are across. Hawks now lead by ten. Bottom three. Uh, Keaton Anthony's home run in the top of the ninth against Kansas State. Was the other one of the Texas Tech game? Did that ever get tied? That and Texas, one we won? Texas Tech was scored three in the top of the ninth, gave up two in the bottom. So, yeah, those three. All right, here's Peterson. Iowa up 12-2. Runners on second and third. Nobody out. Peterson swings and fouls off the first pitch. Petey's goal has got to be to swing as fast as he can so they don't hit him again. Yeah. Get it in play. There's a lot on the line here. i, I got to think about what that stat is. I would think four, uh, four, three, four. Three to tie, I think, is what Sam told me. This one's fouled out of play to the right side. 0-2. Oh yeah, I would think. Three's the tie. Four would win it. <laughs> right? That's got to be. Three hit by pitches in one game would oh, tie yeah. the school record. In one game, yes, correct. I would guess that's accurate. Yeah. 
Infield in for Western Michigan, the 0-2. Peterson Ooh. drills it deep to left. Get going. It is towards the line. It's down in fair territory. Anthony will score. Tello's got to stay at third. Peterson's at second with a double. It hung up in the air, and it landed right in between the left fielder and the foul line. He didn't exactly crush that one, but, boy, he, he ended up placing it exceptionally well. Um, Otello had to hold up. He was going to tag and see what happened. We'll get a uh, we'll get a mound visit. We might have might have seen enough of Watt here. Hawks up 13 to two in the bottom of the third. Runners on second and third. Still nobody out in the inning. Nick Day. Nick Day was hit by three pitches on April 25th, 2014, against San Diego or South Dakota State. And how many was it again? He got hit by three pitches. Three pitches. So, Petey would be tied. I don't. I'm not cheering for that. <laughs> yeah, there's no Our way. Listeners probably think we're cheering. There's no way that. I'm rooting for it. It's it's more more of observational purposes uh, only. That's what those stats are there for to inform, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> All right, Hawks are up 13 to two in the bottom of the third. A pitching change for Western Michigan. We'll give you the name and the stats following this pitching change break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. New pitcher into the game for Western Michigan. They'll go with Josh Swinehart. Josh is on for his sixth appearance of the season. 491 ERA. He's thrown three and two-thirds innings, giving up six hits, a couple runs, three walks, four strikeouts. Opponents hitting 353 off of him. And if the name sounds familiar, probably should. He's been the DH all weekend. Yeah, so he's multiple-way player and pitch now he's tall he's it might be the tallest pitcher that the hawks have seen this weekend well, he's got a good fastball he's going to bring it up there again upper 80s right around 90 uh, sliders quite a bit slower hawkeye scouting report is really just to hunt that fastball and, and make him throw the slider for a strike so anything that's got spin on it you'll see hawkeye hitters probably take infield is in honar rips this to right but right to the right fielder Tagging and scoring is Raider Tello. Hawks lead 14 to two. Another sack fly for Sam Honar. Boy, Honar just demolished that ball. 105 ex exit velo. Um, just didn't really get any lift on it, but it'll go for a sack fly. It's actually his second of the game. Since we're tracking, since we're tracking these events, Travis Sweet had. Three sack flies. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Back in we're, we're on the sack fly watch. Yep, sack fly watch for, for Honar now. In 2007 against North Dakota State, he had three. 2007, 16 years ago. I don't feel like it should be that long ago. Two balls, no strikes to Moss. You believe that? 2007? Dude, dude, 16 I'm, I'm, years. Way, I'm way older than you are. You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> oh, the 2-0 to Moss. Tap to the left side and fair ball. Thrown over by the third baseman. Good scoop at first. Two down. Sullivan's made a couple of uh, oles. Yes. And come up with them, and they've been good scoops. And yesterday we were working him on pop up practice, and he did a good job with those. And Uh, 
That's right. I forgot about that yesterday. We hit a million balls down that first baseline. Yeah, there was a there was a pretty big blanket there that caught about everything as that fastball misses just up high. Hawks have batted around now because Wilmus led things off. Runner at second is Peterson. Counts one and one to Wilmus. Hawks up 14-2. The 1-1, Wilmus on the ground to the left side, off the glove uh -oh. of a diving shortstop. Peterson's going to round third, and he will score. 15-2, Ben Wilmus knocks in another one. Second hit of the day, first RBI in this game for Ben. Really, really had a good good day, good weekend for, for Wilmer. Scored that as a hit, correct? Yeah, had to have. Yeah. Went off the glove of the shortstop, but he had a long way to go. Yeah, the only thing he could have done if he catches it is save the run from scoring. He's not going to throw Wilmus out running away toward the uh, toward the left field bullpen. Top of the order to Seegers again. First pitch to him, low and outside. Seegers fourth at bat in the third inning. One zero pitch to Seegers outside corner called strike one and one. And Michael has scored three runs as well. So not only has he been there, led off, and but he's uh, been charted the track and yeah. ran all the way around. <laughs> the one one in the air deep to center, but the center fielder will move over towards right center and catch it on the run for the third out of the inning. A big number for the Hawks in the third. 15-2, to two. Hawks out in front. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the fourth inning, Hawks lead 15 to two over Western Michigan. New catcher into the game is Ben Tallman, so he'll come in and catch Ty Langenberg for another inning of work. Just looking at the stats already, Western Michigan pitchers throwing 106 pitches. Wow. All right, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Well, we have touched on it almost every inning after the first. You know, you, you kind of wonder about Ty staying warm, right? Yeah, and this was a uh, uh, this was an even bigger break than uh, what he'd had prior to this. So I'm sure he was doing something there. You know, like walked back into the tunnel, obviously the heated benches. Misses low and away on the very first one. Hawkeyes do have somebody warming up in the bullpen down there in right. 1-0 pitch from Langenberg. Swing and a miss. This is Swinehart who came in to pitch. A tie at 67 pitches now. Um, you could have more, but swing and a miss there. You really don't need it is kind of the thing now. So, you know, maybe get him through, get him through the fourth inning clean, 
if it gets up to 75 or 80, that's probably enough on a cold day with, with long layoffs between his, his uh, innings. Langenberg's 1-2, swing and a miss. Got him to chase that one in the opposite <laughs> batter's box, and one down. Showed no real effort to go ahead and run down the first base either. He's just kind of looked at it and went back to the dugout. Tallman still put the tag on him anyways. <laughs> right fielder Nevar is up. First pitch from Langenberg on the ground to the right side. DeRiggy runs forward to get it, and he'll toss it to a covering tie for out number two. Langenberg should certainly be pitching with confidence, a 13-run lead to work with, and then uh, just, you know, you, you kind of wonder about where Western Michigan's at uh, in, in finishing up this game, right? Yeah, even if you go ahead and throw a couple of BPs here, you're okay. So pinch hitter here in Campos. Probably, uh, Buda could probably use the break at this point. First pitch to Campos went around on a pitch outside of the zone. Ty starts ahead, 0 and 1. This one's another slider outside corner, 0 and 2. Hawks looking for a shutdown inning right here. Is seven actually a crooked number? I think it is. You don't think so? Mm, here's one lifted into left center. Seegers goes back, can't make the play. And it's a base hit for Campos when he was down in the count. 0-2, keeps the inning alive. It feels like two feels like two straight lines to me. <sighs> Unless you kind of write it with a flourish. Well, okay, I tell you what. How do you how do you write your sevens? Because I draw a line through mine. It, okay, it's still all straight lines. We almost made it through, John. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch strike to Grady Me. It's you got me. It's fifteen to two ah, in the you second got game of a double header. <laughs> I was about to be so proud of us, John. We didn't buckle, we didn't fold. <laughs> and now you might have got the wheels turning. Well, you know me better than that anyway. I, <laughs> I know. I got no chance of playing straight guy for six <laughs> oh, hours. It's man. just not in my uh, not in my wheelhouse as we swings and me swings <laughs> and misses there. Ties up on him 0-2, and the pitch. That's outside for a ball, 1-2. and two. I mean, if you start thinking about this as a seven-inning game. Right, I think. Um, you know, four might be enough. Now you can go throw a couple of guys, you know, try to get five, six, seven maybe. Off the end of the bat, over towards the dugout. Western Michigan, it's one and two. It still is. Yeah, Christofferson, you got to think that he'll probably get something today. You, don't you want you him to get. You want him to get at least an inning. Um, you, know, you can almost treat this like a midweek game at this point. The one two, that's low for a ball. You know, Ty's been. You know, again, the the big difference today to me for Ty has been just that that lack of high end velocity. You know, sixty seven percent strikes. So he's really done a good job pounding the strike zone. Um, just giving up five hits and corkscrews him into the dirt on the one two slider that was inside that'll do it for the top of the fourth we hold him with nothing hawks lead 15 2 back after this this is hawkeye baseball from learfield when you're in the eastern iowa area be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the iowa hawkeyes the hotel at kirkwood center iowa's premier luxury hotel the jill armstrong team with skogman realty the area's premier realtor and options exteriors your preferred local roofing and exterior company handling all of your exterior needs from roofing siding windows and gutters they've got you covered providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims call 319-343-6376 Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at uihc.org. Bottom of the fourth, Hawks lead 15-2. to two. Use a couple more runs. Uh, 
in the inning to try to solidify this one. We'll see Blake Guerin up first, uh, up at some point in this inning as he's in the on-deck circle, probably coming in for Brennan DeRiggy at first base. And but Huxdorf will lead things off. And again, that's the that's you know, that's the nice part about this. You know, you can reward some guys that, that maybe haven't seen a ton of playing time. Um, but you know, now you you've built a you built a relatively comfortable lead. Hopefully it's still comfortable for the, the ten run rule as well. And um, but yeah, you'll have time to get some guys some some at bats and some some time out in the field. Huxdorf leads off with a strike. Outside corner. A one pitch. Kyle waits for it, swings at it late, and shoots it over to the right side. 0 and 2. Good breaking ball there. And Kyle hung with it and just, uh, just fouled it off and kind of protected the area. The nothing and two pitch to Huxdorf is low and in for a ball. Garen is on deck. I was having some fun looking through the last times, and of course Kyle's Kyle's name's on there. The last time a Hawkeye hit uh, had six hits in a game was he set the Big Ten record sure. last year with six hits and 12 RBIs in that game. I'll remember that one against Indiana, right? Mm-hmm. 30 to 16. Ooh. It wasn't so bad being here for a few hours that day. It was warm. Yeah. The ball was flying out to left. We're going to have one of those eventually, aren't we? Sooner. 2-2 two -two to Huck is low, is rather outside. Ball three counts now full. Sun starting to set in Iowa City. When we got here, it was directly over our head. Now the full count pitch to Huckstorf outside. Ball four, and so he'll walk down to first. After being down in the count, 0-2. Earns the walk, and now we'll see Blake Garrett. Seegers actually tied the uh, tied the school record for five walks in that game because that was the last time a Hawkeye walked five times. I think they'll rewrite any of those this year. Boy, those were from the, from that game. I can't see. No, that was that was that was so special with with what Huck did. Uh, well, the whole team did. Uh, you know, down thirteen to two. Garen takes a first pitch outside, ball one. Yeah, the game was 13-2. to two and Right away, right? Yeah. It, Cam Bauman came in for, for Adam Major, who didn't have, you know, had his worst start, only bad start really of the year. 1-0 um, is belted high to left, over towards foul territory, and it is caught in foul territory. That one looked like it was definitely getting out of play, and I think the wind brought it back in. I do, too, and, and also then knocked it back down because um, I thought that ball had more carry to it. Uh, but, you know, I was down 13-2. to two. Cam Bauman had given up the home run uh, in the third inning where um, the Indiana guy basically dented a window in Carver. Mm. And to end that inning, Kyle Huxdorf made a diving play um, in center field, or it would have been worse. And Hawkeyes come back in the bottom of that inning, score a bunch of runs, you know, enough to all of a sudden make it interesting. Um, and then just the next inning piled on some more, and all of a sudden it was it was a lot more fun to be a Hawkeye fan that day. Anthony's the batter, counts one and one to him with one out runner on first. I just don't know how a game like that happens. For where both teams, it happens to them, right? Yeah, I mean, 46 total runs. And <laughs> 1-1 one, one to Anthony, hits him between the shoulder blades. That's the second or third time for him today, too. Mm. And most of his, I think it's the third time for him. The once was between the no. shoulder blades and once was off the elbow pad. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the second one of the game for him, so. All right, we got him on the watch. Then. Yeah, put him on the list. Peterson's on the list of <laughs> who to watch to tie the record. Getting hit by pitches. Well, and none of them are going to get a break. It is Coy Sarsfield will pinch run for Keaton, and you've got Braden Frazier on deck. Mm. So our, our uh, shut down the watch, guys. Yeah, my, <laughs> my <laughs> off duty. I can put away the last time sheet from the media guide. Iowa up 15-2 in the bottom of the fourth. 
Couple runners on with one out. Here's Tello. First pitch to Raiders. Low and outside. Backhanded by the catcher. Prevent it from going to the backstop. The 1-0. Raider hits this down the line and right, but it's going to get foul. He hit that a ton. Got out of the stadium, but just foul. Tello's finding his opposite field power. He has rifled a couple balls today. Well, particularly this game, as he's three for three with a couple doubles. One ball, one strike. The pitch to Tello. That's low. Ball two. On, on the last time sheet in the media guide, it's the last time somebody had six or more RBIs. And obviously, Huckstorf at 12 kind of, when you set the Big Ten record, you kind of dwarf all that. But yeah. Raider does have five, and at least an opportunity to, to you know, runner in scoring position there, a chance to, chance to get his name uh, on that sheet. You almost have to have uh, kind of like a second highest because 12 is going to be really hard to ever get to, right? Well, well it's just this sheet is just the last time. So, oh, you're on the last time now. Here's a base hit to right. Ooh. Not a great jump by Huxdorf at second, so he's going to have to stay at third base. We had a chance to put him on there. Yeah. Huck held up on the on the line drive, you know, not knowing if it was going to get all the way through or not. But Raider will take four for four any day also. Bases loaded again for the Hawkeyes, this time in the bottom of the fourth. Got Braden Frazier up. You got Gable Mitchell on deck. Frazier entering in the fourth. First pitch to him is high for a ball. Braden started the season hot. Averages down to 233 now, though. Does have a home run. See if he can connect on one here. The 1-0 pitch, breaking ball, high strike, one and one. His was in Round Rock, right? Right. One one base hit into left center field. That's down. Huxdorf scores. Here comes Sarsfield around third. Tello stops at third. And there is an RBI, a two RBI double. Braden Frazier. Yeah, that'll probably be a single, and then the took second. That ball all of a sudden bounced away from the center fielder yeah. and ended up left fielder tracked it down. So I guess we'll we'll add an error to that as uh, you know, we talked about this early on about Hawkeyes trying to jump on and see if they could make the Broncos lose interest. And although they gave him the double and the two RBIs, but I think there's a there's a lack of interest going on in the field right now. Yeah, 17 to two, bottom of the fourth. Here's Gable Mitchell. He'll get a crack at it. Batting for Sam Honar. First pitch to Mitchell. He's swinging at it. Missed it. Fouled it off to the left side. Yeah, the Honar watch for sacrifice flies goes away, and he would have mm. would have had a chance, too. Had the runner at third. Yeah. Less than two outs. Here's the 0-1 to Mitchell. That's low, but called a strike. It's 0-2. You know, Coach Bluter's leaving Caitlin Clark in there trying to get triple doubles, and Coach yeah. Heller's taking his guy out when he's got a chance for three sack flies. There might be a difference there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the 0-2 to Mitchell. That's outside for a ball. Really like to see Gable, though, you know, <laughs> kind of eliminating the joking part of all this. Yeah, this is a good chance for Gable to try to kind of find that batting stroke. You know, he's still working a little bit on the offensive side of the game. Yeah. Drives the 1-2 into the gap in right center. It's down and getting to the wall. One run is in. Here comes another. There it is, Gable Mitchell. How about that for the young Hawkeye? I, yes. I am taking full credit for you that. You should. Gable Mitchell drove that ball into right center field. Good piece of hitting there as he was behind in the count, but got after it. First time I've really seen him have a chance to get out, stretch his legs, and run, and he can that's move. What, that's what we're most excited about, right, is the fact that he can scoot 19-2 in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, so that'll go. Gable has a double already, so that's his third hit of his Hawkeye career. 
Now it's Ben Tallman's turn. First pitch to him is outside for a ball. And kind of same way for Ben. Now you want him to want him to find some find some rhythm on the hitting side, and you know in case something happens to Cade or or just to be a good backup to Cade right now. Swing and a miss on the 1-0. You know we talked about that with Ben Wilmus, you know trying to take the right field position. You know you want him you want to know that. If Honar's not playing second base and Gable comes in, that you've got a, a viable offensive option. Same thing in the catcher spot. Mm, inside corner one and two. I, I, I've been thinking about it the past couple of games. You know, almost every position there is a there is a backup or somebody that would come in for a for a starter. We're set in the outfield. We're set at catcher. Uh, we're, I think we're set in the middle infield. But what about at third? One two pitch to Tallman's tapped foul. That's got to be, you know, Gable Mitchell in at second, then Honar goes over to third or something like that, right? Probably vice versa. Okay. I think you'd probably see Gable over at third. I think just because with as good of glove as he is defensively, he's probably the most versatile to be able to, mm -hmm. to flip around a little bit. Because Tello's played in every game and played the whole time. One two to Tallman is low and outside. I'll try to throw behind the runner, and they throw it into center field at second. So Mitchell will get to third as he had a great lead, and he's getting some sliding practice in. And again, the the last 10 seconds there just epitomizes <laughs> the player that he is. I mean, it, it's full hustle. You know, it, it doesn't matter that it's 19-2. to two. It's He's on a baseball right. field, and it means you go hard and you play. And that's what, it's what Hawk fans are going to love about him as a player over the next few years. Tallman swings and misses at the 2-2. Two -two. So he's down on strikes, and it'll be up to Ben Wilmus to bring in Mitchell. Well, still in the bottom of the fourth. Iowa up 19 to two. Hawks have 19 runs on 15 hits. Keaton Anthony down in the bullpen. Wilmus lays off a pitch outside. Ball one. Anthony. You wonder if he comes in. Now it's it's probably going to be that maybe for an inning or two and then well, if you're going to do it you're going to have to because mm -hmm. you brought in one zero fouled back to the pad you, oh that's right you brought in Sarsfield to run for him so <laughs> you can you can leave him in the game now basically as you put Sarsfield as the DH and you put Keaton in as a pitcher and so you're okay there but if you don't do it now then Keaton's not going to be able to pitch so you kind of have to you almost have to make the move at this point. Wilmus lays off a slider outside, two and one. You know, ben, two for three in the second game here. Uh, when you're talking about it, uh, you know, as you look through the starting lineups, you know, he was the 273, so he's raised his average here. Outside corner called a strike. That's a tough one there, two and two. You know, and keeps pushing that on base percentage up higher over 500. So really nice job there. You know, kind of laying, laying quick claim to right field while Chase, yeah. is, Chase is out. 2-2 two, two to Wilmus. Off the end of the bat, foul to the right side. <clears throat> Scorebook filling up on the right side quite a bit. Yeah, you're running out of slashes right now. Yep. <laughs> a little bit of a pause, ready with the... 2-2 two, two to Wilmus. It's low and in, ball three. Top of the order, Michael Seegers is in the on-deck circle. A lot of arrows and points and C over there. For... Oh, yes, a lot of that <laughs> and a lot of red, uh, uh, rather blue, uh, filled in circles. The 3-2 to Wilmus. That's outside, ball four. Runners on the corners now for the Hawkeyes. It's Seegers' turn. Anytime your leadoff hitter gets five at-bats in four innings. It's going pretty well. It's going well. And we will get a pitching change. Not going as well for Western Michigan in their pitching in game two of the doubleheader today. So we'll have a pitching change. Western Michigan going to the bullpen. We'll take a pitching change break in the meantime. Hawks up 19-2. to Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
At Oakmall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the fourth inning, Hawks up 19 to two on Western Michigan. New pitcher into the game for them. And I'm still getting a number on him, but it'll be. I'm gonna sell you on Joe Shapiro. All right, I'll 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 buy it. Joe Shapiro, new pitcher into the game for Western Michigan. Shapiro's 10th appearance on the season. He also has a nine ERA, 10 innings pitched, giving up 21 hits, 11 runs, 10 of which are earned. Three walks, three strikeouts. Opponents hitting 488 against him. All right, well, we'll see what Shapiro has. He's a lefty. And it'll be Seegers first. We'll see if any changes come after that. Shapiro's going to bring it up kind of in the low low 80s, somewhere in there, 80 to 84. Good mix of pitches, a little... You know, we see this a lot with Obi and and Jared Simpson. You know, from the left side, you know, not a not an over the top arm slot. Going to come down about three quarter and and bring it off there. Going to really try to uh, try to work off his fastball. Another one of those guys in the in the Bronco bullpen that you only want to see uh, if that ball's spinning. You're probably not swinging at it. Yep. So you know, you're just going to look to a lot of stuff hit, floating in right there. Yeah, you're going to look to hit the fastball and and make him command his breaking ball. Runners on the corners, first pitch to Seegers, way inside, ball one. Time called from behind the plate. All right, first is Wilmus. Mitchell's over there at third. 1-0 pitch to Seegers, chopper to third base. Third baseman charges hard, throw on the run, is dropped at first. He's in the dirt. Couldn't quite pick that one. The first baseman's been really solid over there, but couldn't pick that one. Another run is across. It's 20-2. to two. Yeah, he's been able to make a ton of really good scoops. That one, ball kind of got on him. and actually was a backhanded scoop, and so he had a harder time harder time coming up with that one and ended up kind of catching right up into his chest and couldn't pick it up. Hawks have batted around in the fourth. Here's Huxdorf. First pitch to him. Check swing, didn't go around, didn't matter, called strike. Runners on first and second with two down. Count is nothing and one. Outside for a ball, one and one. Boy, sneak into the men's tournament, Florida Atlantic. 75 74 23 seconds to go it's been a wild game really chippy too <laughs> and uh a lot of crazy three-point baskets <laughs> two balls and a strike to huckstorf who would have thought that florida atlantic could be going to the final four probably just them <laughs> probably just them and, and realistically probably not, not even not them. even them <laughs> counts three and one to huckstorf I'm sure they're, they felt good when their bracket opened up and they didn't have to beat Purdue. Here's a comeback right to the pitcher. Shapiro will take it over to first. Underhand flip it for the third out of the inning. Five runs come across for the Hawkeyes. In the fourth, it's 20-2. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. 
Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Hawks lead 20 to 2 as we get to the top of the fifth. Going to go with Ty Langenberg. He's going to come back out for another inning of work. It almost feels like a, a fresh inning every single time, or a fresh outing, I should say. It feels like <laughs> five different days that Ty's pitched at this point. Yeah. At your top of the order, Jackson Kitchen. See if Ty can mow through the order here and. First pitch from Langenberg called strike to start off the fifth. Again, run rule in this game will be 10 after 7. they got a few more innings to go. This is shot foul into the Western Michigan bullpen. In left, it's 0-2. We'll see how competitive the at-bats are for, for Western Michigan. I would like to think they're swinging the bats and they're aggressive at the very least. But Hawkeyes need nine outs here. The 0-2. Called strike on the outside corner. Nice backdoor breaking ball from Langenberg. One down. Really good job there. Got ahead and just popped one on the outside. Looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter here. Yeah, Luke Karens will come in. He came in to play right field in the first game. He actually doesn't have an official at bat on the season, so this yeah, will be. Just remember him making a play out there, a, a catch out there in right. He's a right-handed hitter. First pitch strike from Langenberg. Yeah, he's appeared in appeared in five games. Looks like maybe once has walked and scored a run. Fouled back to the screen, 0 and 2. Had the play out in right field. Uh, little bit of an adventure having to go catch it but that was he just come into the game and had to catch kind of a towering fly ball battling here fouls one off to the right side I'm trying to think of exactly the the play that he made in right Hawks had a couple guys on he pushed it ball was up in the air kind of kept drifting kept drifting and he just kept floating back and that's right didn't look comfortable but made the catch oh two from Langenberg this one's too far outside and it's one and two all right, so that was the chase pitch. Let's bring it back in. On the ground to the left side, Tello dives, can't stop it. Seeger's a backhand throw from the hole is just a bit late. Get and he, he rounded He's first. He's going to be out. Oh. oh, no, they called him safe. Oh, I thought Karen's rounded first there. He absolutely did. I think did. he did, John. Connor yeah, Garen flipped it to Mitchell, who tagged him, but they said that he didn't. He absolutely, not like he made a huge break for it, but he turned left. So runner on first, swing and a miss for Morrison. No, you got a pinch hitter. Ostrander's pinch hitter. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm off one, aren't I? <laughs> you're cold, you're tired. 20 to 2. And that. A one pitch, that is low for a ball. Yeah, Florida Atlantic, they did it. They beat K-State, going to the Final Four. Beat K-State 79 to 76. That's nuts. One one popped up left side. Tello's gonna go over into foul territory near the wall. Watch out for the wall, Raider, he's got it. Out number two. Virginia Tech women looking to put away Tennessee. They're up nine with three and a half minutes to go. Wow. Punch their ticket into the Elite Eight. South Carolina won today. Ohio State ended up beating UConn then. 
Yes. So wow. you have you have Virginia Tech, Maryland, South Carolina, and Ohio State to join the bunch that's already there. Two down. Here's one just pushed out to right for a base hit. Gable Mitchell goes out to get it and then whips it to third. Runners on the corners for Western Michigan with two outs. I mean, that was a softly hit ball to right. I don't even think Sullivan uh, followed through on his swing, really. 62 mile an hour <laughs> exit velo. And, but again, that's, uh, I'll say it again, that's why, that's why you're going to love watching Gable Mitchell play as he <laughs> chases that ball down in short right, slides and comes up and tries to gun it at third. That was just, uh, that was effort. Two outs, runners on the corners. Top five. First pitch to Jimmy Allen, fouled back, 0-1. So when Ty pitched against Sam Houston, they they barreled balls up. They, yep. hit, they hit the ball hard. He's given up seven hits today, but, man, has he been unlucky. Right. And those are just 0-1, check swing, did not go, 1-1. One one. There have been a couple of them. What, what inning was that? That was the third inning where Western Michigan scored their two runs, and they connected on a few of them. But aside from that, they've been spinners and whatnot. The 1-1 one, one dropped low, ball two. And we talked about that. That's You know, you're going to give up a couple runs in a game. You're going to give up a couple hits in a row, and it's going to lead to somebody scoring. But, man, just the, the couple of balls that have been hit off him here so far has been uh, unfortunate. Two balls and a strike. The pitch fouled back again. And now it's two and two. The part I think I like to see the most is, though, assuming we can get him through this inning, five innings of, of yep. no, no walk baseball. Wow, no walks. All right. And so that's the, the free bases. Um, you know, at least you're making them earn it at this point. So even though it's seven hits, it's not it's not compounded with, with the extra stuff. Right, because, you know, you get these squirrely little hits – after you've walked a guy or two, well, now now you're giving up runs. Mm -hmm. And so now, having hit him hard, they've got a couple guys in the corner, he's still got an opportunity to get out of it when, with two strikes on this hitter. The 2-2. Two -two. Check swing, he went around, right? Yes, home plate umpire will say that he went around, and that's the third out of the inning. Strikeout for Langenberg. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Hawks up 20 to 2. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Bottom of the fifth inning, Hawks up 20 to two. And it'll be, well, Huxdorf was the last out, so it'll be Garen, Sarsfield, and Tello do up this inning. It's not easy to see on that scratching, is it? No, a lot of changes, a lot of this and a lot of that. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a more complicated flow chart than you usually run on a score sheet. It is, yeah, because you got to cross out the innings and insert the new ones because you have Gotta, Overlapped. You got to carry, going. carry the one. Carry the yeah. one. Yeah. Rub away the chalk. All that. Yeah. No eraser marks. So what's done is done. Here's Blake Guerin. First pitch to him is low for a ball. Chalk and rosin. That's why Wilmer does not wear yes. batting gloves. Well, that, you know what? Not that we really doubted him or questioned him. We were just curious about it. But you can't anymore. He's had a productive weekend. Exactly. More guys should take the gloves off. 
Garen taps this to third. He's going to have to hustle down the line. The throw is in time, one away. Good stretch there. Sullivan's done a nice job at first base. I know he, he didn't come up with the scoop last inning, but, boy, he's made a made a couple of good play scoops. That was a good stretch there. And I mean, as you look down, tall guy, but um, really doing a good job covering first base over there for the Broncos. All right, here's Sarsfield. First pitch to him. He hits it sharply on the ground to the right side. Foul. Sarsfield just starting to make some waves uh, for Iowa. Mainly a pinch hit roll. We got to get Coy's first, uh, first hit. He's got a walk and a hit by pitch. Still looking for the first base knock. 0-1 pitch. That's low for a ball. He's another one of those fun guys on the team. Good personality, a lot of fun to be around. Yeah. Takes the 1-1 one, one for a strike just below the letters, 1-2. and two. I Tried to duck under that one a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Bent the knees but couldn't influence the umpire. One ball, two strikes. The pitch on the ground to the right side. Second baseman will welcome it in. He bobbled it. Throw is in time. Got him at first. Two down. Good hustle there by Sarsfield, though. Just a little bobble by the second baseman. and Sarsfield almost beat that out. Here's Raider Tello with two outs in the fifth. Well, we'll be on the road on Tuesday, John, and uh, Iowa and Illinois State in the midweek game. It'll be fun to be back on the road in a regularly scheduled road game, not one that we're told about an hour or a, a day before. Look out over there on the right side. Raider sends it foul. It'll be a more traditional road game. <laughs> We've just kind of been out of whack. I don't know if um, if there is a set schedule, you know, with with things, but... I haven't been able to really set, set weekend plans for sure. No. Counts one and one after Tello takes a ball high and away. You know, we've had, we were down in uh, Mobile. We had three completely different days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Misses down low. Even Texas Tech, the, the three games in Lubbock, the weather, all three of those days. You know, obviously, we got all the games in on time, but but felt like we played them in almost three different seasons for, right. for two week trips in a row. 2 1 catches the outside corner, 2 and 2. And then we've just tried to play these games at home and. Gotten four of them in, well, five of them within a few days, I guess. 2-2 two, two is low. Counts now full to, to Tello. He played that one in Missouri, and it snowed down there, snowed on the way down there, all that. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we were able to get in two today. And, you know, when we moved the midweek game that we were supposed to play Tuesday, we ended up playing Wednesday. Tello hits it on the ground to short. Picked up there. Throw across is nope. in time, but off the bag. And so Tello makes it to first. He's on. It pulled the first baseman off the bag. We're just bragging about how good of a job he'd done. And, and that was no fault of his. That ball just sailed high. Did everything he could to keep his foot on the bag. Uh, but uh, used all his height, pulled him off. And I have to check my... Curiosity is finally getting to me about how tall he actually is. Tello's reached base every time in this game. Two doubles, two singles, and he got on with an error there. Sullivan, 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six four. Frazier's the batter. He's worked a 2-0 and o count. Needed the Blake Guerin 6'6 six, six yeah, to make just, come up with that one. Just needed a little bit more there. Or slightly longer feet. You know what? Maybe a little bit better throw. 2-0. <laughs> Frazier sends it back up the middle. That's a base hit. Tello will stop at second. I was thinking the shortstop got a pretty big hop. And I was thinking, okay, that's a good time. But, yeah, you, you got it exactly right. He seemed like he had a hard time getting out of his glove. And by the time he double clutched it, you know, sometimes when you do that, you don't find the seams. And so all of a sudden you kind of throw a little palm ball and right. it sails on you. It's something you don't... Uh, 
your timing gets off a little bit and uh, takes what should have been a routine play and made it a lot more difficult. Mitchell stands in again, this time from the right side. Hits one to third. Diving stop there. Throw to second is executed nicely for Western Michigan, and that'll do it for the fifth. Hawks up 20-2. to two. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Top of the sixth inning in Iowa City. Hawks up 20 to 2. New pitcher for Iowa, Will Christofferson. Christo making his 10th appearance on the mound for the Hawkeyes. 2 0 this season. He has one save, nine and a third innings. He's given up one hit, four walks, 20 strikeouts, 20. Opponents hitting 0 34. Not touching it. Christo, the king of the slider. And he'll. Uh, take on this Western Michigan lineup and for the Broncos 6, 7 and 8 do up in the top of the 6th. I hope for the 6th, 7th and 8th hitters they're the guys that normally play because all of a sudden if it's bench guys that have never seen a slider quite like Christos it could be a little interesting. Swinehart's a regular, though. Yep. Will is ready in the first pitch on its way home. That's high for a ball. Hawks have 20 runs on 17 hits, no errors in the field. Western Michigan, two runs, seven hits, three errors. 1-0 pitch from Christofferson. Slider outside, 2-0. Boy, that would have been 20 inches of break. That's ridiculous. Will, come on. <laughs> Try to throw this one for a strike, though. 2-0, lifted into right center. Right fielder moving over. That's Wilmus. He's got it. One down. That ball actually carried farther out there than I thought it did. I thought that was just going to be a little flare, another one of those kind of right over Gable Mitchell's head. Mm -hmm. Flipped all the way out there. Able to be just an easy out. I have a couple of those today that have just barely gone over the infielders. Here's Nevar, first pitch up and in, ball one. I think we've got Garrett Christensen behind the plate now, too. You're right. Christensen is into the game to catch Christofferson. Counts one and one. I don't know if I see any other changes in the outfield. We know Frazier's in left. Yeah, Frazier stayed in the left. Huck's still out there. Pitch fouled back, one and two. Snowman melt might be done down in the bullpen. One, two's tapped up the middle. Christofferson can't grab it. Mitchell charges it under his glove into right center. And so Nevar is on. Going to call that a hit. Yeah, that'll be a base hit, just the... Second one of the season off Christofferson and just uh, he won't love that. Another, well, no, he <laughs> won't at all. And, but just another one of those unfortunate. Uh, uh, boy, you did a lot of stuff right there and and give up a hit. Sorry, they can't hit you hard, Will. <laughs> Nobody can. Pitch is low and outside to start off the at bat for Campos. Top of the sixth inning. 
There's one out. 1-0 pitch from Christofferson. Swing and a miss. That one had sharp break. That looked good. It's 1-1. One and one. Yeah, that one was kind of dirty again. 82 miles an hour with a, almost a foot and a half of break. Campos singled his last first appearance, last mm -hmm. appearance. They're just not chasing the outside one, though, are they? He hasn't really made it yet where they've needed to. Yep. You know, he, ha he hasn't thrown the first one. You know, you've seen him a lot of times in the appearance. He'll snap off that first one um, where it looks like it's going to hit the guy, and it comes in for a strike, and then he's able to change the tunnel like that There one. it is. Holy smokes. Two and two on the swing and miss. Yeah, when he gets, when he gets that look, now he can, go, he can go to the outer half and break it off. Um, and you see him actually crowding the plate to try to give himself a chance to hit that outside. Christofferson set up outside, or Christensen rather. This one's fouled back to the screen. Yeah, this would be tough. Christofferson the pitcher, Christensen the catcher. That was our Brody Brady adventure yesterday. Yeah. We'll see, so far all of the, the sliders have all mostly been, the competitive pitches have mostly been elevated. We'll see if he can give a look to one that's down a little bit and get, a, get him oh. kind of swing over the top of it. What if he throws this down and in? The 2-2. Two -two. Off the end of the bat, fouled away. Good battle from Campos. Yeah, that was a really good job from Campos because he was he was out front and kind of lost there, but stuck with it and was able to kind of flip the bat out it and foul it off. Christofferson looks in for the sign. He's got it. The 2-2. Two -two. That's a fastball outside. Counts now full. Don't see he, Will throw a ton of those. Right. You wonder if uh, Christofferson... If he's played against Western Michigan in the past, as the full count pitch is outside ball four. Christofferson spent some time at Michigan State a few years back. And yeah, we're actually the uh, we're the Big Ten we're the we're the filling in the Big Ten sandwich for Western Michigan as they've got Michigan State in midweek. You know, had them last week. Michigan State beat them eight to three. Then we'll have them midweek this week. So. Bottom of the order, Grady Mee and Christofferson hit him. Boy, he wanted to, he wanted to take that pitch like a champ and then realized how bad of an idea that was after it hit him. Yeah. That got him below the knee somewhere. I don't know if it was ankle or calf, but... There's not enough padding there, whatever none, it was. None at all. And we're going to have a mound visit from pitching coach Sean McGrath. In the meantime, probably go talk to... Christofferson, get him to regroup. The Broncos have the bases loaded. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day healthcare needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or a minor injury, visit one of several U of I quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. U of I Healthcare is proud to sponsor the Iowa Hawkeyes. Score still 20 to 2 in the top of the sixth. Christofferson on the mound. One out, bases loaded for Western Michigan. Top of the order with Jackson Kitchen. He'll come up. This isn't the easiest thing to do for guys that are closers to come in to you know, kind of keep their focus, and single up the middle. First pitch swinging, two runs across for Western Michigan, 20 to four. First two runs allowed on the season for Christian Christofferson. Yeah, just a surprising outing for him so far. He just doesn't hasn't found it a walk, hit a batter, a couple of singles, and given up runs. It just doesn't sound like an outing for Christofferson. On that ball was, uh, you know, we talk about how much the sliders break. That was just a just a gentle breaking one, and, and good job by the leadoff hitter to drive it right back up the box. Here's Luke Karen's first pitch is inside for a ball. Henderson's getting loose in the bullpen along with Chaz Wheatley. Yeah, Chaz, I thought, might be just kind of throwing a bullpen to get loose, but all of a sudden it gets a little bit more interesting here. 1-0 pitch from Christofferson outside. Will struggling. We still got five outs to get here. Two balls, no strikes, two on. 
Pitch outside again, ball three. Mm. Not sure how long the rope will be here. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure either. The 3-0 is on its way home, missed way outside, ball four. Just looks like he's struggling, he almost you know, trying to guide it in there. Just doesn't look, look his usual confident self right now. Made a move yet. Haven't seen Coach Heller come out of the dugout quite yet, but the bases are loaded once again for the Broncos. One out in the top of the sixth. They've scored twice already in the inning. Hawks still up 20 to 4. Christofferson's ready. Here's the pitch. That's inside. Ooh, called a strike. 0 and 1. Almost as Ostrander tried to just kind of throw his pant leg at it and catch the pant leg, the umpire almost punished him for right. it. Right. <laughs> I agree. No balls and a strike. Pitch from Christofferson right down the middle, 0-2. That's what, that's what Christo needed. He just needed the umpire to help him one time. One time. Working quickly now. Christo's ready. And the 0-2. Oh. That one hit him. That will likely be it, if I had to guess. Yeah, it will be. Coach Heller is out of the dugout. Mm. On 0 and 2, Christofferson hits the batter with the bases loaded, and he'll bring in a run. 20 to 5. Here in the top of the six, we'll have a call to the bullpen, and that'll do it for Christofferson. He'll come out of the game. We'll see who comes in next for the Hawkeyes. We're back after this pitching change break. Iowa up 20 to 5. Listening to Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump. Soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. New pitcher into the game for the Hawkeyes is Jacob Henderson. We'll get to him in just a minute. Let's pause 10 seconds for a station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Hawks up 20 to 5. Bases are loaded for Western Michigan, though, in the top of the six with just one out. We'll go with Jacob Henderson. Appearance number seven for Jacob, 2.70 ERA. Hasn't factored in a decision yet. Three and a third innings. No hits allowed. Given up one run, four walks, six strikeouts. Really, after a rough uh, first outing, kind of found, a, found an adjustment in the last. Uh, Last week or so, gotten a little bit of velocity back and really gotten the, the snap back on the breaking ball, which is which is great to see from Jacob. Well, he comes in in an extremely tough spot, but, w you know, that that's kind of his calling, right? This is when he comes in in, a, in in tough situations. I think there's a country song. He's the fireman. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, there you go. That, that's Jacob. All right. Well, fire is just starting to burn a little bit. Against the Hawkeyes, although up 20 to 5, we're more concerned about playing this one in 7, right? We're in the top of the sixth. First pitch from Henderson is a ball up and away. How about one of those ground balls, John? 6 4 3. Mm hmm. Sullivan swings at it, and off the handle of the bat, it's 1 and 1. Yeah, it may very well have hit him right on the fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't sound great. After a, you know, tie was really sharp, threw a lot of strikes. Um, all of a sudden, a couple walks, a couple hits, batters. Ooh, just, just down low there, I suppose. 
Two and one. That pitch looked like it was right at the knees, but he's a tall guy. He has tall knees. <laughs> <laughs> the two one from Henderson is low again. Three and one. Got no place to put him here. I don't know if Sullivan has had the green light on the last two pitches because they've been pretty close. 3-1, popped up right side. Wilmis will go back towards the track. If he doesn't make it to the track, he reaches up and catches it for the second out. Runner will score from third on the sacrifice fly. It's 20-6. to six. A sketchy base running there from, uh, from the runner out at second base there. That's uh, Karens, you'd have thought. High fly ball to right field. That's a that should have been an automatic tag from second to third, but didn't go anywhere and just leaves uh, uh, leaves a couple runners on base and see if Henderson can limit the damage here. Nice start to the at bat for Henderson with a fastball right down the middle. And Allen, after just destroying the Hawkeyes in the first game of the doubleheader, struck out three times here in this one. So. If Hendo uh, Western escape. Michigan's got that golden sombrero in their dugout from last game, right? And uh, like to let him let him keep it. Yep, yeah, keep it over there. Just like, pass it around. Owen oh, two's the count on him. Is that like the turnover chain? <laughs> <laughs> I think the ramifications are a little bit different of the turnover chain oh, okay, yeah. than the golden sombrero. <laughs> Better deed versus worse deed. Oh boy, no balls, two strikes. Henderson's ready. The pitch, there it is. Called third strike. Got him on the outside corner, 20-6, to six, as we head to the bottom of the six. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. All right, bottom of the six, Hawks up 22-6, 20 to six, 2-0 to six. Matt Hoover is your new pitcher for the Broncos, fourth appearance on the season. He has a 30 ERA, three innings pitched, six hits, 10 runs. They're all been earned. He's walked eight in those three innings of work. Struck out three, opponents hitting 429. He's hit a couple guys, wild pitch. Scouting report says fastball is going to be in the upper 80s, push 90. But if he throws anything that starts to break, he might not want to swing at it. All right. Good uh, report on the new pitcher, John. Thank you very much. Start with throwing strikes. Yeah, if he were just to throw, I just, I'll just i take anything that goes across the plate. It'll be Christensen, Wilmus, and Seegers. Let's take a look at some of these. Stats for Iowa. The Hawks have only walked five times uh, in this one. They have more extra base hits than walks, six extra base hits. They've struck out three times. They have 17 hits total, hitting 531 today. Uh, the second and, game. And again, 14 for 27 just with runners on base, 12 for 23 with runners in scoring position. So, been able to kind of pile on. Christensen leads off, ball one. You know, like we talked about with Gable Mitchell, this is a good spot for for Garrick. You know, try to try to get that bat going a little bit. He's he's shown some good, uh, you know, a really good approach at the plate as he takes a fastball on the outside portion of the plate. But you know, try to do a try to do a good job here. Keep a keep a good solid professional approach, and uh, you know, maybe that'll lead lead to something for you. And 
kind of get you going. 1-1, one, one, sliced foul. 1 and 2. And Garrick's got a couple hits on the year. He scored four runs. He's walked four times. You know, he's done a really nice job uh, you know, in, in his limited, limited sample of at-bats so far. Stands in from the left side. The 1-2 shot up the middle. Base hit to center. And so Christensen, he gets a base hit in the Hawkeye sixth. Good piece of hitting there. Stayed with it with two strikes. Drove it right up the middle, and we still have a, uh, I think that's our feisty parent contingent over there yes. now. That's cheering Garrick driving one up there. Making a lot of noise down that right field line. Here's Ben Wilmus. Wilmus has had a weekend to remember. First pitch to him is outside for a ball. Yeah, two for three here and then second game of the doubleheader. Throw in a walk, scored a run, driven in a run. Basically done everything right. Anything you've asked him to do, Wilmer's done a pretty good job of doing it today. 1-1 one, one is the count on him. Only thing, only thing he didn't do correctly was pull his bat back in oh, time yeah. on that bunt attempt. So we'll, we'll coach him up on that, and he'll be fine after that. How could we forget that? Because it was a long time ago. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> the pitch to Wilmus takes this one just outside. Two and one is the count to the Hawkeye right fielder. Hawks up to 18 hits now here in the... Second game of this doubleheader. 2-2, two, two, low and in. Does that scoreboard say Wilma's up to hitting 320 now? It does, 320. Look at how good my eyes are pin, pick, picking you got that off it. there. You still got You need to give yourself a little bit more credit, John. I think your eyes might be bad. Uh, they're not good. 3-1, Wilma swing and a miss. 3-2 and two now. My, my guess is this would be an inside joke between you and me. Probably not a big carrots guy. Oof. No. <laughs> Negative. No, huh? Negative. Go straight to the pattern is full. <laughs> no no real fruit, no real vegetable. I can't believe intake. the fruit one. 3-2 to Wilma. That's low and away. Ball four. No fruit, huh? Orange juice, perhaps? Okay, I've seen you drink some orange juice. Here's here's the here's the thing. John informed me that he's a little bit of a picky eater, which I have no no gripes with. That's hey, that is what it is. But no, fr not a fruit. They don't like apples, strawberries. Do you realize what my wife is going to do to me when I get home uh -oh. and this comes out and becomes public knowledge? Oh no. <laughs> let me let me go back ten seconds. <laughs> No, no fruits, no vegetables. Um, if my parents are listening, it, it it is mostly your fault for making me eat them as a kid. Batter is Michael Seegers. Pitches in the dirt. Runners will advance 90. You can see Hawk, Hawkeye base runners there really weren't too interested in taking the extra base, but when it bounced far enough away, you had to do it. You don't have a choice. Got to um, do it. So, you know, not really trying to, trying to, to punch anything up here, but... Pitch was far enough outside, just Campos couldn't quite corral it. Another one low and away. Ball two. But, yeah, so some of it's a taste issue. Some of it's a texture issue. Mm -hmm. um, some of it's just a me mentally being old and just stubborn at this point. Well, Tuesday when we go to Illinois State, John, we'll stop it. We'll do what we do on the road. We'll go to a convenience store, get a nice thing of candy or something. Here's one on the ground to third. Seegers will be thrown out at first. Christensen will score on the backside, 21 to 6. Kind of jammed him there, and uh, Christensen went on contact. Good job there. Good piece of base running. Third baseman kind of looked and then realized, let's just get it out. Let's get it out. And so, Appreciate him for making that play. Exactly. Threw it across the diamond and got the out. Huxdorf's up now. He's had a nice game, too, of the doubleheader. Runner at second is Wilmus. First pitch to Huck outside, ball one. Yeah, I might have been one of the first to uh, to dispel the the food pyramid or, or food <laughs> groups. Because if sugar is not one of the food groups, it just shouldn't count. Well, yeah, what are we doing, right? 1-0 pitch to Huckstorf. That's low and away, ball two. We'll find a good gas station. We'll get, uh, what, you know, we, we did, uh, what was it that we had in... 
In Texas, yeah, in Round Rock. We started with, with peanut, peanut butter M&Ms during the game, and we lost that game. So we're not going back to those. No, we had to switch. Yep. Huck with a big cut there, <laughs> swinging a miss. out of his shoes. Missed it. Wind's died down now, so if you're going to get one out to left, Here it's, go. it's going to be a little bit easier. It's cold. It might not carry, but at least there's no wind that's going to stop you. But yeah, that goes to the, the – we we carry our own superstitions there, too, as that All was right. the, that first loss against Sam Houston. Uh-oh, my – told you I might be in trouble. Oh, no, but Sam. Sam's got another stat for us. Okay. Yeah, yeah well – if he gets up, we'll we'll share it. Three balls and a strike to Huxdorf. Swing and a miss. Oh, and this hit the catcher. He jumps up and is running around. I don't know where it got him. I think I think the pitch just hit him funny in the hand that he caught it with, right? Actually, I think it was Huck's follow through. Oh, okay. Like a big follow got through, it. kind of one handed. Um, so he extended a little bit more. Bless you. Brutal allergy season or something. <laughs> You know, they all are frozen and dead at this point. Yeah, the catcher's having a little bit of a problem, so the head coach comes out with a trainer. Yeah. I think he got hit up in the arm there, and it looks like they're kind of looking at the forearm. If nothing else, you know, if you get hit in the muscle of that, you kind of cramp that part up, and mm -hmm. especially then cold. And... All right, now we're ready. Three balls, two strikes. Pitch from Hoover to Huxdorf. Called third strike at the knees. Kyle's down on strikes for the second Ooh. out of the inning. That ball was perhaps a bit low. But I guess at this point in the proceeding, I'd really like to see the umpire expand his strike zone. But... Now, Mr. Huxdorf and the home plate umpire had a Bit of a staring contest after that one. Two down in the sixth. Hawks up 21-6. Here's Garen. First pitch to him is outside for a ball. Well, as the Hawkeyes learned when, when Brody had been um, had been already pulled from the game and still got ejected, it, it does have it carries extra consequences. Mm -hmm. So 1-0, Garen pops it up. High fly ball to shallow left. The shortstop goes back. Comes together with the third baseman. The third baseman makes a diving catch where the shortstop would typically stand. And that'll do it for the sixth. All right. Hawks up 21-6. Have three outs to get. And can run rule the Broncos if they do that. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers in Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Top of the seventh inning, Hawks up 21 to six. They can run rule the Broncos if they get three outs before allowing six runs in the inning. It'll be Chaz Wheatley to come into the game for the Hawks to shut things down. Wheatley's third appearance on the season, throwing an inning in two thirds, three hits, one run. It was not earned. He walked a guy, struck out a guy. And we'll turn to him to finish this up. We were kind of joking about the text we received during the inning there, and that was uh, it's our great, great sports information guy. But unfortunately, he he jinxed Raiders' attempt at uh, at tying the tying the record with with six hits. Raider Tello's five for five today, but um, let's just hope he doesn't get an yeah. opportunity for his sixth that bad at this point. Otherwise, he could have he could have tied 
Huxdorf's record, right? Yeah, the game that we we'd spent some time talking about there in Indiana, or against Indiana last year. See Chaz come in and just attack the strike zone here. First pitch from Wheatley, swing and a miss. Good job there to start on top. The Hawks, six walks, six extra base hits, just four strikeouts on the offensive side. Wheatley's dealing 0 and 2. The swing and miss. On the pitching side, and actually hit three batters. They've hit three, only walked two, but hit three. 0 2 is low for a ball. Langenberg ended up with 10 strikeouts, so good job by him in the five innings he pitched. Out of the windup, the pitch from Wheatley. That's outside ball two. Okay. Danced around him a little bit. Ready to bring it home now. Ready with the 2-2. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Got him. Out number one. That's a Just looking through the... Hawkeye hitters, you know, a lot of a uh, lot of multi-hit games. Seegers, Huxdorf, Derigi, obviously Tello with five. Frazier in a pinch-hitting role has a couple hits now. Multi-hit game. Uh, Wilmus has a multi-hit game. So really good job. A lot of guys, actually five guys, have scored three runs in this game. Deering swings and misses at the first pitch. Seegers, Huxdorf, Derigi, Anthony, and Tello all have scored three runs. Wow. So 15 of Ohio's 20 run, 21 runs from those three guys. 0-1 missing just high. Very productive uh, day for the Hawks all around, obviously. Nine separate guys have driven in a run in this game. Wheatley's 1-1 is low, 2-1. Yeah, I think the other impressive side, just four strikeouts, you know, so did a good job making contact, seeing the ball. Check swing on the 2-1, doesn't matter, called strike inside corner, 2-2. Two two. Wheatley can get another strikeout right here of Deering, who's pinch hitting for Nevar. The 2-2, two -two. chopper up the middle. Seegers comes forward. He's got it. The throw to first in time. Good hang by Garen. Two down. It's good tough play there. That was uh, Seegers thought he was going to be able to catch a big high hop, and it almost uh, almost caught some turf, and it ate it up, and so it was a low. So Seegers had to stay back just a little bit longer, um, was then able to come up and grab it, made a good hard throw, and again with a, a big tall target like Blake Garen, got a Got a lot of uh, a lot of catch radius over there. Yeah. Ooh, Ben Campos was the last chance, but he gets hit by a pitch, and so he's on first. Boy, he took the ouch Huckstorf bat last inning, <laughs> last half inning, gets hit by a pitch. Campos is taking a beating, isn't he? Well, we've seen a lot of that in this. You know, Bronco pitchers have hit four Hawkeye hitters. Um, Hawkeye pitchers have returned the favor. That's the fourth one there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe a little bit of a cold baseball trying to snap those breaking balls. Grady Me first pitch swinging, missing 0 and 1. Christensen tried to backhand that a little bit on that uh, low and outside pitch. Couldn't quite get it. Um, fortunately, Campos didn't have any real interest in taking second base there. Not even holding the runner on at first. 0-1 is in there for a strike. 0-2 with two outs. One strike away. We feel like we're close.
You realize he's going to hit like a two-run home run right now. No, right? John, <laughs> what? No balls, two strikes, the pitch, ground ball. This Ooh. is just foul down the first baseline. That was close. Just, just got outside the bag. Mm, that was really close at first, too. Yeah, I wasn't going to be terribly surprised when he pointed fair on that one. <laughs> me, me neither. It yeah. was right, right along the bag. The 0-2. Just low. Ball one. I got to make me look. Yeah, that was low. Might have been the pitch that Huckstorf got punched out on, but a little outside. Tried to get him with the fancy back door there. That was a good pitch from Wheatley. He'll try to do it again. The one-two. Swing and a miss. Got him. Hawks win. 21 to 6. Strikeout from Wheatley. Gets a couple in the inning, and that'll do it. Hawks win. By 15, they run rule the Broncos in game two of the doubleheader. All right, we'll take a break. We come back, we'll get into post game and wrap things up from Iowa City this afternoon. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Hurry up, dude. The game's about to start. Nothing beats spending the day watching the game with your buddies. Dude, I'm literally right here. Let's do this. Which is why a shelter insurance renter's policy is key to your winning game plan. It protects things your landlord's policy doesn't. Uh, dude, where's your TV? What? Oh, no way, dude. Like that flat screen TV that just got stolen. To draft an agent for your team, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Hawks win 21 to 6 in game two of the doubleheader, a series sweep over the Western Michigan Broncos, Iowa now 19 and 3 and get to 20 and 3. Uh, with the win over Illinois State on Tuesday. But first things first, let's recap uh, the games today. John, just a, a thought. Just a good, per, you know, all-around professional appearance, professional performance. Yep. Pitching was good, um, at least good enough in most cases. Hitting was good. The, the, really, the approach to hitting was, was outstanding because Western Michigan pitchers had a little bit of a hard time at, in places finding the plate, which doesn't always make it easy on hitters, but Iowa did a really nice job. Um, drove a lot of balls into gaps, really worked counts, um, got deep into the bullpen, and got her done. You know, honestly, you don't want to um, talk about the opponent too much, but the way Iowa went about their business today, that's what you got to do against teams that you know that you're better than and more talented than. Well, and that's that's just it. If you if you want to be if you want to be the team that Iowa wants to be, if you want to play um, if you want to play baseball, hopefully into June, um, it's about it's about doing the job uh, in these games. And and you know, Iowa. Being a northern school, being a Big Ten school, you, you can't you can't let something uh, in these things slip away. So you just have to you have to go win them, and um, to do it and do it convincingly just uh, helps all the more. Hard to pick a superstar of the of the weekend, don't you think, John? I think uh, you could go a lot of different directions yeah, here. A lot of guys did a lot of good things. You know, we had uh, uh, you know obviously Raider was was five for five here in this game. So if you get a little uh, recency bias, but. Um, you know, every hitter had had moments of, of really good, um, and so that's that's what you want to see is is nine, ten, eleven, twelve guys that that you can count on at the plate. Well, another series win and a sweep of Western Michigan this time uh, with the twenty-one to six win over the Broncos in Game Two of the doubleheader. We'll take a break. We'll come back with highlights. Following this break, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. 
that knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa wins game two of the doubleheader, 21-6 over Western Michigan, run-ruling the Broncos in seven. Joined now by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, a you know, pretty perfect day, you'd, you'd like to assume. Your thoughts? Well, first first thing, I, I just want to thank uh, Tony Senio and, and Andy Eifert and Damian Simcox and and all the field, all the, all the guys who worked on the field. Um, you know, when they got here, it was two and a half inches of snow on the ground and um, you know, they just worked tireless, tirelessly, started early in the morning, got it out of here, um, and ended up being a really nice afternoon. But, you know, none of that happens without their help. So sure. just appreciate the work they do. And um, like you said, uh, just a good day. I mean, offensively, all weekend was really good. Uh, just approach-wise, just doing a great job of not giving away at bats and continuing to, to grind on them. And I think, you know, what's happening through the first 20, 21 games or whatever it is, it's just a production level one through nine in the lineup, and that's what you see. I mean, just uh, it's all over the place. Uh, Raider has five hits today. Honar has a bunch of extra base hits. Michael's getting on base. Hawks obviously having a great year. Derigi, Anthony cleaning stuff up. Ben Wilmus continues to get on base at a really high level. Cade does what he does, and then you have guys come in, and, and you know Gable gets a, a big knock. Frazier has a couple hits, and it's just the production level one through nine. And you know we talk a lot about that offensively of 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 kind of this team offense offense concept of being one just do your one ninth whatever it calls for mm-hmm. if there's a situation where you have to move a runner or you know get a bunt down or, or whatever you may have to do just just better better the team in some way and if, and if you think about it that way you can alleviate some of that pressure we all put on, on ourselves internally so just really happy offensively you know, getting on the pitching side, that wasn't as sharp. If you think back to game one, you know, Jared Jared, and, and Zach both battled through some things but did a good job figuring out a way to just, you know, get outs and do that type of thing. I thought Ty was pretty sharp, you know, one inning really um, when they got the couple runs, but ten punch outs in five innings. That was really great to see. Um, you know, and then Hendu coming in every time he came in, he, was, he did a really good job, and Chaz was really sharp there. They're in the seventh, so um, just just a lot of good things from a weekend that um, you know they just took care of business, right? I mean, and that's that's what we talk about. It doesn't doesn't much matter who at the front of the jersey right. says you just come out and play, and you know this team has done that at a high level, which you know uh, is indicative of what the, where the record's at. Uh, a couple of things that that you touched on. I'll go back to the offense for a second. You think there's some healthy competition between some of these guys where you say, hey. You know, I, I saw Seegers get a base hit. Now I got to go get one. Do you sense that from the team at all? Well, it's weird. I, you know, I don't know the hitter. You know, there may be a little of that, but hitters don't think that way. It's just, it's just when the engine gets going, right? Yeah. And like, it, it's all contagious. You know, when when one guy's productive, it just seems like everything starts to fall in line. And again. With that production happening one through nine, you're just not leaning super hard on one person to to, to do it, right. you know. And and in the past, offensively, it felt like we really, you know, we really went according to one or two guys. And you know, this this just this offense hasn't been like that, which has been really good to see. You know, we're able to run. You know, we're stealing a ton more bases than we have, which we really thought was going to be something we could do, you know, prior to the season. But it's come to fruition. But again, it's just it's just the competitive at bats one through nine. And it's just made it tough on a pitching staff. So just just really happy with where we're at. But, you know, I mean, the worst thing you can do is be complacent That's right. and, and think that, you know, you got this figured out. Baseball doesn't work that way. So we just got to get better. We got to continue every day to, to cash in those days. Before we wrap it up with you today, uh, on the pitching side of things, do you think you answered the questions that maybe you had coming into the series, especially with the rotation, Coach? I'm not sure. We'll, Quite we'll find honest. out, huh? you, you know, I, you, what, if you're, if you're you know, going to get – picky um 
we weren't great on the mound uh, uh, in the starting situation. You know, Brody was pretty good. Brody did a good job. Ty was good. You know, today, uh, you know, in that second game, we're just Jared wasn't sharp. Zach wasn't sharp. And, you know, those guys are going to be big, big factors moving forward. And, um, you know, so we just got to figure out that part of it. But, um, you know, there's there's capable guys, and that's the great part. And, and, and again, we did enough. You know, sometimes you got to pick yourself up off it, you know, pick the pitching staff up offensively, mm-hmm. which we kind of did, you know, a little bit in game two. But they've certainly carried the load a bunch of times where, you know, it was a little bit more difficult for us to score. And that's what good teams do. You just figure out what you need to do that particular day. And, um, you know, we, we obviously really believe in the kids we have. And, and again, it's like, it's like we talked about offensively. It's just you got to continue to get better. Um, you know, Coach Heller talks about it all the time. If you're not if if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. There's no staying stagnant at this at this level, and you just got to continue to force the issue to play your best baseball. You know, towards the end of the season. So that's the goal. And so far, so good. Guys have handled themselves really well. We'll kind of get a little bit of a, a weird kind of an off day tomorrow, and 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 probably a super light off day on Monday. And then you got a tough midweek game at Illinois State, and then certainly. Certainly, you open up Big Ten play with, with um, you know the the pick uh, the pick to win it. So uh, there'll be a it'll be a great challenge with Maryland coming in. But first things first, we got to be ready on Tuesday for Illinois State. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. Congratulations, Coach, on the win and the sweep. We'll see you on the bus to Illinois State. Thanks, John. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our post-game show from Iowa City. Hawks win it twenty-one to six. Let's go over some of the highlights from today's game. Uh, the game two highlights, Iowa 21-6. to six. No balls, two strikes. Huxdorf drives this deep to right. Get going, baby. It is gone. He's Home got, run. He's got a hit now. There it is. Kyle Huxdorf. Boom. Hawks lead 2-0 in the first. 3-1. Tello Ooh. drives it left center. This one's going to get to the wall. It's down and rolling. Here comes DeRiggy. Anthony's hustling for third. They're going to send him. Raider stops at second. Here comes the throw. Anthony's got by it. Easy. Two Hawkeyes score. It's 4 nothing. courtesy of the Raider Tello double. On the ground to the left side, past the third baseman. He went opposite field on the ground. One run is in. Here comes Seegers for the second run. He is safe. Throw gets cut off at third, a two RBI single. Brennan DeRiggi, Hawks lead 10-2. One two pitch to Tello. Base hit off the left, off the third baseman's glove. One run is in. Here comes DeRiggi. It's getting away from everybody. He's still rolling. Down into left field. And Tello's got another double that scores two. 1-1, base hit into left center field. That's down. Huxdorf scores. Here comes Sarsfield around third. Tello stops at third. And there is an RBI, a two RBI double. Braden Frazier from Wheatley will try to do it again. The 1-2. Swing and a miss. Got him. Hawks win. 21-6. Strikeout from Wheatley gets a couple in the inning, and that'll do it. Hawks win. By 15, they run rule the Broncos in game two of the doubleheader. The Hawkeyes improved to 19 and 3 on the season. We'll wrap things up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Well, that'll do it for our coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today, this afternoon, this evening. I guess it is pretty late in the night by this point. Iowa wins game two of the doubleheader, 21 
to six. Hawks now 19 and three. We'll talk to you from Normal, Illinois, Iowa, Illinois State on Tuesday, 5 p.m. First pitch. Our coverage will begin at 4:30 on the Hawkeye Radio Network. All right. Thanks to our great board op, Michael, down the line. Michael always does a great job for us, keeps us on the air, and makes us sound pretty darn good. Thank you very much, Michael. For my color analyst, John Evans, I'm John Leo saying so long from Dwayne Banks Field. This evening, Hawks win game two, 21-6. to six. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.